together and hopefully we can put that performance out in the field. Importance of today? Extremely, yeah. The series is on the line. You want to at least get a draw out of every series you play and it's a big game today for us. Finally, just any changes to your team today? There is. Uh, Barry McCarthy comes in for Craig Young. Straight up. Very best of luck as always. OK, Paul Sterling winning the toss, choosing to stick with his plan, which was to bowl first. Hashmat, are you happy again? Would, would you have liked to bat again? Uh, Bismillah rahman rahim uh, Yeah, we wanted to bat first. Uh, wicket looks good and uh, we will try our best to score more runs on the board and put them under pressure. Same questions I just asked, Paul. What, what's the importance of today? You'd love a series victory, 2-0 unbeaten. Uh, yeah, of course, we, we love to win and uh, today is the important game. Uh, so if we win this, uh, series will be with us. Uh, so inshallah, we will try our best to make it possible. Anything different expected from the pitch for you? Uh, I think it looks the, it's the same pitch that we played the first ODI. It looks good for betting and uh, the good thing today is a bit of windy also. So we expect that it will be no more due in the second innings that the, the, the way it was in the first one. So I'm hopeful of that and inshallah we will try our best. OK, just finally, you had four potential debutants in the squad. One of them came in for the first ODI. Do we have a couple of debutants again today? Yeah, we have. Uh, we made two changes. We have two debutants. Uh, uh, so Gulbadin and uh, Noor Ahmad are not playing. And uh, uh, Nangyal Kharoti and uh, Navid Zadran, they both are the debutants for today. Want to wish them all the very best. Thank you so much, Hashmat. Thank you. Thank OK, you. that's the news from the toss. So Ireland, they've won the toss again. And they're going to bowl first. For die, just don't creep into my spot here, mate. Hello, everybody, and welcome to highlights of this third one day between Afghanistan and Ireland. And, of course, we're at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium, and it's a game that Ireland will be very keen to win.
Right now, this is a very important game, this one, because Afghanistan won the first one. If they happen to win the second one, then it's going to be a chance to level the series. Now, that toss was won by Ireland, and they elected to field first. Let's have a look at the teams. And if we just uh, have a look at the changes. Now, there's two changes, actually, for Afghanistan. Navid Zadran is uh, being added, and also uh, Karoti has been added as well. So well, that's a, a boost in the left arm orthodox spin department with Karoti and seam with Zadran. And McCarthy has been introduced from the seam point of view, so that's going to help. And also uh, Craig Young. McCarthy can bat a bit, and Craig Young has been left out. So that's the only change for Ireland. So that's going to uh, just do a little bit of an add to their batting strength. And Ireland will uh, obviously hope that uh, McCarthy is going to get some runs because they were a little bit thin with the runs department at the end of the game in the first one day. Right, we're all set. Conditions are ideal. Let's join the highlights with our commentators.
Looking to hit back after the test defeat, Afghanistan came out with all guns blazing. Gabaz led their charge with his sixth one day international century. The single that brings the 100, a leap in the air from Ramanullah Gabaz. The 150 run opening stand with Ibrahim Zadran put Afghanistan in the driver's seat. Fazahak Faruqi rocked Ireland early and ended with a four wicket haul. Tekta gave Ireland some hope, but in the end, the target proved well beyond their reach. With game two washed out, they need a win today to end the series with honours even. This now becomes a very important game. The third one day, Afghanistan versus Ireland is the final game in the one day as we've got uh, three T20s after this one. And of course, coming to you live from the Shahjah Cricket Stadium. Now, let's just reflect. I did say in that opener that match number two was washed out. We had torrential rain, actually. It was uh, really heavy, and there was no chance whatsoever of getting underway. It was called off pretty early, actually. And uh, this is a look at the first one day. Afghanistan, 310 for five. It was really quite remarkable, the runs were scored in this first one. Gabaz was sensation with 121, his sixth one day 100. Uh, Van Wilkman picked up uh, three for 55. And Ireland in reply, 275 for eight it was. And it's so unusual that someone gets 138 of 147 deliveries, as Tector did, and they still don't win. Faruka was brilliant with the ball. Left arm seam, his left arm swing. 451 he picked up, the Marzai picked up a couple. And Afghanistan won that quite comfortably in the end by 35 runs. So Ireland will be hurting, I think, after that. And thankfully today we have bright sunshine, so we're set to go. And it should be a terrific game, this one. I've got a couple of uh, guys alongside me to have a chat about this. Uh, I've got uh, Ahmad Fadai and also uh, Niall O'Brien. Righto, boys, let me start with you, Niall. Ireland will want to get up here. They want to live this series. Yeah, they've got a bit of work to do, to be fair. I thought they played, as uh, we've heard, in the kind of pre-match. And, you know, in between game one and game three, they've been pretty happy with how they've gone about their business but just generally the crunch moments they call it the clutch moments they've kind of let themselves down I think back end of the innings Afghanistan got really got away from Ireland were disciplined we saw in the test match even on the game one they were very disciplined with the ball for large periods but in the batting uh, Hazy yep. they really did struggle up front you know we saw the card there two players in Harry Tector 138 and Lorcan Tucker 85 the next highest score Graham Hume 9 so they need more output from the likes of Paul Sterling uh, Andrew Balberni Curtis Camp for there wasn't that much between it. In the end, it was a comfortable win for Afghanistan. Ireland and Paul Sterling and Hiram Glasgow. Guys, 15% better, we're riding right the contest. Ahmed, of course, uh, on the other hand, Afghanistan uh, batting first, knew they'd get big runs on the board, and they did that and played very nicely. Uh, well, yeah, first of all, happy Ramadan, Kareem. Uh, and uh, Afghanistan will be very happy because uh, they were looking for a victory. And Gurbaz and Ibrahim Zadran enjoy batting first. So they once again put together a strong partnership. And that's the reason why in the last 25 overs, Afghanistan scored 206 runs for five wickets. So, yeah, they were pretty happy to bat first, I believe. Uh, Gurbaz was uh, absolutely sensational. He was the uh, player of the match and also his sixth one day 100. Let's find out a little bit more about a really key player for Afghanistan. Delicate late cut. The single that brings the 100, a leap in the air from Ramanullah Gurbas. It's his sixth one day international 100 for Afghanistan. I think always special debut 100 for everyone. It was, uh, you know, that was a great day for me, but today, Alhamdulillah, so excited with my 100 after a few innings that I got 100 for Afghanistan again. What a beautiful shot! Uh, of course, whenever you uh, you know get the chance, uh, and then you need to you know you need to give something positive. It takes positive things from that. There's catch drop from the Arlen Perler, so I just keep it in mind that today is my day. I need to do 100 uh, percent my best for my team. I think that was the luck for me. Uh, yeah, happy from that luck. In Afghanistan, my ideal was uh, Nawruz Mangal, always following him uh, from my childhood. But once I come to, I start professional cricket and then I saw MS Dhoni on the TV. Because of MS, uh, I become a wicketkeeper. Because of him, I start a cricket, you know. Uh, so, so inspired from him because the way he playing cricket, the way he keep himself calm. I think uh, he's one of the best. Uh, he's one of the best for me in the world. Yeah, 
Oh, he was absolutely superb. Fadaya, uh, let's just talk a bit about how proud Afghanistan are about Gabaz. Well, of course, he's uh, such a wonderful player, a genuine uh, striker of the ball. Uh, he is a 360 player for Afghanistan, shuffles across the uh, wickets, and, and he can hit any areas that he wants. And particularly for him, 39 innings only and already completed six centuries. So that's a big thing. And together with Ibrahim Zadran, he puts together a very strong opening player for Afghanistan. Yeah, it's remarkable, the record. And that 150 stand was uh, extraordinary in the first game. He wasn't the only star for Afghanistan. Faruqi was sensational with the ball right up front in particular. Yeah, left arm, you want any any side, one day cricket, T20 cricket, Hazy, you want a left arm. Yes, you want genuine pace. Faruqi hasn't got that genuine pace, but he's got serious skill. Think two years ago, he came on the scene. He was a genuine left arm in swing bowler. But what was really interesting from the first game, the ball wasn't swinging very early in the contest. He went around the wicket, using an angle to attack the subs here in Sharjah. Very good. This was an exceptional back end of the innings. He bowled five Yorkers out of six with absolute pin point accuracy. It was remarkable because when Sharjah, as a fast bowler at the back end, you generally say bowl back of a length into the surface because the ball's going to die in the surface. Fruki said, forget that. I'm going to bowl Yorker after Yorker after Yorker and in the end disrupted Mark Adair. So exceptional bowler getting better as well. And it would be wrong of us not to mention uh, Hasmola. He was uh, terrific right at the end with his quick fire 50. Oh, yeah, absolutely. For the first time, the skipper, Hashmatullah, scoring a 50 and less than 50 balls. You kind of talk about Hashmatullah version 2.0. It was good to see the fact that he scored quick runs and that really gave a good momentum to Afghanistan. And that was the reason why Afghanistan was able to score above 300. He came and he started attacking right from the moment he came into the uh, play and, and he really utilized the platform set for him in the really, really best possible manner. That was shot of the day for me from him, the fact that he yeah, was created fine, that. Fine knock, Hasmatullah Afridi, and that's the uh, the first time that he's got a 50 uh, inside 50 balls. is off 31 balls only, which was quite extraordinary. Now, the surface was very good in game number one. What about today? Let's join Tino. I'll start off by appreciating the wonderful work that's been done by the ground staff here in Sharjah because three days ago this whole field was covered with water and uh, they've done a wonderful job to make sure the outfield's in good condition as well as make sure that the pitch is nice and dry for today's encounter. Weather at the moment is about 26 degrees Celsius but different to that first match is a nice breeze across the stadium that'll make sure that the players will stay nice and fresh throughout today's game. Right, so we had outstanding innings, two of them in that first ODI. Ramunullah Gurbaz in the first innings, Harry Tekta, magnificent 138 in the second. Let's take time to listen to him about what he thinks about the surface here in Sharjah and how he went about counteracting that low bounce. Generally in charge it's just a little bit low so me being a tall guy you know looking to defend back down the wicket particularly the ball that sort of runs back in. He makes mention to two important points there, the ball keeping low a little bit, as well as what he did to be able to counteract and score as well as he did. Uh, it was pitch number four that other evening, and it's pitch number four again today. But before we get to it, this is what he was talking about. A lot of balls that kept a little bit low, and they didn't keep low only in the latter part of the game. They kept low in the early part of the game as well. So that's definitely something that the players are going to have to think about and consider today. The surface, when you take a closer look, very dry. Similarities to that first one day international, not much grass. The bit of grass that was there the other day definitely has gone away. The sheen that was there as well is not there today. What does that tell me when I look at the surface? Probably balls keeping low again. The faster bowlers looking to take pace off the ball. We also saw spin. The decision the other day was to bowl first here. I think the captains might change that today and decide to bat first. Okay, thanks very much, Tina. I mean, normally we've heard a bit of rain around the place. I mean, it's a tribute to the ground staff. Normally there's a bit of rain. There's perhaps a little bit more life in the surface. It doesn't sound like this time around. I don't think there's going to be a great deal of life in the surface, Hazy. I think it's going to be exactly the same as we saw game one. Generally, you come to Sharjah, it's slow, it skids on, shin high. Not really ball bouncing above knee high. So as a batter, you get down the surface, you get momentum into the ball. Don't try and think of playing too square. As a batter, try and hit through extra cover and down the ground. Against spin, you hit down down the ground and also what the batters really prospered in game one was the slog sweep so don't think too square don't try and use pace as you would in other parts of the world strong cricket shots it's a little bit old-fashioned here in Sharjah you set the innings up for the back end now all that being said it's so important to see what happened at the toss let's join Andrew Leonard 
Time for the toss here in the third and final, the deciding one-day international between Afghanistan and Ireland. Afghanistan looking to win the series 2-0, Ireland looking to square it. I've got the captains alongside me, Hashmatullah Shahidi, joined by Paul Sterling of Ireland, and David Boone, the ICC match referee. Hashmat, you've got the coin. Tails. Tails is the call. We're going to field again. And it is a tail. Paul, you've won the toss. What are you going to do, please, and why? Yeah, we're going to field again, hopefully put in a better performance than we did the other day. I think we did a number of things pretty well. We just lacked probably at those crucial moments, so we've got a chance to turn that around today. Surreal scenes a few days ago with the rain coming down, maybe quite Irish scenes. Has that made you feel a bit at home? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I think we bring it with us no matter where we go. It's not the first time we've seen rain in Dubai, and that's sort of given us maybe a little bit more of a chance to regroup and, and, and share our thoughts. So we've certainly put them together, and hopefully we can put that performance out in the field importance of today? Extremely, yeah. The series is on the line. You want to at least get a draw out of every series you play and it's a big game today for us. Finally, just any changes to your team today? There is. Uh, Barry McCarthy comes in for Craig Young. Straight up. Very best of luck as Thank always. You. Okay, Paul Sterling winning the toss, choosing to stick with his plan, which was to bowl first. Hashmat, are you happy again? Would, would you have liked to bat again? Uh, Bismillah rahman rahim uh, Yeah, we wanted to bat first. Uh, wicket looks good and uh, we will try our best to score more runs on the board and put them under pressure. Same questions I just asked Paul. What's the importance of today? You'd love a series victory, 2-0 unbeaten. Uh, yeah, of course, we, we love to win, and uh, today is the important game. Uh, so if we win this, the uh, series will be with us. Uh, so inshallah, we will try our best to make it possible. Anything different expected from the pitch for you? Uh, I think it looks the, it's the same pitch that we played the first ODI. It looks good for betting, and uh, the good thing today is a bit of windy also. So we expect that it will be no more due in the second innings than the, the, the way it was in the first one. So I'm hopeful of that, and inshallah, we will try our best. Okay, just finally, you had four potential debutants in the squad. One of them came in for the first ODI. Do we have a couple of debutants again today? Yeah, we have. Uh, we made two changes. We have two debutants. Uh, uh, so Gulbadin and uh, Noor Ahmad are not playing. And uh, uh, Nangyal Kharoti and uh, Navid Zadran, they both are the debutants for today. Want to wish them all the very best. Thank you so much, Ashmat. Thank you. Thank okay, that's the news from the toss. So Ireland, they've won the toss again, and they're going to bowl first. Right, let's have a look at the teams. Thanks very much, Andrew. Afghanistan, Fadai, where you go? Well, it's quite a beautiful looking sight, particularly Rahman Lagurba and Ibrahim Zadran. What a beautiful pair this for Afghanistan has been uh, for some time now. Uh, strong looking uh, team. Good to see two debutants. Uh, uh, Naveed Zadran has had a beautiful uh, debut in Test against Sri Lanka, played nicely against Ireland as well. But Nangyal Harota, who's a gun fielder, left arm spinner, and at the same time can bat down the late middle order. So, Nice balance side to me. Before we get to the uh, Ireland team, there's a couple of debutants. Yeah, absolutely. Nangyal Kharote from uh, Baghlan. Uh, he's a gun fielder. He's a uh, really good prospect. Uh, bowls left arm spin. And Naveed Zadran, what a debut he's had for the test match when he played against Sri Lanka earlier this year and gets his debut cap for the one day format. Correct. You took a blinder of a catch in that uh, first one day. It was just an, an absolute beauty. So uh, there's uh, Afghanistan, a couple of changes for them. Ireland, they've just got the one change. Now, Yeah, one change. Byron McCarthy in for Craig Young. A bit more pace, a bit more aggression from Byron McCarthy. He can bat as well. He won't bat number 11, I guarantee you that. But for Ireland, the big, big area is Andrew Balberni, Paul Sterling and Curtis Camfer. Those first three really have to fire and set up that middle order. Tector, we know, is a great player. Tucker's in fine form. George Dockle and Mark there can also add useful runs. But for Ireland, if they're going to win this game and they're going to be chasing Balberni, Sterling and Camper have to set it up Paisy. And Tector has got to continue playing uh, superbly. He was magnificent in the last game and we've got a bit of a profile about him. Let's find out more. Great to score 100 for my own personal um, satisfaction I guess but um, it doesn't mean much in a loss so um, just trying to consistently perform to that level obviously you're not going to score runs every game or score hundreds like that every game so it's um, personally satisfying but um, I would take it I'd take a duck and a win in, in one sense so um, yeah I, I think I've played more important knocks for sure that have helped the Irish team get over the line. 310 was probably 30 or 40 over par so we would have had to have batted really well to, to chase those runs um, and obviously when you're chasing that sort of score, the right seven or eight and over, 
Um, you need a lot to go your way, and I, I think me and Lorcan batted, batted nicely, but um, he was unfortunate to get out when he did, but that was obviously a big turning point in the match, for sure. My game's in a, in a pretty good place at the minute. I've felt like that for a while, um, but I guess always come to different conditions against um, an attack, an Afghan attack, that I haven't faced all of those bowlers before. So facing new bowlers, particularly mystery spin for the first time, is, can be a challenge. So I um, was happy the way I played um, in that sense, yeah. I think we, we learned a lot from, from the game, the first ODI, and I, I guess just trying to implement what, what we learned, particularly as a batting and bowling group, and, and trying to bring that into the final ODI and, and level off the series as the go. Yeah, he played absolutely superbly, that's for sure, in the, uh, the first one day, and uh, he's been in good nick now. You've got some numbers about him. Well, before we get to the numbers, Hazy, what I want to say, I'm going to throw some names at you. Ed Joyce, probably Ireland's best ever multi-format batter. Paul Sterling, who is probably one of the most talented players I've ever played cricket with. Owen Morgan and Harry Tector. I haven't seen a player come out of Ireland since Owen Morgan. I know, I've known Owen Morgan since he was knee-high to a grasshopper. Mentality. I'm not talking about technique. I'm talking about mentality and the desire to get better and better and better and score runs after runs. Unbelievable technique, never in question. But for me, Hazy, it's the mental aptitude and attitude when he walks on the field to really score runs and dominate. He wants to be the best player Ireland have ever produced. And for a young man, and he's still a young man, Harry Tector, to have that kind of attitude is remarkable. Not being satisfied with a century or another half century, just to keep churning out the runs. And just to add to that, Hazy, when you talk about numbers, and I've got my little bit of paper from our stats map. In the start of his career, up to the end of 22, first 15 balls to striker, it was 50, okay? Inning strike rate 77. Since then, so since the start of 2023, first 15 ball strike rate 66, inning strike rate 93. So he's made a concerted effort in the last 18 months or so to be more aggressive in the initial stages, which sets himself up. He is one of the best players Ireland have ever produced. Currently ODI ranked number seven. So he's up there with the greats of the modern game. Right, here we go. Afghanistan are walking out to bat. They're going to do pretty much what they did in the first game. Yeah, just repeat the same thing. Score, put put a big total, 300 plus, and then make sure that uh, Ireland never reaches there. Because the facilities look pretty good. Just very briefly, now are we surprised about the toss, winning the toss and fielding first? I was hazy, to be honest with you. I thought maybe Paul Sterling might change tact and stick runs on the board. And saying that, six of the last ten day nighters here in Sharjah won batting second. Paul Sterling loves to chase. So, yeah, not surprising from the Ireland point of view, but looking from the outside, I felt maybe runs on the board might be the way to go today. Right on. Thanks, boys. Thanks for your views. Right, we look forward to this game. It should be a beauty. Let's go and join the commentary box. We've got Brian Murgatroyd and also Andrew Leonard. Take it away, boys. Welcome to the Sharjah Cricket Stadium, where we're getting ready for the third One Day International in this series. The second was washed out on Saturday. Ramanola Gerbas fresh from a fantastic innings of 121 in match one. And his opening partner, as was the case last Thursday, Ibrahim Zadran made 60 in game one. Their partnership was worth 150 in a shade over 30 overs, and it was the perfect platform, really for Afghanistan to power on. Mark Adair, who had a rough time with the ball on Thursday, went for 79 in his 10 overs. It was an expensive day all round, actually, for Ireland, particularly the second half of that Afghanistan innings when they scored over 200 runs in the last 25 overs. But Paul Sterling has decided he wants to chase again today. Andrew Leonard alongside me as we uh, get ready for the first ball. Andrew, good afternoon to you. What are your expectations? A bit surprised that Paul Sterling decided to bowl first again? Yeah, very good afternoon, Brian, and, and good afternoon, everyone. Great to be back playing cricket, having just done nothing but watch the rainfall a few days ago. Expectations, good question. Look. I think for Ireland, they'll take a huge amount from that first ODI. I thought they were excellent in phases, and the margins ended up being pretty narrow, although Afghanistan certainly deserved their victory, were good value for it. No, this Irish team an awfully long time. 
they do have they tend to stick to their processes and you could call it stubbornness they tend to stick to their methodology so the methodology was where well, we thought the Jew was going to come in and aid batting second and that was evidenced by how the spinners struggled there wasn't much turn on offer so they stuck with it I wasn't really surprised they stuck with it but I also wasn't surprised that Hashmatullah Shahidi said he'd happily have had a bat first well there was some dew at the back end of the game on Thursday a delay here because Raman Gurbas isn't happy with the background so one of our on-field umpires Ahmed Shah Pakteen is coming down to offer some instructions seems to be a little bit of rope or string there that he's not happy with or Raman Gurbas isn't happy with anyway he's just tucking that bit of string in or trying to anyway he's doing his best Dickie Bird impression isn't he where was that background he, Dickie Bird is getting horribly bothered by the the light off the windows that was Old Trafford but you can take your pick really on um, any number of stoppages that seem to coincide with Dickie standing over the years I remember a drain at Headingley which was actually spouting water and that caused a, a stoppage as well but that bit of string or rope has now been moved to the satisfaction of Ramanilla Gurbas and hopefully now we can get underway two slips in position wonder how long that second slip is going to last today it was out by the time we had the second over on Thursday. Last, no, eight, five, six, five. Six, two, the countdown is done and dusted. So is all the shenanigans with the background. Off we go. A bit of movement back into the right-hander there. First up from Mark Adair. Yeah, Ramadan Kareem to everyone celebrating in this part of the world. Brian, you've lived here a long time. Just get a look at it's a fraction of movement back in. Again, keeping low as we identified in the pre-match show. Very special time of the year here in the UAE. Yes, it certainly is. Holy month of Ramadan. Fasting being one of the pillars of Islam. Those who are observing the fast won't eat or drink between the hours of sun up and sundown. And something Ireland had last year with their opposition in Bangladesh as they finally returned to the, the test arena after that long hiatus. A similar time of year. Exact same structure of a tour as well. One test, three ODIs three T20s we have been robbed of one of the ODIs sadly due to that huge volume of rain that fell couldn't quite believe on the drive up we're staying at sort of the tail end of Dubai the amount of standing rain that is still in and around Dubai and Sharjah one thing about the UAE they do so many things very well but one thing they don't do necessarily is drains well, I think they're not, not just cursing Ireland, but maybe Scotland as well, because Scotland were up the road due to play their fourth and final ICC Men's Cricket World Cup League 2 fixture in Dubai. Ireland were due to be here against Afghanistan. They put the two Celtic nations together, even in the desert, and all of a sudden the heavens open. Goodness me, that was serious rain on Saturday. I don't know whether any of you have gone onto social media and maybe seen some of the photos or videos of the ground here. Players would have been better off turning up in their swimming trunks rather than uh, their playing apparel. Again, just a little bit of movement back into the right-hander. And 
one of the great assets that Mark Adair has, we saw it on show in spades in the test match, that ability to move the ball both ways. There's the one and only change for Ireland today. Many will have been pleased to see Barry McCarthy in, but maybe a bit surprising to see Craig Young miss out. Well fielded by Andy McBride at mid-off. And that's the end of the first over. Afghanistan then put into bat, two without loss. Two changes for Afghanistan, Gulbadi Naib and Noor Ahmed missing out and Nangal Karote and Navid Zadran both coming in for their one-day international debuts. Graham Hume, who really did impress with the ball, nine overs, one for 40 last Thursday, getting a first opportunity from the Sharjah club end. With those two debutants for Afghanistan, Brian, there's, alongside Gazanfer, three men in the Afghan lineup who really just taking their first baby steps into the international game. Gazanfer obviously forced his way into the reckoning thanks to that outstanding Under-19 World Cup in South Africa a couple of months ago. Ireland a very settled, very steady side. Punch through extra cover. A little bit of collision there. And they'll come back for three. A collision between batter and bowler. As that run was completed, the second run. Just nicely punched, not out of the middle. Probably the, the bottom corner of the bat, but still hit well enough with fluency by Zadran to get three. Yeah, I don't think Hume was expecting him to turn in that way, was he? No damage done. Good to see Zadran back on his feet. Didn't field the entire first ODI. Has been a little bit of something going around both camps. Yes, he batted exceptionally well in the test match as well. Let's not forget that. Half century on Thursday. Gubaz now on strike. Again, evidence of low bounce there. This is the same surface that was used for the game on Thursday. That ball barely carrying through to Lorcan Tucker. Here is the surface. It hasn't got that sheen that it had on Thursday. That gloss, if you like, that we're so used to seeing on Sharjah pitches. Crazy paving of cracks. It's a very, very dry surface indeed. Yeah, you wonder from the curation team's end where they may be thinking of using a different pitch and then because of that rain they, they really had no option but to stick with the same one or maybe they're always intending it certainly a good surface maybe not the easiest to score on despite the fact we saw the best part of 600 runs across the 100 overs that were were played i think all the batters said it was just a bit tricky Interesting as well that uh, second slip has come out already and has gone to Gully, Andrew Balburni. Mohamed Jamil, the curator here at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium. And Sterling just assessing the surface. Famous stadium here, of course. Staged so many great one-day matches over the years. Use of the feet there by Gurbaz. Picks up the single. 
the end of the over and it's six without loss Confirmation of our teams for this one day international two changes for Afghanistan one for Ireland but No change in terms of strategy for Ireland. They've won the toss and opted to bowl first I think Barry McCarthy might be a, a little aggrieved at whoever has done that graphic saying he's gonna bat 11 <laughs> Good scampering and an underarm at the stumps by Curtis Camphor. They're going to go upstairs for this one. Well, some muted celebrations. From Camphor and Adair. Is this closer than it first appeared? Great dive, great commitment there from Ramanella Gerbas. Our TV umpire today is Bismillah Jan Shinwari. And I'm pretty sure he's got a straightforward decision there to determine that is not out. Brian, the dive has saved him. It really has. Not out will appear on the big screen. The correct decision from Shinwari, no doubt. Without that dive, I think he could have been gone. And it's not just the quality of, of Gerbaz's ball striking, aggression and, and brilliance with the bat. Always been struck by his fitness since he's first emerged onto the international stage. He needed every inch of the dive there. There is Noor Ahmed running out a fresh pair of gloves potentially. This is out today. Interesting, he's got a mask on as well. I can only assume that's uh, in relation to what you were talking about a bit earlier, Andrew, about the fact that there is a little bit of sickness going round in the Afghanistan camp. Interesting as well that it was Curtis Camphor who hit the stumps at the bowler's end then, with Gerbas diving in, because, of course, that was a pivotal moment in the first game on Thursday that those two players shared. Gerbas dropped on seven by uh, Curtis Camphor. And... I think had that catch been taken, it would have been a very different game indeed. To start with, of course, Ramat Shah would almost certainly have been batting at number three. And the whole tempo of the innings, I'm sure, would have been completely different. Yeah, I think that's such a good point. It completely changed the complexion of the entire contest. Gerbaz went on to make 121 off 117. If you do keep your scores that way, the drop cost 114 runs. And Camper just had that little chance at redemption there, didn't he? There's a look at this drop. It was, well, I think all of us would describe it as regulation, particularly when you have those reverse hands in that position. Even if you bobble it, you'll get another chance, but remarkably burst through the hands and also ran away to the boundary for four. As predicted as well, second slip has come out. Andrew Balburni now has gone to short cover. Another illustration of the, the real lack of pace in this surface. They do feel to a certain extent like two sides at slightly different stages of their journey. Even though they've shared so much over the last 15 to 20 years, it, this Irish side, very, very settled, very stable. 
really pick the same 15, 16 players for almost all three formats across a number of years now since the retirement of that golden generation. There is that mask that Noor Ahmed is wearing. Definitely a little bit going around both camps at the moment. Whereas for Afghanistan, they're using the opportunity to blood some new youngsters. Three very exciting players. We've seen in ODI cricket for the first time in this series, or we will see. Almost a play on. Almost doesn't count, though. Three gone. Afghanistan, eight without loss. Ibrahim Zadran and Raman Gurbas produced their fifth century plus stand last Thursday. What a record that is. So, so impressive that. Quite a strong breeze blowing from the, the west today. And that's hitting with the wind. Over cover, Ibrahim Zadran, and gets a boundary. Well, far too much width, particularly at Hume's pace here. It's out towards the guide wide line and short of length, and just smashed away a real freebie. Hume has showed in, in phases since he's come into international cricket the control that he possesses has been one of his assets. Cannot bowl there at that pace. Yes, that breeze across the ground coming from the west. One of the things that does is, unfortunately, it brings the, uh, the smell of the nearby sewage works across the ground, which uh, I've noticed today, and the players will be noticing that too. But also, it could have... Uh, implications in terms of whether we get any dew this evening we did see some dew on Thursday but there was less of a breeze then we are not bringing you smell vision Brian despite the, the very apt point the very correct point he knows it all this man doesn't he Brian Murgatroyd there is no detail that he omits from every single day and today's a big contest you heard the importance of both captains talking of it there Afghanistan desperate to win the series. Ireland will want to level it. They won't feel as though they've really done a huge amount wrong the other day. I thought they were quite impressive in many parts of that first ODI, Brian. Yes, that was a terrific partnership, wasn't it, between Lorcan Tucker and Harry Tector. Tector is in the top 10 one day international batters joint sixth actually at the moment with the recently retired David Warner the only players ahead of him Shubman Gill, Virat Kohli, Barbara Zam, Rohit Sharma and Daryl Mitchell that's uh, August company indeed again really good running putting some pressure on the island fielders inside the ring here if you can't hit boundaries at least keep ticking the strike over good cricket we just saw their numbers didn't we just how prolific they are as an opening partnership and very good intuition between them in terms of the communication we saw the inverse didn't we when Ramacha came in at points batting with Gerbaz but that's excellent running just puts the fielders and indeed the bowler under pressure. No, this time. End of the over. Four gone. Afghanistan put into bat. 13 without loss.
another over from Mark Adair then. Jonathan Trott making his notes. He certainly has had a big impact, hasn't he, since he's come in as the, the head coach of Afghanistan. Fine player, seems like a very solid pair of hands for Afghan cricket, who have so much flair, so much X factor, so much brilliance. And to think, of course, he wasn't actually first choice. He only came in after Graham Thorpe was taken ill, having been given the job. Graham Thorpe, another fellow England uh, batter, wasn't able to take up the role. Jonathan Trott stepped in, and well, he's done a fine job since then. They, they were basically one win away from reaching the semi-finals of the ICC Cricket World Cup last uh, year. There was no fluke about that either, was there? It really would have been value for their semi-final spots took an utterly miraculous innings from glenn maxwell maybe the finest the odi game has ever seen maybe in fact the best performance bat baller in the field in the history of the more than 4,000 odis there's been and certainly i just like that sort of counterfoil that trot's meticulous planning brings to a group of brilliant cricketers that was a hack. There's no other word to describe that from Ibrahim Zadran. Lots of bottom hand, heaving that ball away on the onside. Bit fortunate there, and <laughs> rehearses the more orthodox stroke once he's got to the non-striker's end. You can probably hear it through your audio at home. Ireland very much a buzz in the field. I feel like a completely different unit to the one that was... Well, so poor in the ICC Men's Cricket World Cup qualifier in Zimbabwe. I know you were there down in, in Bulawayo, Brian. I think an element of that has been the change of captain and over to Paul Sterling. Just something we'll maybe touch on in the next over here. That, that's the ICC Men's ODI rankings. The way the qualification for the next World Cup will work, Brian, it's enhanced again back to a 14 team world cup that we last saw in 2015 that was the last time ireland qualified so the top eight in the rankings alongside the two main co-hosts i.e south africa and zimbabwe off those rankings will qualify pulled away for four looked like a slower ball there to me from mark adair but it was dispatched nonetheless 18 without loss afghanistan So that qualification pathway, which was officially announced by the ICC last month, means that alongside South Africa and Zimbabwe, will qualify automatically as co-hosts. It's a lovely pick-up. Delightful shot, that, over the onside. Ibrahim Zadran, well, his hack in the previous over wasn't particularly orthodox. This was delightful. Yeah, just a really nice pick-up, wasn't it? Gentle flow of the arms. It is a gentle pace he's facing, and Hume has been a little bit both sides of the wicket here. Let's see where this was picked off from. Indeed, leg stump. Has to be more accurate than that. And that was back to the unorthodox from Ibrahim Zadran. You might feel it's a little unlucky that this has gone over the top, given the number that have come through at a stump height that hasn't missed by much. Tucker actually does quite well to adjust because it's movement a little bit through the air and then it just continues on. Probably gone over the top of the leg stump, maybe even middle. Seen a bit of everything, haven't we, from Ibrahim Zadran thus far.
misfield from Sterling. No harm done from an Irish perspective. This was the last ball of the previous over. It might have been shade of a leg cutter to it. I, I thought you were right, Brian. It didn't quite come down at full pace, did it? Gerbaz tended to pick those quite well a few days ago. Does the same again. In fact, that was the dram, was it? Slash through backward point. That'll be four more. All of a sudden, Afghanistan just starting to turn on the afterburners here. They've uh, taken a few overs of reconnaissance, getting used to the surface, and now the batters are looking to play their shots. It was Gerbaz, and now it's a second boundary for Gerbaz. Gets to double figures. I think these two are licking their lips all of a sudden on for another big partnership at the top. So all the slips have now dispersed. Ring field on the offside, and indeed on leg. And down at third man, Barry McCarthy going through some extensive warm-up exercises, so it looks as though he's going to be into the action very soon. And certainly McCarthy showed us in, in that test match the additional pace that he can bring. It'll be four more. Hume's gentle pace, and Gerbaz dispatches him over the onside. 13 off that over, and Afghanistan are ticking. 31 without loss. The alarm bells are starting to ring for Ireland because Gerbaz and Ibrahim Zadran are looking to get on with things now. And in the face of that onslaught, Barry McCarthy comes on into the side today in place of Craig Young. Oh, goodness me, that was only just short. Of the fielder, I think it's Andrew Balburney there at mid off, throwing himself forward. Afghanistan have played against Graham Hume just once before. It was a long a couple of years ago. Actually, his debut T20I, he bowled four overs, hammered around Stormont for 40. They lined them up a few days ago, played him with great respect. Today they've gone after him, haven't they? McCarthy called for. Well, it's called a wide. Zadran going for the drive, the bat just turning in his hand a fraction. And in fact, uh, the fielder there was Harry Tector diving forward. Brave effort there to try and get his hands under the ball. But even his uh, long arms couldn't quite get that catch. Brian, we've only got one last over together, so just quickly to round out that qualification process for that next World Cup, the 2027 World Cup. So 10 teams will go through the rankings or the, the hosting process, and then the next four will be through the Cricket World Cup qualifier. There's some of the Irish fans that have come out. Mark Adair's mother you saw there, Joanne. That Cricket World Cup qualifier, the big difference, it will have four spots now instead of two like it did in the last two cycles. And Paul Sterling has made it a very stated aim of Ireland to get back to a 50-over World Cup. It will have been a 12-year gap if they can get there.
for that next edition down in Africa. And certainly you think of the rise of Irish cricket, it owes so much to the 50 over World Cup. Halcyon famous days in, in Jamaica, in India, and in New Zealand in particular, although also in Australia in 2015. But Nelson and I suppose that win over Zimbabwe and Hobart were the standouts alongside Bangalore and, and Sabina Park. It's been a big gulf in the Irish calendar not making the men's Premier World Cup and they're desperate to get back there. Listen, you mentioned that Scotland were due to play here on Thursday, on uh, Saturday, sorry, a one-day international in Dubai against the UAE, which was uh, washed out. They've been here in the UAE along with the hosts and Canada. There are three of eight teams in the Cricket World Cup League 2, along with Nepal, the Netherlands, Oman, the USA and Namibia. Four of those teams will go into the qualifier. Or well, the top four, anyway, from the World Cup Super, from the World Cup uh, League Two, and then the bottom four of those sides will take play, take part in a playoff. So there's plenty of places and plenty of action to uh, to take place over the next couple of years to determine who's going to be in that World Cup qualifier in the first place. That League Two will have. 90 one-day internationals in total between those eight teams. If you look at Canada's start, who've come up from the Challenge League, winning four from four, it shows how competitive it will be. For Ireland, it will most likely be the qualifier. You didn't see them in the top ten in those rankings. That's through, threading the eye of a needle through that packed cover field. Ibrahim Zadran. Picks up another boundary, Afghanistan put into bat, 38 without loss. for none. Thirty-eight for none. Sixteen of those that are runnable to Gorbaz, the man in good form. Ibrahim Zadran, twenty-one and twenty-six. ball of the previous over and is beautifully timed through the offside field it's packed An extra cover in place backward point square cover in the middle so got to make sure that you pierce that offside gap well and he did that on that occasion oh, no, gives himself a bit of room Gorbaz looking to go over the offside very good afternoon Devinder Kumar Good afternoon, Tino. Good afternoon to everyone tuning in. Ramesh Shah up next. The Mr. Dependable has been making significant contribution for Afghanistan. At the top of the order, Chen of Fieldsman through the offside. And Gurbaz is making a conscious effort to give it a room and press it through the offside. With again, this time he goes behind square on the offside. Just waited a little bit, did Ramanullah Gurbaz? Finds the gap once again. Glorious stroke from Gurbaz. Was waiting for that kind of opportunity. Was trying to give it a room to himself to hit through the offside. Opportunity there and cast on big time. A lovely stroke. Shot, width given. Goes about just getting to the left of the fieldsman at backward point. That's a better line. Mark Aday needs to realize that Gurbaz has been trying to give himself a bit of room to be able to go through that offside. 
So he's got to make sure he's as tight as possible on that off stump. Otherwise, it just presents an opportunity for Gurbaz in particular, who's looking to take advantage of any opportunity to score through that offside. That's what I'm talking about. This time, just a little shimmy down the ground, over, long off on the offside, first six of the innings. Brilliant stroke, using his feet to the fast bowler. So in the test match as well, trying to force the pace into this innings, getting up to a sedate start, looking to catch on, looking to play an attacking shot, boundary already through the square of the wicket, further making change, looking to pitch it up. Is coming down the track, keeping his shape and making a fine connection from the center of the blade for six. You make a good point, keeping his shape. Sometimes when Gorbaz looks to be attacking, he looks to go leg side too quickly. Closes the face of the bat on the ball. But so effective when he stays straight. Keeps that front elbow up. And it shuts forced a field change Harry Tector goes down to long off third man into the circle deep backward square he's got a ball straight does exactly that but they're still able to get a single end of a good over 11 from it it's 49 for none Adair Hume McCarthy, who comes into the side after missing out in the first ODI in the series. Expensive in his first over, seven from it. Replaced Gary Hume, who's been expensive himself today. Just three overs gone for 22. Deep backward square leg to McCarthy as well, third man in place. It's well bowled. Quite sedated the start from the Afghanistan opening pair today as it was the other day, but in the last two or three overs, we've just picked up that scoring rate. After eight overs in that first one day international, they were 30 for none. Today, 19 runs ahead of that, 49. And it's a result of those last two, three overs where they've just looked to be a little bit more aggressive in their approach. Short. Cut away well. But straight to George Dockrell down at third man. Brings up the 50. Again, taking time, both the batsmen to get used to the pace and bounce of the surface on the same surface. Contribution coming from Gurbaz 28, Ibrahim 21. But playing differently today, there's a conscious effort to play attacking shots at the same time. In the previous game, we saw both the batsmen trying to play in the V. In this game, trying to hit some shots, square the wicket on the offside as well. to get that away it's definitely got onto him a bit quicker than he thought Zadran but it wasn't short enough to play the pull shot it's the angle into the right hand batsman too short to play the shot through the onside short mid wicket was in position as well this has been a prolific pair the opening pair for Afghanistan bringing about Great success in recent years, completing more than 1,000 runs as an opening pair for Afghanistan. Oh, straight, I think that might be leg buys. Not so sure there was bat on that. 
It was. Says Ankara Pakteen. This is what you're talking about. On the Roy Sharma and Shubman Gill. 1,523, 1,452 Ibrahim and Gurbaz before this match. Now they've gone past 1,500 runs. Tremendous contribution at the top of the order to set the tone, to provide the platform for the team to thrive. Oh, misfield. Paul Sterling diving away to his right. Gurbaz wanted two. Mark Adair does the cleaning up, makes sure they get just one. Yeah, those numbers we were looking at, outstanding over the years. As you say, they've just given a wonderful platform to the team consistently over the last two years in international cricket. And even though they started off slowly in that first ODI, it was the platform that they set that allowed Afghanistan to explode at the end. Fifty two for Nine overs in, 52 for none. And once again, Gurbaz and Ibrahim going about their business well. Making sure that Pakistan have a good platform set. Change in bowling. Theo van Warkum. Fourth match, he's got four wickets. Best of three for 55. in that first one day international those career best figures long off and a deep good wicket it's two fielders in the circle he's got a slip and he got turned the other day you'll expect some today as well that one very full goes straight on with the arm he needs to be playing that a little bit straighter Gurbaz a dry surface that was too close to the batsman to play the cut shot. Also was defeated in the length as well. Gurbaz likes to sweep. Much better length to settle into rhythm. Talking about two batsmen batting together. Gurbaz and Ibrahim. They've been batting together since under 16 days. Playing together for Kabul Eagles in the Shpagiza Cricket League as well. Under 19 cricket for Afghanistan. Swept. Decent connection. One bounce into the fence for four. Calculated the stroke from Gurbaz. Knows that there's no deep back with square leg. He's Picked the ball that's in line with the stumps. He had to make sure he hit it, and he hit it well. Oh, edge. It's gone very quickly. Between slip, no time for Sterling to react. Four more runs. Movement at the crease from Gurbaz. Trying to take the tack to the spinner. Dry surface, always possibility of getting the ball to turn. Let's get off the thick edge flew between the slipping men the wicket keeper for four mm, scoring right up above six Afghanistan. 
it's definitely today been more of a concerted effort to get off to a quicker start. Sixty-one for none. Sharp Tin will signal the beginning of power play two. Four fielders will be allowed outside the 30 yard circle up until the end of the 40th over. Immediately, Paul Sterling has employed the four fielders he's allowed to. Sweeper on the offside, leg side, find leg third man. It's well done from Andy Balberni. He made sure that he just pretended as if he was cutting off that angle. Move very quickly across and just put some doubt in Gurbaz's mind as to whether the chance for a single was there. We've seen in the previous game as well miscommunication on a couple of occasions. We've seen the runouts as well, set batsmen separating in form of runout as well. Both the batsmen spending a lot of time together on and off the field. Great understanding about each other. No! Loud call from Gurbaz on that occasion. It's so not only they've been playing together, Tino. There has been conscious effort from Gurbaz to take the cues from Ibrahim's batting and become more consistent as a batsman. Gurbaz has always been a prolific scorer for Afghanistan, has been playing attacking shots. But now, post World Cup, he wants to develop as an all format player. Now, the importance of being able to learn off teammates. You said they played together for a very long time, and he's a good player. It's lovely to be able to pick other niceties from other players, bring them into your game. And one thing he needs to make sure, which I'm sure he will, is keep his natural flair. It's a wonderful striker of the ball, and that's what's made him so successful. I'm just talking about their partnership since they've come together. And 12 scores of 270 plus in one day cricket. So that's the effect they've got on Afghanistan. Gives them a good start and an opportunity to explode at the end. We saw that in that first ODI. That's the experience for Gurbaz playing in various leagues. For Ibrahim, it's about playing all format cricket. Over the years, also playing in England as well, in league cricket. Bringing that experience together, trying to become consistent pair. And this pair has made a significant difference. They've been trained by Andy Mole earlier at under-19 level. Then getting the opportunity to work with various professional coaches about bringing more structure to, to their batting. And that has helped in scoring heavily. Oh, it's up in the air. Opportunity gone. <coughs> Kampfer completes the catch. He hasn't looked himself today, Ibrahim Zadran. Seen him play a couple of uncharacteristic strokes. He plays another. And this time it's his downfall. Trying to force the issue, trying to hit it down the ground. Just taking the pace of the ball as well, getting high on the bat. And collecting it in typical Australian ways. Fingers pointing the skyward. And that brings about the dismissal of Ibrahim. Out for 22, 62 for 1.
62 for one. First breakthrough for Ireland. It brings Ramat Shah to the crease. Outstanding career himself. 3,726 runs at an average above 36. 28 half centuries to go with five tons. Majority of those runs would have been scored here as well. A lot of their one day cricket at Sharjah, Afghanistan. Sixty two for one. Ibrahim Zadran, first man to fall. Ahmad Shah will come in at his customary number three position. He didn't in the first game because it was a stage where Afghanistan were looking to move on with the score. Stopping it short, thought that he could clear that through the onside. Getting the top edge. Massive relief for Ireland. Winning the toss, deciding to bowl first. down the ground that is beautifully timed by Ramanola Gurbaz four runs to start the over Gurbaz is stroking the ball beautifully the score of the wicket on the offside down the ground as well playing the sweep shot also this time tossing it up did not have to do much just clearing his front leg once again teeing off straight down the ground for four Loafal toss, oh, he's missed out there. Gurbaz had had a bit of width outside the off stump, and the reaction tells you as well. That's the boundary straight down the ground. Go, Flatter and quicker. After that stroke, a greasy shot down the ground from Gurbaz, now looking to check the stumps. Down the track. Down the ground. Oh, opportunity. But it's gone quickly. Back at Van Warkum. Wasn't able to hold on, but Gurbaz is definitely looking to get on with things, yeah. Lucky. Very lucky on that occasion. Survived in the previous game as, as well. Went on to get a 100. Again, full toss. Looking to smack it down the ground through the fingers. A goalkeeper's deflection. the mark Ramat Shah interesting field set long off and sweeper on the offside a very fine backward square leg and a mid wicket on the boundary single to end the over after 12 69 for one
beautiful. Sharjah International Cricket Stadium. Thank you. Barry McCarthy. The man who got the breakthrough, and how often does he do that? For Ireland cricket. Aggressive bowler, enjoys the opportunities that he gets. Just drifting down the leg side. Rehma Shah was brilliant for Afghanistan during the ODI World Cup in India. Exploring more areas to score runs. Manipulating the field. Pushing the ball into the gap and uh, was able to find more areas to hit boundaries as well. Ever evolving batsman for Afghanistan. Sound technique and excellent temperament to play the longer version of the game as well left alone and Ramat Shah will be looking to spend some time out in the middle today and get some form going into the T20s just a reminder of course that the second ODI was abandoned due to excessive rain. So looking back to the test match, didn't get runs there. And definitely be looking to make sure he puts in a valuable contribution this afternoon. Good bowling for McCarthy. Just drifting down the leg side, the first one, now attacking the stumps. The general view is that there's a possibility of ball not quite coming off the surface or a little bit of indifferent bounce. Attacking the stumps is a right way to go about or forcing the batsman to play the spur of the wicket. Definitely. You've got to try and keep as straight as you can at that off stump. You've got to get the length right as well. Too full makes it a lot easier for the batsman to play the strokes. So does too short. That length is almost about right. Unfortunately, just a bit too much angle into the right-hander, which allowed him to turn it into the onside. Not a bad option from the fast bowler attacking the stumps. With the new batsman at the crease, Ramashan in particular, he's bowling differently to Gurbaz. He's hitting the back of length, looking to keep it outside the off stump. He's attacking more to Rehmer Shah with the possibility of new batsman at the crease, feet quite not moving or not, though he started really well. The first ball that he faced was off the front foot. On 46, Gurbaz. Looking for the single. Good work from Dockrell. Speeding in from backward point. They need to get this communication sorted out because he walks into the stroke and says no. Different acts altogether. Saying no but walking into the stroke, making that determined effort to take a run. Then pulling off. This has been good over. Just two runs so far from McCarthy. Dot to end the over, a good one, just two from it, 71 for one. Seventy-one for one, thirteen overs in. Positive start. 
once again from Afghanistan. Ijad al Safi, the fourth umpire from Afghanistan, doing some repair work. Gurbaz has been a bit lucky. He was lucky in the first game. Today he's already given another opportunity. And Ireland keep giving him an opportunity to keep batting. Costly drop in the first ODI. He's had another chance already today. Another opportunity created. It's very fine and so quick for Sterling to react and to find a way to take the catch. Now those opportunities you've got to go straight away. Ray McCarthy just having a word with the bowling coach. Oh, that's nicely played. Well fielded as well. And almost a run out. Got to be careful. A lot depends on how top of the bats for Afghanistan. His timing it quite well from the center of the bat ball reached straight to the fieldsman. Gurbaz was just wandering around. Always itching to take a run, take a strike. And that's where you want to be on a surface like this. You might get one to kick off, you might get one just to keep a bit low, which we saw several times on the surface in the first ODI. But the line was the best thing about that ball. You listen to him. Harry Tector speaking earlier, he spoke about how he counteracted the low bounce here at Charger by playing as late as possible, looking to play up the ground full face oh I think that's gone it is he's got him again Mark Adair just played inside the line of the ball probably just straightened took the outside edge Ramit Shah continues to struggle in the series amazing bowling from Adair just a movement away Feeling for the ball, straightforward catch. Deliveries attacking the stumps, just coming back into the right hand batsman and then just holding its line. And Ramasha was feeling for the ball, he's out for four, 73 for two, Afghanistan. Captain Hashmatullah Shahidi walks out to the middle at the fall of the second wicket. Series of deliveries coming into the right in batsman. 97 is best in one day internationals. Played a significant half century against Pakistan at Chennai. They had kicked off celebration across the country. Ramar Shah. You can understand the disappointment throughout the series. Once again, nicking off. Series of deliveries coming back into the right-hand batsman and then just holding its line. You can understand celebration from Ireland. 
Abed in particular, and Ramashad's struggle against Abed continues. 73 for two. Certain bowlers getting into the mind of the batsmen. We've seen over the years in the history of the game as well. Shane won to McKenzie. Or even Sachin Tendulkar to Glenn McGrath. That's Hamid Hassan, the legendary Hamid Hassan. The bowling coach for Afghanistan cricket team made a telling contribution in the rise of Afghanistan cricket from the beginning. This rides the bounce, we'll take it on here. That marks the end of the 14th over, 74 for two. Well, that's a very interesting uh, first 14 overs. 74 for two. Afghanistan would have been very pleased with their run rate. If they hadn't lost more than, say, one wicket, they would have been even uh, more pleased. But now they're two down, which is just going to put a little bit of a stutter on things, I'd imagine. The buzz is unlikely to change his style. Hasmatullo is the man that got uh, 50 off 31 balls in the first one day. But different circumstances when he arrived at the crease then after a magnificent opening stand of 150. So this is a situation now where Ireland are coming back into this game. So that's something that needs to be recognised by Afghanistan on a surface which is flat, on a surface which is uh, dry, which is going to keep a little bit lower later on. Wickets going down on 62 and 73. So 74 for two now. Ahmed Fadai is alongside me. Ahmed, welcome. Good afternoon, Hazy. Absolutely a brilliant start from Ireland. Especially seeing the back of Rahmat Shah now. Two wickets down. Hamid Hassan in the frame. What a character he's been for Afghanistan. Played 38 matches, took 59 wickets, scored one fifer. Every wicket was a sensation. He forced his way in through the batters. Such a brilliant bowler he was for Afghanistan. Yeah, I'm seriously impressive. Set a nice tone for the guys to follow. Which is what they're going to have to do later on today. Gabar's on 46. Always very strong square the wicket. That's uh, brilliantly fielded. Watch that for an effort. Brilliant, brilliant fielding by George Dockrell. You always have your gut fielder at key position. Point is one of that region where you want your fielders to stop as many runs. It's a little bit leg side. Most keepers get a little bit excited these days when something goes down the leg side clearly just to try and distract the umpire a little bit. Not too many umpires fall for that trick these days. So Gabaz has seen uh, a couple of his partners go, and it's not a bad thing actually when you've got someone who played so brilliantly with his hundred, his sixth hundred in the first one day. He's just going to check himself a little bit to realise his responsibility. He'll be seriously determined, obviously, to get the next four runs. He's a wonderful player. Yeah, absolutely. Talking about the wicket keepers, easy. They lose their integrity, don't they? Most of times when there is a legitimate appeal, the umpires kind of give it a second thought. You know what? <laughs> Let me think about it. Well, absolutely, Gorbas, you said it so right. He can change his game. He took 71 deliveries to score his 50 in the first ODI. So he certainly knows how to spend his time out in the middle. Oh, that's beautifully fielded. That is really sharp. Yeah, fielding has been phenomenal. They've taken catches today. 
Andrew Belberni this time at the cover region throwing his full-fledged dive that's brilliant fielding that's Patel already just got back then he uh, perhaps slipped a little bit I think stumbled a fraction and just got that bat behind the line if there had been connection he would have been okay but that's great stuff from the captain well captain of the white ball of uh, the red ball game I should say Bar says, let me just forget about trying to hit boundaries. I'm going to get one. Get down the other end for a bit. It's been a good over from Hume so far. Actually, that's important that if you dot, if you if you face dot balls, they're already with three dot balls. So it's really important that you change the strike. And you do not let the pressure build up in your mind. And more often, you give away your wicket. So that's really good running between the wicket from Rahmanullah Gurbaz. Yeah, he survived a chance, but he's been running brilliantly. So three runs only from this over. Now change of line from Hume. He bowled uh, very nicely. Started well in particular. His first four overs are really tight in the first one day. Been a little bit on the expensive side today, going at six and a half the over. Hume. Aspatilla's not uh, happy with something behind the bowler's arm, I think. Yeah, he gave away three boundaries in one of his overs, gave away 13 runs. I believe that was the most expensive of the Irish bowlers' overs in this inning. Into their 15th over, 77 for two. Kind of even Stevens of Afghanistan will just feel a little left. In fact, they haven't lost two wickets. He's still not happy. Oh, he wants to move that hole. That equipment, by the way, uh, picks up uh, a lot of our comms around the place. Some of the interviews that happen, so it's just uh, been moved a little bit. Oh, that for a dot ball. <laughs> 15 overs gone, 77 for two it is. And time for a break.
Some sights and sounds from Afghanistan, and they're doing uh, okay at the moment. 77 for two, it is. 15 overs up at the moment. Gabaz is still there. 47 is on. 46 balls. Osmatol has just arrived. Amazai to come. Nabi as well. And then there's uh, some all rounders. Faruqi can uh, give the ball a bit of a nudge. Guzenfar, we're not too sure about his batting at this stage. I was quite impressed with his control, the 16 year old in the first one day up. And there's the work from uh, the island bowlers. Adair has picked up one for 23. He's done a far better job this time than he did in the first one day, which was his second most expensive outing for Ireland. So he's uh, done a fine job. McCarthy's been terrific, drafted in today to uh, add to the batting strength also. It's probably the main reason that he was selected, one for 13 or four. And Van Wilkom, they picked up three for 55, a couple of overs. It looks like they're trying to get after him a little bit so that he doesn't have any great impact today. Adair again. Advancing. Gabaz. He's picking out the fielders at the moment. He's just to make sure that he doesn't get too frustrated right now. Gabaz. Yeah, absolutely. This is the second power play. Four fielders outside the circle. He's got spots that he can target. It's good to see intent from Rahmanullah Gurbas. In the last seven deliveries, he's only scored one run. Yeah, he can play catch up pretty quickly, so it's not a, a major problem for him. Clever bowling from Adair. The wicket is picked up. Ramat Shah, who's uh, such a valuable player for Afghanistan. He got him twice in the test match, and this was uh, the reason he looked at his pocket. He suggested he's got him his pocket now because he's picked him up three times out of a possible four. He wouldn't be far wrong, actually. He's got to make sure he continues bowling nicely after, uh, as I said, getting smacked around in that first one day, though. But so far, he's bounced back beautifully. Adair's up, rifle's not. Yeah, what's the other word they use when you have the fielder in your pocket, bunny? Yeah, that's a bit more blatant, that one. Skipper will be happy that they've uh, come back and picked up these two wickets now, Paul Sterling. You can see his uh, mind's working overtime at the moment, and so is that chewing gum. Dicey bowled, it was well directed, that short ball. It's a good pace behind it as well, but nicely played by Hashmatullah. That... I think uh, the way he set up Rahmat Shah, just bringing the fielder right onto his, under his nose and then forcing Rahmat Shah to play down the wrong line. a fine delivery a bit too straight that time he's not going to get penalized much track is slow today 
That's one thing we've uh, worked out uh, easily after the first uh, couple of overs. That's what uh, Tino told us the pitch report as well. He said it looked drier, a lot drier than we saw during the uh, the first one day. -er. I must say, that being the case, I was quite surprised that Ireland won the toss and decided to bowl first because it's going to keep lower and lower as the game goes on. The only thing that Paul Sterling can be thinking about is a little bit of dew with the ball hopefully skidding on a little bit. It was quite damp towards the end of the first one day. Because of the dew, 16 gone, 80 for two. Buzz on 49. Run a ball at the moment. Seven fours and a six, and that 49 has been becalmed over the last little while, which is exactly what Ireland want. They want him to do something out of character, take him out of his comfort zone. They've got a, a long on in position with Hume bowling. Be thinking about the single, I'd imagine. One little mini milestone. His call was for two. He said it too well. Brings up 50. It's the 11th time he's got a 50 for Afghanistan. He has converted, uh, converted six of those into hundreds, in the previous 10, that is. Bad news for Ireland is on both occasions he's gone on against Ireland and he's scored hundreds after getting 50. He's playing on his debut against Ireland and he scored 100. This time around, he's already hit 100 in the first ODI. That is the shot. Fielder couldn't stop that. And Rahmanullah Gurba striking at exactly 100 got his 50. He kept low. There has been uneven bounds on this record, so you'll tell anything around to 70-ish to 60-ish would still be a big task for Ireland to chase. And as you rightly say it, unless there is a lot of dew that could come into play, but seeing the wind, it looks a little unlikely at this stage. Gilbaz actually said uh, in the interview after his innings when he got 121 in the first one day, their original target was 260. That's our uh, thinking, originally. And that's the sort of conversations that happen. When you get out there, the uh, the opening batsman or the number three or number four, as they go through the innings and go through the overs, they'll uh, send messages back towards the coach, Jonathan Trott, towards the dugout, giving indications of where they think team should be. He'd be expecting 260, I'm sure. Sterling. He'd be expecting more than that, I'd imagine, right now. 6-0 from here is 281. Still, that's going to be a bit of going because that run rate is dropping. Yeah, absolutely, Ireland has come back really strong for a very strong start that Afghanistan has had. 61 runs inside the power play, no wicket down. All of a sudden, at 62, Ibrahim Zadran fell. And after that, Rama Chah has been looking for runs, fell at 73. And since then, you see, it's been 33 deliveries since the last boundary was scored. So, yes, Ireland have pulled things nicely. <laughs> May just hold. That's the brilliant innings. Rahmanullah Gurba is so far the only star. Seven fours in one six. He's played brilliantly. He's come down the track. He's not scared of taking on the bowlers. He's played square off the wicket nicely away from the fielders. This one was beautiful coming down the track and a maximum. Juan Workham who's created chances. He's not scared of taking on as well. 54 Rahmanullah Gurba strike a hundred. It's been nice work from Gubaz at the moment. 81 for two.
Just looking at that card at the moment. The way that Gubaz in particular, we just saw uh, some of the shots he played against uh, Van Wilkham. He bowled beautifully, I thought, in the first one day with those three wickets. And going at a shade over 50 off 10 overs. I mean, that's outstanding work for a left arm orthodox spinner. There's no doubt that they uh, just upset the plans. Yeah, it's a little bit of a question for me. Why not continue with Van Warkham? Yes, McCarthy has got you the wicket, but Van, Vukum, Van Warkham created the opportunity in 33 and 43 when Rahmanullah Gurbaz was. Both times the opportunities were created. He got him out in the first ODI as well. Yeah, so uh, two overs for 16 has upset Sterling's plans. McBrien into the attack now. Ball's flatter, doesn't give the ball as much air as Van Workham does. Because you have Hashmatullah Shahidi on the other hand, so bringing in an off spinner is not a bad option. Long on is uh, fairly straight, which again is an indication there's uh, not going to be much turn for McBrien. Well, lucky for Hashmatullah Shahidi, uh, Rahmanullah Gurbas didn't hit him very hard. He went and hit him on his boots, I guess, and deflected off to the fielder. So it'll be interesting to see how Mac Bryan bowls against Tashmatullah Shahidi. He didn't have really good touch against the off-spinners recently. He scored a brilliant 50 against Ireland in the first ODI. He was uh, kind of version 2.0 that we saw. It'll be interesting to see how he tackles this off-spin threat. So he got one wicket in his last five ODIs, McBrien. He should, the idea will be to give it a bit more air to the left-hander. There's a slip in place. Oh, that's nicely bold. Nice pace, he's annoyed by that. McBrien quite clearly wanted to uh, bowl to Hashmatul, and he's going to get his wish with that overthrow. That's brilliant running between the wicket, put the pressure on the fielder, created that opportunity for the second run, and how good does it do to the over? All of a sudden, you got three runs from this over, so you'd feel a little relieved. All right, we got some run. Nicely bowled, lovely pace through the air. Flatter to Gabaz, giving him nothing because he likes to get it on the track, as he did to Van Wurkham and to Hasmatullah. He can give the ball a bit more flight. One more delivery to ball, four runs off his first over. Mike Bryan, he'd be happy bowling at Hashmatullah Shahidi, won't he? Yeah. Got him! Hit us straight back to him. That is lazy from Gabaz. He is going to be most annoyed with that. He was so disappointed he dropped the bat as soon as he played the shot. Good catch, good work from McBrien. Well, he's actually happier bowling at Rahmanullah Gurbaz, gets him out. Rahmanullah Gurbaz, after scoring 51, gives away his wicket. Kind of lazy shot from him, he knows it. And a brilliant catch from McBrien. To see the back of a well-set Rahmanullah Gurbaz. Afghanistan in a bit of a trouble. Rahmanullah Gurbaz departs after making 51, Afghanistan 85 for 3.
Sam O'Brien's now got two wickets in his last uh, five one days. And what a big one it was. Omazai now in at number five. Gavaz will be furious with himself because he went through a stage where he was uh, being kept quiet and he would have known only too well because he's such a fine player, Gavaz. He had to fight through that and then kick on. Those numbers are good. Average of 51. That's outstanding work. 23 is of age. Strike rate of close to 100. 550 is 100. Best of 149, not out. Plenty of opportunity, too, for Amazai to now perform in this game on a surface which is flat. Some bowling which is pretty tight. But he's got uh, lots of overs left in this innings. What a bowling change that was. Bring in Mac Bryan and looking at Hashmatullah Shahidi because how often do you hear the fact that you bowl at the left hander and you'll be more happy? But no, he's more happier because he's got the wicket of Rahmanullah Gurbas. That's a big blow for Afghanistan. He looked set, and as you earlier said, every time he scored 50, he's converted it into 100 against Ireland on two occasions. We just saw in the first ODI, his brilliant 121, 100 on his debut against Ireland. This time around, scores a 50, but does not get to convert it into 100 against Ireland. A good change from the captain, Paul Sterling. Now, interesting field set for Asmatullah Omarzai. Towards the onside, thinking that he might just nick one into his hands. Nice confident drive to start. Mazai would have been uh, watching this intently. Gavaz, look away right now because uh, you're not going to want to see this. You could say it was towards the bottom of the bat, but I'm not interested in that. It was just a poor shot. Simple as that. And a huge wicket for Ireland. Cracked away, brings the sweeper into play. Interesting it is that the captain has decided to field on the onside for Asmatullah Omarzai, and the bowler's been bowling or feeling the off stump line to Asmatullah Omarzai. If that has got to have to do with the setup, like bowl you two, three on the offside and then give you one on the onside, so good thing is Asmatullah Omarzai goes off strike, scores his first run. It's always important you get your first run. I think Ireland will be absolutely delighted with what they've uh, done here. They seem to be going pretty well initially. Abraham Sadran and Gabaz, although Abraham was uh, perhaps not in the flowing form he would have liked to have been, but he was dismissed the score in 62. 11 runs later, they picked up uh, Ramat Shah. And then 12 runs after that, they got Gabaz. So they've done brilliantly. Three wickets for the addition of 33. Correction, 23. That's hit hard. Very good shot for four. Nicely played. Then Hashmatullah Shahidi version 2.0 coming into play. After 45 deliveries, boundary coming in for Afghanistan. A much-needed welcome boundary coming down the track. And meeting it halfway in the middle. Thank you very much. And smashes this for four runs. Hume's been giving away some boundaries once again. Another four. Nineteen gone, ninety one for three. Okay. Ireland will feel they have come back into the game with three wickets now. All the three top back into the dugout. Afghanistan need to build a strong partnership from here at the moment 91 for three after 19 overs Five overs ago Afghanistan were going at about 5.8 runs to the over Because of the uh, loss of these wickets are now going at 4.8. That's how well 
Ireland have done to check their scoring rate. So not only has that happened, but they've picked up important wickets as well. Three big important wickets. Particularly the last one. Happen to pick up uh, a Mazai. That'll be uh, a massive turnaround. Come, 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 guys. Very good. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. The thing about Umar Zai is he scores run a ball. You always see runs he scored is striking about 100, 110, 95. And these two have put together some good partnership. Against India, they put together 121. Against Sri Lanka, they put together 111. Against Netherlands, put together 52. Another partnership of 30 against England. So they can work. They probably need a good stand here. That certainly died on the track. Turned a little bit and kept very low. So it's important that they have the chemistry set up between them. Omar Zai has done wonders since he's been promoted to the position of number five. Batted brilliantly for Afghanistan. He's been the fine for Afghanistan. Just held its line and just uh, sliding leg side. Smatula thinks the same. Clearly missing that leg stump. No DRS, by the way. It's nicely bowled. Now, this is a good over, only one run's conceded, one run, four dots, two of them to the captain. Can the pressure do and get another breakthrough for Ireland? Last ball. Played that very late indeed. End of a very fine over that, just one from it, 92 for three. Afghanistan looking at building up the platform from here. The Ireland bowlers, Mark Adair, taking the first breakthrough. Sorry, the second of Rahmat Shah, rather. McCarthy was the one who got the first breakthrough, and Brian got the wicket of Rahman Ragurbas. And welcome into the attack now. He put uh, Gabaz down when he had uh, 43. Catch that I think if he looked at that again, he might uh, fancy his chances. But that wasn't uh, the only opportunity of Court and Bold. McBrien grabbed it with two hands gleefully. You need split screen and you show them that's how you hold on to the catches, don't you? Agreed. So Spin Twins in operation now. Spin will play a role today. Spin's played a role here in the last five one days. The economy rate's been a shade over five. 5.12 from Spinners. In the last five ODIs played at this venue. I'll testify to that. Fawn Workham at the economy of 5.3 got three wickets. He got Azmatullah Omarzai out in that first ODI against Afghanistan. What a day he had in the first ODI. He's already bowled brilliantly in his first two overs, gave away runs, but created opportunities. Yeah, that was the thing. They got after him, but they can't afford to do that now. Three down inside 20 overs. They've got to treat him with a little bit of respect. Today in Afghanistan's lineup, we've got three left hand batters Ashmatullah Shahidi, Ikram Ali Khail, and uh, the debutant, Nangyal Kharote. It's going to be called a wide, I think, unless there was uh, some connection with the pad. Yeah, but that's good glove work, he's been brilliant. 
Lorcan Tucker not only with the bat but also brilliant behind the wickets with the gloves. But yeah, three left-handers. Do you think it's like to negate that? Yeah, I'm going to have a look at this actually to make sure it's uh, got something behind the line. Better to be safe, I guess, than sorry. It looked like it was okay. Well, apart from both feet behind the crease, it's pretty close. <laughs> Absolutely, he's been all behind the line. Didn't dra drag him out of his crease, kind of going on to the back foot and guiding it, looking at the front foot. That's fine. I tell you, both the players have been inside the lines. So let's have a closer look to make sure everything's uh, fine. Foot is firmly planted. I guess it's better to be safe rather than sorry, but that was uh, fairly obvious. So, yeah, I get the opportunity to talk about the three left handers in the side. Gulbadi not playing today. In his place, the debutant, Nangyal Harote. All day, boys. Here we go. Do you think he'll tackle the threat of Juan Workham? Look at that uh, delivery, the stumping. Did it hit the pad at all? It didn't. It should have been a wide. He got away with that. Sneaky Irishman. Come over, lad. Come over, fella. 94 for three. Only four for three, Afghanistan. After such a good start, Ireland have put the brakes on. Interesting phase of the game, how both sides go about this process. The middle overs. Afghanistan will look to get a little bit more urgency for Ireland. Looking to keep taking wickets. Something they've struggled to do a little bit on flat surfaces with the makeup of the attack, but so far so good today for Paul Sterling's men. It gives me great pleasure, wonderful pleasure, to bring in not just a former Zimbabwean opening batter, but an ODI wicketkeeper. Tino. For one game, Niall, for one game. And uh, quite glad there weren't many more after that, actually. Swift moving behind the stumps, my friend. We might just, let's just talk about it. How did that come about? Keeping wicket against Bangladesh as an ODI. It, it actually goes back to my school days. I, uh, about 16 years old, Kevin Barber, former Zimbabwe international umpire, said, Tina, I think you'd be quite good as a keeper. So I started keeping for the school. I started keeping at provincial level at under 19. I carried on doing it for a little bit of... Uh, my list A matches and then got picked for a Zimbabwe A tour where I kept wicket a little bit and then it was actually my debut tour Brendan Taylor didn't go so well he was the main wicket keeper and he got dropped for the last couple of ODIs so you've got a chance chance of the bowlers and should be gone gone excellent really superb composure 
in the inner ring from Harry Tector to first of all gather cleanly and then have the realisation which end to go and then make it easy for Andrew McBrien to whip off the bales. Well, the look from the captain says it all. Where are you going, Ormazay? There was no opportunity for a single there whatsoever. Great work in the field by Ireland. And Harry Tector, one of the better fielders in the side, bounce throw, nowhere near. This run out as a result of the pressure that they've been building over the last six to eight overs. Well collected by McBrien. Disturbs the furniture. He's gone for four, or am I? Afghanistan, 96 for four. Well, Afghanistan have lost four wickets for 34 runs. Mohammad Nabi, the new man. Well, that was a really, really poor mix-up. Mohammad Nabi, highly experienced cricketer, resides just 10 minutes down the road from this very stadium. So those conditions, and they are excellent numbers. Genuine all-rounder, bat and ball. Oh, that's an ugly shot. That is a, almost a shot of desperation. Nowhere near the pitch and a ungainly hack leg side. Good over for Ireland. They got a big wicket. 22 done, 98 for four. Well, once again, there was a good start between Gurbaz and Ibrahim. They added 62, but since then, Ireland have fought back brilliantly. Third and final ODI, Afghanistan one up in the series, Ireland fighting tooth and nail, trying to level this series before we head into the razzmatazz of T20 cricket. Nicely poised here in the Sharjah. Ireland are playing some wonderful cricket. Won the toss this afternoon, Paul Sterling. Yeah, to many people, it's surprises. Decided to have a bowl again, but... That decision, Tina Moway, you would say right now, justified. Indeed. I was pleasantly surprised when he decided to bowl first, but just taking a look at that last run-out again. Nowhere near the frame. Asmat. They like bowling first, don't they, Niall? Never really hesitant to bowl first. And Ireland, since the beginning of 2022, have won the toss in ODI 17 times. They've batted first once. And bowled first 16 of those 17 times. And in eight matches since he's taken over, another mix-up. Not one they need to worry about in the end. In the eight matches being in charge in ODI cricket, Paul Sterling has bowled every single time he's won the toss. Brings up the 100, that single, 100 for four. So there's definitely no hesitancy in bowling first. And I wonder if you know why, Niall. Paul Sterling really enjoys chasing as an opening bat he likes to know exactly what he needs to hunt down in the second innings even this afternoon when he was walking off the field to get his greens on i mentioned to him did you consider having a bat first he said not at all let me have a chase let me get this fielding out of the way and then let me have a bash this afternoon nicely stroked through the covers oh that is slow out in the outfield hauled in 
in the deep. Two to finish, 23 done, 103 for four. Yeah, just chatting to Paul soon. Was there any thought process, Paul Sterling, you have a have a bat first? Absolutely not. He marched off to get his kit onto field. Six of the last ten day-night games here, Sharjah won batting second, so not much in it in terms of a statistical percentage point of view. So horses for courses you'd feel in recent times in day-night games in Sharjah. Beautiful place to play cricket, Sharjah. Very pleasant conditions, I must say, for players today. It's nice and warm, a cool breeze, and this is a production brought to you by Fireberg, Afghanistan Cricket Board. Superb work by all the staff behind and in front of the cameras, bringing you these live scenes at this historic venue. I reckon we've got a really keenly, keen encounter on our hands here, Tino Ireland going about things the right way at the moment. Yeah, they've done a really good job of pulling themselves back in here. But just going back to that conversation, well, uh, Paul Sterling marching off and not having any inclination whatsoever to bat first. Is that sentiment then shared amongst the change room? Would you think? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question, Tino. You know, to be brutally honest, one I, I don't have the answer for. I'm not part of the inner sanctuary of the Ireland dressing room. I very much keep myself to myself when it comes to matters on the field. But I can only feel that Paul Sterling feels that the, Harry, the likes of Harry Tector, Lorca Tucker, they've got a deep batting line at Mark Adair. Andrew McBride's a useful batter. Barry McCarthy strengthens that batting lineup. So he feels chasing and having the knowledge of what's required to be chased down is their strongest method. Going back all through my playing days, we aren't always like chasing. We're never very good at assessing conditions and assessing what a good target might be. I'm going back a while now, 10, 12 years, under the leadership of Porterfield, and the likes of Trent Johnson. Bowl first, with similar bowling attack to this, finger spin and medium pace, restrict, contain, and then back the batters in the afternoon, or the evening in this case. So more perennial, that is, for Ireland cricket, cultural, the fact that you prefer chasing. It's an interesting one, isn't it? We'll carry on in the next over about that. The squeeze continues from the Ireland bowlers, 104 for four. Approaching the mid-innings of this Afghanistan knock. Go slow at the moment. This innings going nowhere. Ireland all over the men in blue. Very nice. Just talking about your chase slash setting dilemma. In the first ODI, only, only two of Ireland's batters got double figures. So it doesn't lend you to be massively confident in the chase. When you look at the final score, they're chasing down 310, then uh, he's got a case. Paul Sterling, always interesting how these things go in different change rooms. Some countries say it's the hierarchy in the side, the captain and the coach who go out to the middle and have a look at the pitch and decide what they feel is best for the team. In other change rooms, I understand, it's left up to the top brass in the side. In other change rooms, the players let the captain know what they feel is best collectively. I think Paul Sterling will have his, his counsel. He'll seek guidance from Andrew Balberni, the former captain. He'll seek guidance from Harry Tector, their premier batter, and probably Heinrich Milan and Gary Wilson, I would think, using the analysis, the analysis on, often, on offer from Scott Irvine, who's very fine at his job and running the numbers. But I think for Paul Sterling, 
He'll really trust Balberni and Gary Wilson and Heinrich Milan. They'll just come to a decision. It may even be the day before. They had a practice last night. So they may well have had a look at the surface last night and said, you know what, we're bowling first tomorrow, tomorrow no matter. Because you know the weather you're going to get. You're not going to turn up here and it's going to be cloudy and the ball's not going to hoop around corners. The pitch is going to play as expected. And that just gives you, as a batting and bowling unit, the time to prepare mentally. First time, a bit of a yes, no. We've already had one sorry today. 25 done, 108 for four. Afghanistan innings going nowhere right now. Power play was superb, 61 without loss. 15 over since the power play, just 47 for four. So Afghanistan really have to up their game here. Not easy against spin. Theo Van Workham has been okay. McBride's been excellent, as he often is. Slip and play, Sterling wants this fifth wicket. Hashmatullah, 20 off 39, involved in a Pretty poor mix-up. I saw the end of Umar Zai. Can't really afford to lose another one now, Tino. No, they can't. And I think they know that. You made mention to how well the two spinners have bowled, but I think the seamers as well. Adair, six overs, one for 26. McCarthy, who was first change, four overs, one for 13. Got the opening wicket. And Hume. No wickets for him, but a six over's gone for 32. Remember after his first three, he had gone for 22. So his next three overs went for just 10 runs. Yeah, what's this chap? I reckon Paul Sterling's just maybe saying to Andrew McBride, I might just come out and have another catcher in front somewhere. I think they realise that Hashmatullah Shahidi's under a bit of pressure here because of that run out. I think it's playing on his mind. The last over against McBride, we saw Hashmatullah play a horribly ungainly stroke. Long on goes back and deep backwards square inside the circle. The sweep is on if he wants to get down. Going nowhere right now, Afghanistan's captain. He's putting unbelievable pressure on himself. This is to have a look. Hashmatullah, he actually sets off initially. There's never a single, but I reckon it's not all to do with Omar Zai right there. Well, it's a good hard sweep. Looking for that gap behind. But just on that replay, team, I reckon Hashmatullah initially, after impact, was looking for one. And that's the sweep shot. Hugo's ball. situation all too often in Afghanistan colors and we'll know exactly what's expected of him. It's called for two but that won't be possible. Dockrell does the cleaning up, 26 overs gone, Afghanistan 110 for four. Smattering of fans in the house. Afghanistan well supported wherever they go in the world. Tuesday afternoon is Sharjah. Nice footwork from Mohammed Nabi. 
how aggressive can Ireland be here? Hashmatullah is under, under the cosh. Let's call him under the cosh here, Hashmatullah. 21 from 43. How aggressive can Paul Sterling and the bowlers be? Now, with the ball turning into him, I'm happy to see that the long off has come into a mid-off position. He's got the protection on the leg side, which he needs, especially with the left arm coming around the wicket. Sweeper on the offside, two people in front of square on the on. Good bit of fielding. He's disappointed. His reaction says he wanted more for that stroke. But I'm happy to see him have to come down and have to look to go through that offside along the ground or try and go over. It's at a critical stage where if he makes a mistake, then Afghanistan are deeper in trouble. Not natural for Muhammad Nabi. He's not a sweeper of the ball. Never has been a natural sweeper. Doesn't play with the kind of finesse that you often need for playing this. So have a look at this. Yeah, it's just not natural. Not any way through that process of that replay did he look like he was sweeping with any kind of conviction. Said before the game, it's not the kind of pitch where you can use pace and be overly delicate. Nabi's got power and plenty of it. I've seen Mohammed Nabi play lots and lots of innings for Afghanistan versus Ireland. Have a look at this. Never picks the bat up with anger. Just trying to get it fine. There's a man there for that fine sweep. Wants to, should get to here. Anything in around that 30 yard circle, you normally get in and out of your ground safely. That's good from Hashvatullah. That's more like Nabi using his feet to the spinners, looking to get to the pitch and play in front of square. 48 balls since the last boundary in the innings. It shows you how well the Irish bowlers have bowled to their fields and how well those fields have been set as well. Good finish, just four from that. Van over, 114 for four. No sign of Curtis Camphor yet, who would be Ireland's sixth bowler so far. Those five in your screen doing a job very, very well indeed for Paul Sterling. Something's just brewing. I just feel something's brewing here. McBride against Hashmatullah. 49 balls since the last boundary. Now, similarly, as the ball was turning into Hashmat in the previous over, they had Midoff up in the circle. I'd like to see Midon in the circle. You mentioned a shot that he played soon after the run out of Azmatura Omazai. He was looking to go over the top. It wasn't there and he carried on. I think they should be saying to him, go for it, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like that, Tino. And that's something Paul Sterling is not afraid to do as captain. He's a very aggressive captain, Paul Sterling. You go back to a previous year, Andrew Balberni, who captained Ireland very well, but was more of a defensively minded captain. Paul Sterling, like his batting, is always looking to take wickets, to make something happen. He doesn't let the game drift at all. I think his Ireland side actually really feed off that positive energy that he brings to the side. Look again. Again, Paul Sterling just manipulating. A little catcher, very unorthodox position. He's almost got his long on, long on going a bit wider, and then a catcher very straight. Just getting in the batter, Mohammed Nabi's eye line. And that's what can happen. Okay, you throw the gauntlet down, and Mohammed Nabi says, You know what? I've seen this game before. Not my first rodeo. Boundary. But that's okay, Niall. Because if he hadn't manipulated the field the way he did, he wouldn't have played that shot. And that shot coming out of your crease, ball turning a bit into you, 
gives an opportunity for the ball through the gate or a stumping. So that's okay. If he plays a couple of those shots authoritatively, then we can go back to the conventional field. Yeah, mid-off just goes back. Yeah, Brian concedes the first boundary off his bowling today, so a rarity. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't mind it at all. It's a good shot, good execution from Hamid Nabi. And from the batter's point of view, nothing wrong with that. Pure commitment to the stroke, got his body and body position spot on. And then just lofted it over the man. Not a problem at all. Good cricket. No, he misses that. It's 115 for five. And batters who really don't have much to contribute and didn't do so the game before. Well, the word from behind the stumps from Lorca Tucker. Good tipsy. That means good Andrew McBride. 28 done. 120 for four. Terrific tourniquet that's been applied to this Afghanistan innings by the island bowlers. 62 without loss, and now it's 120 for four. Barry McCarthy. He removed Ibrahim Zadran, that little bit of extra pace earlier on. He's back into the attack now, operating from the pavilion end. Vendra's alongside me. This really has been a terrific fight back by Ireland, but uh, from an Afghanistan perspective, lots of inexperience to come. So much depending now on this pairing. Partnership. That's what he's searching for at the moment, taking 39 deliveries for 25. This innings is delicately poised. lot depends on how this pair goes about the business from here on. They strike rotation, occasional boundaries they will need. Of course, the fact there's a lot of inexperience to come lends itself to the conservatism that we're seeing from this pair, particularly Hashmatullah. Two batsmen with the capability of spending time constructing partnership together. He's taken 49 deliveries for his 23. That can be understandable given the condition and the situation of the game as well. At the moment, the focus is on strike rotation. They got players with not much of experience to play to come but they come with great reputation as well in domestic cricket about stroking the ball well in death overs Karot in particular on his debut Plenty of options still for Afghanistan. Ikram Alikil, the specialist batsman, uh, wicketkeeper batsman. Uh, Gazan Farkan also strike the ball big. Karote is a very good batsman, someone who can utilize the last three to four overs to get those big boundaries away from the team.
Naby will come back for two. Talked about big boundaries there. Naby, of course, hit a couple of sixes on Thursday in the first One Day International of this series. And that takes him up to 105 sixes in One Day International cricket. He's the only Afghan batter to have hit 100 or more sixes in this form of the game. His DNA is to be aggressive. His strike rate just a shade over 80 at the moment. And Brian, he's been enjoying good form as well. 29 overs gone, 124 for four. Rebuilding phase this for Afghanistan. Former captain Mohammed Nabi and current captain Hashmatullah Shahidi. Nabi, 39 years young now. First Champions Trophy for Afghanistan next year in Pakistan. Just wonder whether he thinks whether he can go on for that tournament. Well, he's got the hunger and he's been enjoying good form with the bat as well. His bowling is going to be crucial as well. Plus, the experience of you know, growing as a cricketer in refugee camps in Pakistan, that emotional connection that you want to experience about playing against Pakistan, that's true in Pakistan and that's true in the Champions Trophy. Beautifully bowled. Just skidded on that one, didn't turn. Nabi was playing for the turn, just played inside it. Couldn't have got much closer to the outside edge this one without finding it. Not far away from the outside edge. Driven down the ground for another single. Also, he bets in in positions where he can make a lot of difference from his experience. Sometimes when they lose too many wickets early on, he can play differently as well. Himself a spinner also. Beautiful. A little, little bit of deflection, maybe ball just going away from the, shaping away from the right-hand batsman on that division. Take another single. So he's a crucial player for Afghanistan. The experience that he has, also the kind of conditions that he's going to experience in Pakistan, quite helpful for the spin bowlers in one-day cricket. And uh, looking at his fitness level, his hunger, his willingness to play with his son, who is developing into a nice player, plays under-19 cricket. So should be around, I think. Picks up a single there. Astonishing, Nabi's missed just 20 matches in the whole history of Afghanistan cricket at the top level. Test One Day International and 2020 Internationals. Single to end the over, Afghanistan 129 for four. Twenty overs to go then in the Afghanistan innings. This is the second day of the holy month of Ramadan here in the UAE. Oh. 
Kovac into the gap. He should come back for a second here and do so. Theo van Voorkom out of deep backward square leg. What effect is the need to fast during the hours of daylight going to have on these players? It certainly affects the energy levels, also the sleeping patterns as well. And it's very crucial, particularly for the batsmen, to prepare the routine about, about how they want to think about the game. Different sleeping hours, also food. And given the conditions here, very humid, around 70% the humidity. It certainly challenges, but they are experienced enough to tackle with that situation. Also, the kind of clarity that they get by praying, keeping their mind clear. I remember Afghanistan playing a T20 series at uh, Dehradun against uh, Bangladesh and winning that series 3-0. But that was T20 event. This is certainly going to test them, but I think this is second day. It is affecting them a bit. But there is still sense of commitment into the action as it's vi visible on the screen as well. Yes, the first week or so of Ramadan is always uh, a really difficult time as the body adjusts to the different sleeping patterns, as you mentioned there, Devendra, because... Uh, Players will be getting up very early in the morning to eat breakfast before the sun rises and to uh, start their regime of praying. Also hydrating the bodies as well. Tries to work through the on-site, there will be a single. Hydration. I remember listening to an interview from Sachin Tendulkar about he prepares for a test match getting up at one o'clock in the night to drink water, to hydrate his body, to get through the day. And in these conditions, especially for the fast bowlers, it's good that Afghanistan are, are bowling second. The temperature will go down. It will make it slightly easier. At the moment, 24 degrees centigrade. Humidity has come down to 58%. So no ball, Barry McCarthy ran the wicket, so that will mean a free hit. Free hit signaled by the umpire, it's at a delicate time, just so slipping off, nothing behind that line. At a time in Afghanistan, they're thinking about freeing their arm, just generating some positive momentum into the betting department to get the license to take on the next delivery coming up from McCarthy. He's into his sixth over, one for 22. Yes, the field can change because the batter has changed. Hashmatullah taking a single from that previous delivery, so with Nabi on strike, players running hither and thither. We're now going to have a deep backward point. Third man is up in the circle. There's going to be a deep mid-wicket by the looks of things. Fine leg is up in the ring. A long on two. Maybe he's figuring out the area to strike. He can hit it over the top of extra cover as well. Or down the ground. Over mid-off, over extra cover, through the offside. He's looking onside at the moment. They got deep mid-wicket in position. Well, that's thrashed for four. It was full in length. And goodness me, Nabi hits the ball hard, doesn't he? That fielder out at deep point only had to move, oh, goodness, about five or ten metres to his right, and he had absolutely no chance at all. That's Patan power from Mohamed Nabi. Was looking on the onside, inspecting the field on the onside before receiving that ball but mentally was prepared to smash it through the covers to pick up a boundary. He's on 23. It's a nice comeback from McCarthy. <laughs> Even he's surprised at the way that ball carried through to wicketkeeper Lorcan and Tucker. End of the over, 139 for four.
partnership now 43 from 57 balls good recovery this from Afghanistan they went from 62 without loss to 96 for four slip in position for McBride given the fact that they will be due as the experience in the first game as well they need to score anything around eight runs per over to get to 285 Beautifully flighted by McBride, beating Hashmatullah in the flight. Interesting point you make about the view, actually, as we have a look at that last delivery again. There's been quite a strong breeze blowing, so it may well be that there isn't quite as much dew as there was for the first game on Thursday when it was quite pronounced. So that will bring Afghan spinners into action as well. They were not that effective in the first game, Gazanfar. And Nabi also not quite contributing as they expect from him too. Ideally, Afghanistan would like to have greater effects from the from the spin bowlers, more impact on the game. Oh, that's really well fielded by McBride. If he'd managed a direct hit there, I think Nabi was struggling. It would have been calamity for Afghanistan. Like Brian is a brilliant fieldsman. Had all three stunts to aim at. Direct hit would have caught Nabi short of crease. Very famous run out like that many many years ago at Lords in an MCC bicentenary match Roger Harper running out Graham Gooch but Brian not quite able to repeat the dose there we'll take another single here or in the test match scenario Alistair Campbell betting on 99 so Alistair Cook from England betting on 99 against Pakistan. Bowlers making it difficult. Overthrow over the top. Over the head of the, the wicketkeeper for four and the century for Alistair Cook. As a batter, I think I'd know which one I'd prefer. Where's Sterling now? He's just come up and had a chat with uh, Brian, and now he's gone into a very short mid-on position. Well, six down the ground, 32 overs gone, 141 for four.
Afghanistan put into bat today in this third one day international against Ireland here at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium. They made a good start, 62 for the first wicket between Ramanullah Gurbas and Ibrahim Zadran. But since then, Ireland have reined them back successfully, and it needs this partnership now between Nabi and Hashmatullah to flourish if Afghanistan are going to get a big score. Just the five bowlers used so far. Van Borkom continuing from the pavilion end. This part was 46 of 64. They need to prolong it to 100. Take it into the last seven, eight overs and then expect the later of the batsman. Karuchi in particular to come and do the damage to the opposition bowling lineup. They were brilliant in the previous game, in the last 15 overs or so. They would like to work on the same strategy to utilize the last 15 overs by keeping wickets in hand. Down the track, we'll take it on. So Nabi's betting on 25 of 31. Hashmat on 33. Half century in the previous game. Two batsmen instrumental in providing a real kick to the Afghanistan innings. Choosing wisely. And Volkom back into the attack from this pavilion end in place of Barry McCarthy, whose last two overs cost 13. The stroke selection is going to be crucial. We'll take another single, just putting the ball into the gap and taking runs, singles and twos. The longer the innings goes on, the more you feel that Paul Sterling is wedded to just these five bowlers that he's used, Adair, Hume, McCarthy, Van Vorkom and McBride. Does have other bowling options, of course. It's Curtis Camphor. We saw George Dockrell throwing a bit of a poison chalice at the back end of uh, the innings last Thursday. Harry Tector can bowl some off spin as well. He's the captain himself, who's a reluctant bowler, so there are plenty of opportunities for him to mix things up. That's the 50 partnership. Yeah, after losing a couple of wickets in quick succession, after getting off to a good start, they needed a partnership, the stability in the middle overs. The experience of Mohamed Nabi and Ashmatullah Shahidi doing the repair work looking to put the team in a position from, from where they can think about playing more attacking shots. Here's the details of that partnership for the fifth wicket between Mohamed Nabi and Hashmatullah Shahidi. Change of bowling at the Sharjah club end and Harry Tector is going to get an opportunity. 
Ball is off spin. He's got three wickets. He actually took his maiden one day international wicket against Afghanistan in Abu Dhabi in January 2021 when he dismissed Najibullah Zadran. Yeah, I don't mind this change at all. I think he's a very underrated bowler, Harry Tector. Also, the timing of the change. At a time that the batsman thinking about just continuing with the same momentum. Flashes the ball through the offside for another single. He's just trying to play with the mind of the batsman at the moment, thinking that part time spiller in operation. Should they be thinking about attacking him, taking full use of the batting provisions against the bowler who hasn't been bowling regularly? Deep square leg and a long on in position on the onside. There's a long off and a deep cover who's gone quite square. Sterling persisting with himself at slip in keeping with what Niall O'Brien was saying a little bit earlier. That he's quite an aggressive attacking captain. He's looking for wickets, even from the part-timer. Well, he's been ex extremely good for Ireland. And it comes to Marsh thing is the resources, introduction of the spin bowlers, so part-time spin at a time. When the game is, this innings is delicately poised, also Rotation of the bowlers as well, field change, putting fieldsmen in interesting positions as well at short cover and short mid wicket as well. He'll take another single score of wicket on the offside. The captaincy has been good attacking from the word go. Slips come out now. Short third man, Sterling, trying to protect the over. It's good fielding. Former captain, tumbling away, Balburnie, the end of the over. And it's 149 for four. So, just under 16 overs to go. What do you think a pass score is here for Afghanistan, uh, Devendra? That's the 150 up with that single. Well, it's difficult to predict where they're going to go from this situation with four wickets down, but uh, ideally they would like to get 280. Because in the chase in the first game on this very surface, though it's playing slightly differently today, there is more turn for the spin bowlers. On this particular surface, the partnership in the second innings between uh, Tector and Tucker that gave it a headache to the Afghan bowlers. Also, lack of experience in the spin bowling department as well. Also, the possibility of due. So, combining all, all these factors, they should be thinking about getting at least 280. And they cannot rule out the threat from Andrew Bilberney and Paul Sterling at the top of the order. Curtis Kemper coming in playing positively. If they don't get wickets with the new ball, with the possibility of due formation, 280 is something that they should be looking at. Not easy for the bowler to dive and stop the ball on this square. The ball skids off bare areas. And also, the square here in Sharjah, I can tell you it's like a strip of concrete. You're landing on it. You'll know all about it. Driven down the ground for another single. 
at the moment, not trying to take take any undue risk against the spin bowlers to batsmen, trying to curb their instinct. Nabi in particular likes the spinners in operation to play big shots. Such is the situation with a lot of a lot of uh, lack of experience, not experience in the batting department. Dot to finish the over, he's bowling well. None for 41 in eight overs. Afghanistan 154 for four. This third ODI beautifully poised. As Harry Tector is driven and driven with real style as always by Mohammed Nabi. Gonna be a boundary. As I wish a good afternoon, maybe an early good evening to Ahmed Fadai. Yeah, absolutely. That was a good shot. Good evening, Andrew. Looking for boundaries. This was uh, well struck. Skipper trying to continue with Tector in the second over. Now he cashes it. The balance of this Irish side in this format continues to fascinate me. It's been a big switch in recent times to, to go with five out and out bowlers. So it's meant that long-standing tradition for Irish cricket of those bits and pieces all-rounders, including the likes of somebody like Gareth Delaney, who could be an option, he's on as a subfielder at the moment, aren't necessarily finding their spot. So we're seeing less and less of Curtis Camfer, of George Dockerell, of, of Harry Tector, who's the ball in his hand now. And when they did go to that extra option, I think it was as late as the 38th or 39th over, and George Dockerell was hammered, wasn't he? for 16 off the over. Tector's already done better than that, has bought himself a second over. But he's fresh from a stint in the Bangladesh Premier League where he bowled in, I think it was five of six appearances. And bowled with real success, economy rate of 7.5. I think he's an asset for Ireland with the ball. Absolutely, but it's different circumstances, isn't it? It was Rahmanullah Gurbaz batting out there, already set himself, strong platform, good foundation. This time around, Afghanistan, more than looking at building this innings. They don't want to throw it away. Partnership is sticking nicely, 64 runs. You just feel that maybe another few overs, say four overs, and then start from over number 40 and up the end. You're spot on, big difference, 150 run opening partnership the other day. Today, Ireland are much more in the contest. It's really interestingly poised, a 36 bold, 1-6-1 for four. I heard Devender talking about 280 there. From, a, from an Afghan perspective, would they be happy with that from here? Well, I think 280 would look good score. Fourteen overs remain, and Paul Sterling, who rather amusingly had a, a bit of a problem in the first ODI, where he thought Mark Adair was going to be able to bowl his final over, the final over of the first innings, maybe the penultimate one. He'd already bowled ten, he couldn't finish out. So he's piecing it together now. He's picked up two bonus overs from Harry Tector without too much damage done, both just going for five. He may get a third. But for now, it's Graham Hume. Is he the one that Mohamed Nabi will target? He's been expensive thus far today. To get up to that 280, they need eight or nine and over. But they got 95 from the last 10 in the first ODI. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, spot on. I was looking at that number, the projected score. And there is the Firebird team bringing you 
that live feed. You can get it on YouTube and all around the world. Great to have you with us. Great to be back in action, isn't it, after that rather surreal rain we had a few days ago. No doubt we'll get a result today. If, if it was 280, Afghanistan would be favourites to go 2 0, but it's a long way to 280 from here. It's a little optimistic to say the least to look at 280 because Afghanistan will still have to do some build up. Say another few hours, I earlier indicated you want for both the batters out in the middle to stay for another few hours. Don't get away, don't get carried away, and uh, six in an over will still do good, and then you can launch in the last 10 overs. As you said, 90 and more than 90 runs been scored in last 10 overs. So, yeah. Take it towards the last 10 overs and then maybe 280 will still look on the cards. Afghanistan will be very happy if they get 280 and anything above. So far, three dots. That's going to help Ireland, not Afghanistan. That's more like what we're used to here in the United Arab Emirates. Beautiful sunshine and, and sunsets. A little warmer today than the first ODI. It will get hotter and hotter as we advance in towards the summer. Luckily, those T20s are all under the floodlights in the evening. You almost get a sense Mohammed Nabi is coming to the boil. He, he's not quite there yet. He, he hasn't got to maybe even third or fourth gear, but if he's still there in the 50th over, I think 280 is on the cards. The good thing is, his strike rate is still about around 80. Hashmatullah Shaidi, on the other hand, with the strike rate of 54, is more doing that anchor innings role. You want to see when Afghanistan will launch themselves because around 280 would be the score that they should be eyeing at to be able to give themselves a chance at this third and final ODI. I remember the second one was abandoned without a ball being bowled because of the rain you earlier indicated, Andrew. And Hashmatullah Shahidi himself was very emphatic at the toss. We want a 2-0 series win. We want that dominance asserted over Ireland they've had in recent times. Not historically all the way over the last decade plus that they've been these great rivals, but just with the test match excluded, obviously, of late, Afghanistan holding the upper hand. Certainly they're getting to more world events than Ireland have been. Yeah, that's the streak, 5-0 so far. Afghanistan will want to extend that. On the other hand, Ireland should be looking to close things down nicely. Few signs though that Ireland feel as though they're right in this contest right now. Only two singles from that over. One six three for four. Gorgeous amber and orange skies and the birds enjoying every second of it, as are we. This third ODI is right in the balance. George Dockrell not seen with the ball today. Another one who's been a little under the weather. I think a few of the players in, in both of the squads, there's masks floating around the camps. It doesn't matter how fit or healthy Andy McBride is, he'll put his body on the line for his country. He's been excellent today, the off-spinner. Was he not warming up? It's just about time, 38th over. I would be very surprised. I've been wrong before, but don't think we'll see George Dockrell today. Oh, Brian has had it on a sixpence, as he so often does. Ashmatullah Shahidi's done well to survive him at points. He'll have to another 11 deliveries. You don't want to ruin this partnership. It's been nice and steady. 67 runs. Yeah, they've taken their time. 
It'll be a waste if Afghanistan waste this partnership and give away the wicket. Patience, temperament, that's the key. That is a very effective sweep shot. Excellently played by Hashmatullah Shahidi. Well, since becoming the captain, he's just grown and grown in confidence. It's a lovely shot, very well executed. Yeah, the second he's uh, hit so far. This came after 13 deliveries. That two of uh, Andy McBride, who's been bowling brilliantly, got into the line, swept it nicely. Ireland would love to break this partnership, of course, but they'd love to break it before the, the third and final power play. They've had issues at the death. They've had real challenges over the course of really the last three or four years. Haven't necessarily had the pace or the, the mystery spin to be able to work with at the death, and as a consequence, at times the Irish bowlers have gone the distance. This partnership's growing nicely. Certainly 280 seems to be back on the cards. Afghanistan might be thinking of 300. There you go. You just want these two out in the middle, and particularly Muhammad Navi, the president. You want them till the end of the innings, don't you? He stays there till the 50th over, and 300, yes, is on the cards. Flatter, little arm ball to finish the 38. Seven have come from it, 170 for four. Nabi and Ashmatullah both in the middle, 74 runs to the partnership, both closing down on their 50s. You'll think if they get their 50s and they can launch themselves. Last wicket that it fell was at 96. That was some brilliant fielding, Asmatullah Omarzai falling cheaply since then it's been a build-up here's the options for Paul Sterling I don't think we'll see any more from Tector or maybe Curtis Camfrey we haven't seen yet so the remaining 12 overs will have to come from the five top bowlers listed McBride will round out you'd expect Van Werkham at some point too and then it's a case of Adair, Human, McCarthy. To do the heavy lifting. Hume was expensive at first, but he's come back well here in this uh, second pair of play. Is he still the one that Afghanistan will be lining up? I think as you earlier indicated, stay out there in the middle, 40 overs, 10 overs left, then you have six wickets there. You can take anyone on. Because there's not been so much happening. Yes, the wicket doesn't look so easy, but I mean, you can back yourself. Bowlers get a little bit tired. You see, it's a little bit warmer than the other day. So yeah, you can actually look at Hume, but on your day, you can go off to anyone, don't you? Yeah, I think those challenges that, that Ireland have in the third power play thanks to Raj next to me for giving me these numbers the economy in the last 10 overs over the last two years it's the joint worst in world cricket in ODI cricket 8.24 the economy right in the last 10 so joint worst I want to know who's the other <laughs> well, that's with the Dutch the Netherlands who have a formidable bowling lineup, but again, they, they might not necessarily have that express pace that they need to to challenge things at the death. Who's going to hit the Yorkers in the same way that we saw Fazal Haq Farooqi do so excellently? The Irish fans have been reinforced. There's Kevin Woods on the right alongside Barry Tucker, Lorcan's father in the middle, and on the top left, that's Brian Sterling, Paul Sterling's father, the former international rugby referee. But if that's the average, if that's 8.24 on average, on a bad day, you can see how the last 10 easily can go for 100 runs. You add 100 to what Afghanistan get to in 10 balls time from now, you're at that 280 plus. I really love the way you do the maths. You, seriously, I do. 
the Afghanistan Cricket Board board member Al-Adad. On the back we see Mr. Sulaiman Khail, the chief selector of Afghanistan. Sitting next to the legendary Nazar, who's iconic in terms of his role with this particular stadium. What a great venue it is. We're, we're looking forward to what will be bigger crowds for the T20s, no doubt, played well after Iftar is broken, right into the holy month now, into Ramadan. How are you holding up, my friend? Day day two? Yeah, I'm fine. Looks, let's look at Hashmat. Did he get a blow? while trying to run the second one. Sometimes you get that from the fielders. Why are you running the second one? Yeah, Navi was asking for the second one. There you go, Ooh, that was close. Yeah, I'm holding up nicely, thank you. Yeah, great to be back here during Ramadan. I think it was self-preservation, wasn't it? We saw a dive save Gerbaz earlier in the innings in terms of a run out. This time just trying to make sure he didn't get hit by the ball. He did that expertly. More tight stuff from Hume. Ireland will be pleased enough with that. 39 have been bowled. 176 for four. Those T20s, just a matter of weeks out from the T20 World Cup. Huge amount to look forward to in those. Absolutely. Afghanistan fancy themselves because that's one format Afghanistan like. So far, AD Runs partnership out in the middle or two seasoned companions, Muhammad Nabi the one, a lot will be on his shoulders. Well, blazing away on a jet plane just as the sun sets. I wonder where that one's going, back to Europe maybe. All the fire that you see, thinking that he's rushing for iftar. Got a break. The iftar, it's getting late. It's so interesting, that time of the evening, you're rushing home. Food is waiting for you. Well, by my calculations, two minutes to wait before the fast can be broken. You look at, looking ahead to those, those T20s, you, you certainly think of the two white ball formats for Afghanistan as being their, their primary formats, not just because they've, they've played a lot more of them, but just because of the success that they have within them. Good start to their tests. Status, three wins already, no doubt about that. They've done it quicker than so many others of the test nations, but you think that their quality lays in the two white ball formats. Of those two formats, do you think the T20s are the stronger of the two? Or are you thinking ahead to the Caribbean and the USA next year and thinking Afghanistan in with a, a Super 8 chance, a semi-final chance? It's not going to be easy. They are up against New Zealand and West Indies. West Indies, mind you, is a host and they are playing in West Indies. It's not going to be easy. But yeah. For the league cricket, that they have been playing all around the world. have got names for themselves, led by... The legendary Rashid Khan, known across the world. They don't want to fancy their chances, but take nothing away from the one-day format. Afghanistan qualifying for the Champions Trophy for the first time. That's a big achievement. I yeah, fully agree with that. And it might be something of an anomaly, really, that we saw the ODI rankings table earlier. They're ninth in the world in ODI cricket, Afghanistan, the format you're watching and enjoying here. But they're 10th in the world in the T20Is. Suppose you're almost kind of thinking of the hybrid of all of those players around the franchise leagues and their general success in that shortest format as to why Afghanistan are so, so good in T20I cricket. I think they'll be a real dark horse to watch in June. McBride for the final ball of his allocation. And he can't find a wicket end with a single for Shahidi to round out McBrien's 10 overs, one for 36 for him, very well bowled, 180 for four. And that T20 World Cup group, they'll, I think, be entirely in the Caribbean, correct? Yeah, Afghanistan is playing in Caribbean. Papua New Guinea, Uganda, New Zealand, West Indies, Afghanistan, four groups of five teams, and only two of them will go through Super 8.
largest partnership of the innings has come from two of Afghanistan's very best. The skipper Hashmatullah Shahidi and the former captain Mohammed Nabi have combined ever so effectively. And a pretty good clip too. Just have a slight break and play if you... Beverage is being run on. And the Irish team are just taking Paul Sterling is taking the opportunity just to rally the troops. And there we go, the fast is broken. Isn't about the good time. 40 hours ball, 10 hours left. You want that energy injected into you. Players out there. I told you the celebration of eating the food. Waited it for all day. Don't know what's on the menu there, but but a traditional lift tar, you, you quite often get some dates. Is that is that right? Yeah, you preferably break the iftar with the date. If you can't get dates, the other choice is water. A prophet, peace be upon him, used to break it with milk and dates. But then in this day and age, you get that chutpati food, like the spicy food kind of appetizer, that's the starter. You go perform your prayers, you come back, and then you have your main course. I did it a couple of times last year in Bangladesh myself, just joining in with, with some of the crew in particular. I have to say, some parts of the day are tough, and, and obviously you go through wanting some energy and some food, but when it gets to this part, to Iftar, you certainly get all that reward. Isn't that interesting? I'm so surprised. Wow, nice. Yeah, it was, I think, about four or five o'clock starting to lag. I didn't do much. That day. It wasn't a game day. I, I thought if we did it during a game where I was commentating on, I might have spoken absolute gibberish, more so than usual. And so, yeah, certainly was happy to join that. And lovely to see the Irish players being very respectful of that and allowing the two men at the crease even just to get something into them. That's a signal for the end of the second power play and into the third one now so the final 10 overs five fielders will be allowed outside the 30 yard circle and with van Werkham having two left he'll probably bowl overs 41 and 43. you just wonder will shahidi even though there'll be three in the deep on the leg side is he going to maybe try and target the ball turning into him yeah we earlier talked about left-handers in the afghanistan side today three left-handers the debutant Nangyal Harote, he's good, he can hit the ball, he's been in place. Gulbadin Naib not playing today, he will have been ideal for this situation, he's a very clean hitter of the ball, Gulbadin Naib, he bowled nicely in the first ODI. I thought he was really effective with the ball actually. And with the surface being a little lower, as Balberni does well in the field again. He's had a great couple of days in the outfield. Definitely moving better than he has at periods of his career. But with those slow surfaces, Gulbadim would have been effective. And this feels a little like the calm before the storm here. I think Nabi and Shahidi, once they get to their landmarks, one shy of what would be a, a 21st ODI 50. May then look to cash in and go big. And these dots are really helping Ireland up. I reckon he's digesting the food. He just had need some time. Four dots. That's a little dangerous, isn't it? Now this is kept very low. Van Werkham can't believe it. Is this just going on with the angle and missing the off stump? That's the initial thought from the umpire, potentially. It has pitched in line. Oh, very, very close. I certainly heard some noise. That's the way you do it. 50 for the skipper. The 21st ODI 50. Fifth versus Ireland. 11th as a captain and his slowest you'll tell 
Jonathan Trott, you will tell the poker face, does he look happy or not? Afghanistan earning 81 for four. Fifty, that landmark for Afghanistan's captain. A bit of a throwback to the old Hashmatullah Shahidi. He used to be very cautious, very slow, particularly early in his innings. And remarkably, it's actually his slowest ever. ODI half century, coming off 88 deliveries and the, the five dots that preceded the single that have got him to the landmark. Ireland will be pretty happy with that. Just a, a punch down the ground, but certainly those talks of 280 that we were having four or five overs ago they'll really have to go some in the last nine now to get there An immediate shift of gear you, i think you'll see it from hamid nappy whether he's at the 50 landmark or not he's gonna go after everything but now the task for adair hume mccarthy maybe one more over from when workham will be to keep Afghanistan under wraps. It's very important that we see how much of an effect the previous over can put on Mohammed Nabi because five darts could certainly put pressure on Mohammed Nabi. It's Ashmatullah Shahidi who's been on the striking end, so he'd have to improve things in this over. And there's been a real dichotomy, isn't there, between the two innings we've seen from Shahidi, his fastest ever in ODI cricket. He's made lots of them, 21 in just 78 innings. But he's never made 100. Career best 97 not out, and a career strike rate of 68. And we saw that he has advanced gears, but that's come in more recent times. Does score slowly, whilst the aggressive players like Naby around him can find those boundaries. You get to hear the word paradox. The fastest and the slowest for him, and also he's the only double centurion for Afghanistan in the Test cricket, and he's yet to score a hundred in the ODIs. I think Ireland identified the last ten overs in the first ODI as somewhere where they really despite that brilliant Lorcan Tucker and Harry Tector partnership, they really, that was the losing of the game. The 95 off the last 10, and in fact, the, I think it was over 200 off the last 25. So when you put all that together, that was the difference between the sides. And when Paul Sterling at the toss said, I want to bowl again, he said, really, we get that part right, we feel we can chase down a total here. If that Jew comes into play, Hold their nerves for the next 40 minutes. We've got a really good contest, and Ireland might be thinking of squaring the series. I tell you, there was a lot of dew yesterday, so that is for sure. So that decision will come very handy for the Irish skipper to have wanted to bowl first. They've been fancying their chances, chasing things down. And then you see 285 has not been chased in Sharjah, so that will just give some hope to Afghanistan. But you want to accelerate it, you want to get to that landmark. If you, you wonder the, the scale of preparation these international sides go through, just talking to Heinrich Milan, the Irish head coach, Take this, one, boy. this afternoon before the toss, and I said, was it marginal deciding to have a bat first? And he said, it was marginal, but we felt that the Jew had a big impact. And also, they were watching the UAE versus Scotland T20I last night in the Dubai Sports st Stadium, only 40 minutes up the road. He said the Jew had a huge effect there. UAE coasted home thanks to Mohammed Wazim by eight wickets. They'll be hoping it's the same tonight. Yeah, they chased it down nicely. There's a beautiful shot to end the over with from Hashmatullah Shahidi who needs to accelerate things. Four to end the over, ten off the over, Afghanistan, 191 for four.
Eight overs left now. A couple of things to look at here. This partnership 95. And I would suggest they're going to end up around about the 250 mark. You would think that's where they're going to be. They'll have to go some to get to that. It might be the 240 if they lose wickets. And welcome. Starts his last over. His uh, figures are pretty tidy as well. None for 42 at the moment. McBrien, outstanding. One for 36 off his 10. Brilliant work with his little offies with not too much flight. And not too much turn, it's got to be said. And welcome gives it more flight. Come on. Very good, Theo. Made that into a bit of a Yorker in the end. Now, what are your thoughts? Afghanistan have been watchful. This is the last ball of Mark Adair's previous over. Too much width. I mentioned the first game. If you give Hashmatullah Shahidi any kind of width and the opportunity to pull a cut, he loves it. Just nice to be working. Seems an age since we did that first ODI. Nice Haven't we'll seen you in here. days. Where have you been? I'm uh, doing lots of research. Avoiding me. <laughs> as best I possibly can. <laughs> at every opportunity. And for those that know you, they'll agree with me as well. Yeah, spot on. Stay right. away. On a day off, stay away from me. Too much energy to be sitting around doing nothing. Gotcha. Sit that pretty well. Straight to the field, though. It's a very good catch. That's a very good grab indeed. That's a wicket they didn't need to lose because Afghanistan were going nicely with that stand of 97. But it's all over now with Tector taking a fine catch. Well, that's a really good grab right below the commentary box. It was hit hard and flat. And the amount of times I've seen Mohammed Nabi bat for a considerable period of time and then find the man in the deep. That's a really good catch, folks. Good technique. Harry Tector's having a good day. Good in the field. Navi gone for 48. Afghanistan, 193 for five. Come on, boy, come on. Five down. Keepers in now. Yeah. And at number seven, Hasmatullah's done a uh, fine job. 59 at the moment. Now we will be very disappointed that he didn't get 50. Gone for 48. Thank you. Um, Akhalil, 23 years of age, just a youngster. Pretty tidy with the gloves. But they still need some runs. They don't need wickets going down at this stage. Yeah, I've watched a lot of cricket, Muhammad Nabi, down the years, and I've seen him do this time and time again. Finds the man of the deep, trying to go big. New man in, Ikram Ali Kiel is a good cricketer, Hazy. You mentioned his keeping. He's a very tidy keeper behind the stumps. He's a very, very effective southpaw batter. This is Nabi. Toe of the bat. I think it's a good catch, you know. Never easy just judging the depth of the ball and the pace of the ball when it's hit flat. Tector's done well. What is he, six foot four, Tector? Tall lad. Single off the last ball, so only four off that over. 100 and a wicket, 195 for five. Not a great deal to come in the uh, batting stakes. Faruqi next. 
Here's a look at the uh, the work done by the skipper. Yeah, another half century. He was always playing against Ireland. Good power down the ground early as in. He's just watch how he uses his hands to manipulate against the slower bowlers. Very well organised, compact. No real massive flourish at any stage, but just gets the job done. Right side, that's swept, that's swept fine. That's a really good shot. It's a bad ball, you're right. I could just hear one of the Ireland players. I presume it was the wicketkeeper or maybe Harry Tector himself. Bad ball, it was. Yeah, I think it was the ball of the way he wheeled away. It was a, a very poor start, and that's the last thing you want to do. Give away a boundary right at the start of an, of an over in this situation. They've got the chance to bring this into a, a big over now. He wanted to advance. They're going to have to settle for one only. One thing that Afghanistan have done is they've uh, picked out the field quite regularly throughout this entire innings today. Some strong shots for none. And they need to go at eight and over to get to 250. Six and over gets them 240. And that single was brought up the 200. Direct hit might have been interesting, but I think the desperate dive might have made him get home anyway, even if there was a direct hit. Yeah, it was Curtis Kampfer in the field. He threw the ball. It was an excellent bit of work. Let's have a look. This is the boundary. Bad ball. Bad ball, Harry. You're right. <laughs> good analysis there. <laughs> he made good commentator at some stage. Very to the point. And accurate. I tell you, he's had a fresh haircut since that first ODI. That is for sure. Half a haircut, I think. Got his money's worth. So even though there's been three ones of the last three balls, the four has made it uh, seven and still two balls to go in the over. They happen to get a boundary off one of these last two balls. That'll kick him in. To the last six overs. That's all it takes. Just one good over at this stage to fire things up. What a delivery that is. That's a good ball. What a beauty this is. It just lures in Ikram Alikil and just turns and bites. Tucker's aware of the potential opportunity. That's a beauty. That will give Afghanistan spinners a, a wee bit of confidence as well. Just going to have a quick look at that just to make sure it's OK. But the one thing to, uh, to note, and you won't see it, of course, with the side on view when we look at the stumping, but the one thing to note here is that uh, that has turned more than, I think, any other delivery. So therefore, this track is turning more than we had at the start of the innings. Those size 13s are OK. Did turn considerably. It's going to be safe. I'm going to go through this and have a couple of looks at this. Maybe even as the innings go, the over goes on into next over. It's going to be not out. Not out. I'm thinking MS Doney, Hazy. If you think, if you could picture where MS Doney keeps his gloves when keeping to spin bowling. Cleans him up, full straight. The previous ball turned past the outside edge. That just goes straight on. Well, he's made that into a Yorker. Flight from Tector. That previous ball, you're right, was an absolute beauty. That is a, a, a important wicket because Nabi's just gone. Ikram is also on his way now, so a couple of wickets in no time. We played around it as well. So it found a little bit of a, a gap there between the bat and the pad. So he hasn't lasted very long. He goes for a couple only, 202 for six.
They're getting themselves in a bit of a spot here, Afghanistan. Ashmatullah is still there on 66, and he's clearly going to be key going the rest of this. Kuroti's in the lineup today. Left arm orthodox. Can bat. He's going to need to bat. There's a look at his last A career. 219 runs at a very tidy average. Best of 41 not out. Well, Harry Tector has a bit of a golden arm. At the end of this is just poor technique from Ikram Malikil. It's full, it's straight. He plays all around it. Almost as you mentioned, Hazy Yorks himself makes a fairly routine ball that should have been pushed down the ground into an unplayable one. McCarthy now. Looking for two. Hasmatola wants to get back on strike. That's going to be uh, key. Good running, good support running. Well, Lorcan Tucker is the Ireland wicket keeper. Just had a good look at that stumping opportunity. I'm going to call it an opportunity before the ball that Harry Tector actually dismissed Ikram Malakil. We'll have a good look at that. Really intrigued to see the technique by the Ireland keeper on that said delivery. It's a good line, good bowling from McCarthy. Can't do too much of that. Now, Lorca took a look at the gloves off first of all. That's a good foot, foot and a half behind the stumps. And then he's got to collect the ball and then bring it back onto the stumps. I'm thinking MS Doney, Hazy, whose gloves would be literally right behind, right at the stumps, almost meeting the ball and bringing energy back towards the stumps. MS Doney are the top keepers in the world. That would have been out stumped. And people at home might be thinking I'm being overly harsh here. I'm looking at the technique. Where's the glove starting? Look at that now. Straight away, you've got over a foot to make up. Now you've got a foot and a half to make up. There's no need for a wicket keeper to have his gloves that far behind the stumps. And there's no need in this day and age when it's been proven if you give like that with your hands and then go back to the stumps, you're giving the batter the chance to get back in his ground. I'm no doubt keepers around the world at the top of their game, that would have been a comfortable stumping. Part of the Ireland coaching staff, Gary Wilson's the one of the assistant coaches, a former wicketkeeper, gained many, many caps for Ireland, both as a batter and as a wicketkeeper. Yeah, on the left of your screen, sitting down, scratching his chin. He may have his volume on. I'm sure Gary, with his gloves on, would have had the bails off in an absolute flash. Yeah, you're listening. I know you're listening. <laughs> Just something to work on. It's a small thing. It's... Well, I was going to say it's a 1%. It's bigger than a 1%. Well, I'm not sure it's something you should be working on at this level. I think it's something you should come naturally if you're doing the keeping job. And I know he's there for his batting as well. But if you're doing a keeping job, you should be able to uh, certainly have your setup far better than it was. I think Lorca Tucker, anybody who has watched Irish cricket over the last two to three years has been really impressed. Really impressed with his batting hazy. He's, a, he's had an excellent couple of years as a batter. But certainly wicket-keeping, you wouldn't say, comes naturally to him. It's something he has to work on. And wicket-keeping is such a difficult art. And you're trying to balance wicket-keeping and batting and score runs. You have to put in so many man hours. It's not something you can just do on a whim and expect to have continued success. So I think it's certainly something Lorca Tucker and Gary Wilson can continue to work on. It's an inside edge. Tucker was magnificent with the bat. In the last game with that 85, played brilliantly. End of the over, 206 for six.
Straight away, look at the economy rates of these bowlers from Ireland today. Adair going at fives. He got pasted the other day in the first one day. The second most expensive of, uh, performance for Ireland. Hume was very good, going at five. McCarthy, 4.3. Van Workham, 10 overs, 146. That's outstanding. McBrien, brilliant. And Tector doing a tidy job, going at uh, five and a half, but he's not expected to uh, bowl that many overs. Slightly surprising, Mark Adair back into it. Not, nothing to do against Mark Adair's skill set, but I just wouldn't, I would have fancied another one of Tector. Mark Adair can close out from the Sharjah club end. I just would have fancied another ball, another over of Harry Tector. Two left-handers, debutante, give him no pace to work with. Hashford Tuller now, 69 for 102. He is the key, the linchpin. Karotai is the new man, the debutante. Heard a lot of good things about Karotai, but Hashford Tuller now you feel needs to do the heavy lifting. Mid-off, inside the ring, so wouldn't be surprised if Adair goes into the surface and takes pace off. Well, they know he can hit boundaries because he played so well the other day. Oh, that's pretty close. Around the wick and he's got him. He's been really good, Adair. He's bounced back superbly. I think he might have uh, just had a couple of quiet moments to himself over the last couple of days and realised he didn't do well in that first one. And he's expected the ball really nicely. And today, I think he's been superb. Yeah, that's excellent for Mark Adair. Looks very adjacent. Hashmatullah looking to work leg side. I think Hashmatullah is expecting what, what I expected. Back of a length, slower ball into the surface, and in the end, Adair goes full. He has his man. Ireland are all over the men in blue. Captain gone for 69. 207 for seven. Doesn't fart. In at nine. I thought he did a pretty good job as a 16 year old with the ball and his variations in his uh, debut game. Got a little bit of tap at times, but uh, I thought he was uh, his control was pretty impressive. Three different deliveries a, a standard off, an arm ball, and then the uh, Karen ball. Slow ball, hard into the surface, first up, and we come back for a couple. Well, very good from Paul Sterling, first of all, to resist the temptation to continue with Tector, and that's just absolutely plum market there, knows it. Yeah, you mentioned the first game, Hazy, he was certainly not at his best, a long way from his best, troop. it's all not for 79, which just shows the, the quality, the character, and the skill that Mark Adair possesses. It's going to be leg by, sliding leg side. I think Paul Sterling's done a good job again as captain, Hazy. It would have been very tempting, as, as I felt, maybe to continue with Tector. But he said, no, I'm going to go to my gun bowler, go to my specialist, even though the previous game he got hit. He's bounced back well today. I think Sterling's captaincy and how he manages his personnel has been very impressive in his short tenure as captain. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I would like to know what uh, Ireland were looking at when Namazai got dismissed in the 22nd over. They were 96 for four. What the message would have been in the change room, what the Brains Trust would have said the total or target should have been at that stage. Because at that stage, they were losing wickets and in a bit of trouble. And then I'd like to know again what it was like when it was 193 for four just before Nabi got out in the 43rd over because they were flying at that stage. and. We were talking maybe 250. If someone played really well, it might have been 260. That was perhaps a bridge too far. But now they've got themselves in a, in a real spot here. 
Someone's going to have to play really well to get, I would suggest, 240. On a track which is flat, on a track which is going to keep lower, and on a track which is going to turn under lights as well. 211 for seven. A couple of guys getting 50. Gabaz, well, he would have been uh, really disappointed by that. Court and Bob McBrien, 51. Mr. Matilda's just got out for 69. And Nabi for 48. Gabaz, 51 or 53. And that was at a stage when he was just starting to slow down as well. He just needed to fight through that a little bit, but he just bunted it straight back to the bowler. Oh, who's those blokes? Nice for some, isn't it? Tino and Lenny. McCarthy. And he's got a boundary off the first ball, and it wasn't a bad delivery at all. It's beautifully played by Karoti. First boundary in international cricket, and what a beautiful one it is. That front elbow beautifully high in full control. McCarthy into the attack give us the debutant the youngster a bit of pace to work with oh he manipulates his hand through the ball superbly well it's been good mccarthy i think now's the uh, the, the crunch time he will go for a couple at this stage he's going to look to come back for the second he's a little whippets karoti decides for just one i reckon that's the fastest single i've ever seen run at this stadium incredibly quick out of the blocks want to strike big time have a look at this see if he gives a fun my god oh that's quick that oh, is fast a little bit like yourself and his pompeii down the adelaide oval absolutely exactly like it not a bit like it exactly like it not guys and fun out Short delivery, nicely directed. Well, I was thinking wide. Both for leg side and height. I think it's a decent call, to be fair. I think it's a fair call. Normal standing position. Might have just donked the batter on the helmet. Donkington's on a Tuesday night in Sharjah. McCarthy would have complained. 16-year-old might have. I think it was a slower bouncer, so it wouldn't have been uh, too brutal. Good comeback this, halfway through the over now. Boundary off the first. Doing the right thing there. Goes a fart. If you're uh, not totally ready as a batsman. Big bully McCarthy having a go at the youngster. If you're not totally ready, pull out. You just mentioned you mentioned about where Afghanistan may or Ireland may have seen the game when Umar's eye was out in that 22nd over and Nabi 43rd over. I just thinking back to that first game, Hazy, 310 for five. I think we all know and all agree that that was substantially above par. 310 for five was a very very strong outing from Afghanistan on that first ODI. Nice aggressive short ball. So when when you reflect on that as a as a unit in Ireland at get Omar's eye out for 96 for four, and even if you flip it onto Afghanistan, where do you get to that 272 80? And then when Navi was batting 193 for four, you're thinking, oh, should get up near that 285, 290, which realistically is probably a little bit above par again. So from an Ireland point of view, you're thinking. No, that 250, 260, I think, is well within grasp as a as a chasing side here. So I think when those wickets were falling, as a fielding uni, you always just feel 
at Charger especially, you get one, you can get two in quick succession, and it's proved again today. He's got that away nice and fine from a roundabout leg stump, if not just outside leg stump. Both of them safely home, no dramas there, so two off that, eight from the over, one more to go. Well, I'm going to say it again. How quick is the debutant? Because Gazanfar did not want two here at all. And the youngster said, get out, I want the strike. The whippet. Well, you remember the catch he took in that first one day. It was extraordinary. Had to run miles for that. Look at him go. Look at Gazanfar here. Doesn't want it at all. Not interested. You will, you know. You will run two. Whether you like it or not. He is super quick. Last ball. Yeah. And he's picked up the wickets. Now, he could be uh, quite dangerous, I think, Karoti. So that's an important wicket. McCarthy's got him in the end. Just a look around towards the umpire to make sure he doesn't get in trouble. And maybe the odd little quiet word. And why not? Well, this is a frustrated-looking Barry McCarthy. Gets his man in the end. Full and wide. Karote looking to go to his favourite area down through that deep third reason. Nice catch. Never easy. Here is Charger. You're standing quite close to the quicks. McCarthy, who's been included in the 11th today, has not let Ireland down. Debutant. Karote's got to go for 10. 219 for 8. Forty-seven gone, two hundred and nineteen for eight. Only two wickets left now. Navid Zadran, the other debutant. He's a seam bowler. Big swig and a miss from the youngster. It's quite a tall youngster, though. Well, Barry McCarthy's been really good tonight here in Sharjah. This is a frustrated-looking bowler. I think he was getting a little bit upset at how Karote was manipulating the ball down to deep third showed some promise the youngster he made 10 from eight but certainly showed some invention over number nine now for Adair slow deliveries club that one he said that beautifully and well controlled saves two a little bit of paddle out in the deep a sport that's taking over the world paddle I know the Ireland boys have been playing a lot of it here in the UAE. Clubbed out of the deep. This was... <laughs> Excellent from Camfer and Tector. It's got through him, not too far away from that leg stump. It's going to be very interesting, I think, when uh, Paul Sterling and Barberni bat. And Camfrey gets in at number three because that could well be a situation because they're not going to get a big total here, Afghanistan. The ball's going to be nice and hard. It's before, you see that one just uh, scoot through. It's going to be before the ball gets, or the balls get uh, soft. There are two balls used, of course. And it's going to uh, come on briskly off the bat. If they look to play their shots and they get a really good start, that's going to be the best opportunity, I think, to bat on the surface. But then they've got Faruqi, he's going to be swinging it off uh, around corners. So that's going to be the counter challenge. That's going to be fascinating to watch. Bowled him straight, and Adair's picked up his third. Good work for Mark Adair. Well, this innings is collapsing. In an absolute heap, Mark Adair getting his skills at the back end of the innings spot on. Go for the stumps, go for broke, go back to the dressing room. Gazanfar gone for five, cleaned up by Mark Adair. 221 for nine.
They lost their last four wickets for 28 runs. And that's a very solid forward defensive shot by Faruqi. It's a friendly full toss. Friendly full toss to Fuzzle Hack Faruqi. Say that five times quickly. This is the end of Gazan for good for Mark Adair. I don't mind that at this stage. Hazy attack those stumps, tail enders. What about a friendly full toss? That should have been hit for four to Fazahak Faruqi. Four times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Broad bat again, he's uh, off the mark. We saw that his uh, average is not much. He'll be happy to be at the non striker's end. 2 2 2 for nine. Lost their first wicket with 62 on the board, and then things went a little bit south for a while. 73 for the second, 85 for the third, 96 for the fourth. Then there was a big stand, 193 for the fifth, and they got things well and truly back on track. But uh, gee, losing those four for just under 30 has really put them behind the eight ball now. Faruqi on strike, to McCarthy works that away. I said four for 28, it's actually five for 28. That's what they've uh, done. So it's from 193 for four to 221 for nine. Now it's 223 for nine, and there's uh, 11 legitimate deliveries left in the innings. If they last that long. McCarthy again. Slow delivery. No run there. Yeah, really, really impressive from Ireland. I think that first ODI, Ireland were absolutely smashed all around the ground in the last 10 overs. 95 runs coming in that first ODI in the last 10. The ball was going everywhere. Enable Afghanistan to get an above par total, which got them the win by 35 runs. Polar opposite tonight. Solid drive. Scamper just won. This is a, a well below par batting performance. I would think the 250 is probably par on the surface. Yeah, 100%. You just think of the Afghanistan bowling attack, though. They haven't got the experience of, albeit he's still very young in age, Nur Ahmed, he's not playing. You know, debutante finger spinner in this side and Gazamfer is only playing his second game. That's a massive boost, a massive filler for the Ireland batting lineup and a bit extra pace on offer as well with Navid. So Gulbadin, his wily medium pace is out and a bit extra pace. That might play into Sterling and Balberti's hands. Bottom edge. I think you made a good point, Hazy, about the, the top three for Ireland. They really do have to step up. Balberni, Sterling, Camfer into this slightly new role. They can't rely on Tector and Tucker time and time again. Needs some kind of platform. Sterling's look good. All through every innings in this series, I think Test match he played well in Abu Dhabi. Even in the first ODI in his short stay, he found the middle of his blade a few times. Yeah, they just made, if you just talk about their own performances, Sterling made five, Balberni made four, and Camfer made nine. They were 34 for three. And in trouble, and then there was a big stand. Yeah, 
Sweeper into play, another single. Yeah, you mentioned Fazal Haq Faruqi, that, uh, that man on your screen with that new ball. The, the brilliant thing about Faruqi Hayes is if he doesn't swing the ball, it's not the end of the world because he can come around the wicket with that angle and even with the ball dying a little bit, keeping a little bit low, we saw him dismiss Balberni, clean Balberni up. He's going to attack those stumps, so bowl and LBW you can bring into play, whether bowling over the wicket with swing or around the wicket with angle. Oh, that's not too far away from that off stump. It's only gone for four. 226 for nine. One over remaining now. Runs have slowed down a little bit because of all those uh, satellite dishes on those buildings, which aren't the tallest from overs 43 to 49. Start of the last over. Squeezed away, no run there. Right, question for you. Throughout your career, extensive career, Nets also bowling the middle, how many left arm orthodox seamers percentage wise do you reckon you faced what do you what do you think i I'm, i've got a story to tell you want the exact exact percentage roughly. no just roughly <laughs> roughly is it 10 percent? is it five percent 20. i would say during my time in the uk over over 15 years yeah. in my county career a decent percentage hazy and the reason i say that is the counties i played at we had left arm seamers i think at international level not a great deal unless we went on tour percentage i would say 15 percent okay 10 to 15 is that yeah fair? yeah that's um, okay. it's, it's a guesstimate okay. it's a guesstimate all right so that's the reason my left arm one of the reasons why left arms are so effective it's more like muscle memory if you're facing a left arm quick bowler in this sort of format and t20 as well players are so used to facing most of them to my right-handed batsman well, left hand, I guess. They're so used to facing right arm bowlers that suddenly a left armer, even though yeah, you face 10, 50% throughout your career, it is still different. So muscle memory tells you that it's not what you're normally used to facing. And that's why if they happen to swing the ball, they are so effective. Yeah, I think less now with the advent of net bowlers over the last, I'd say, 10 years. But they're still doing so well. Got a little bit of a deflection, one more. Yeah, statistically in T20 cricket, I know they are statistically better than right arm bowlers. That is a given. And when you go through the the franchise model T20 cricket around the world, what teams are looking for is looking for left arm pace and wrist spin. That's why Fazal Haq Faruqi for Afghanistan has been so good. And Josh Little for Ireland, for example, we'll see him in the T20. He's had a real prosperous 24 months or so being left arm pace oh that's it pretty well on the bounce so when you're watching Faruqi bowl a little bit later just bear that in mind what uh, I've been talking about in the second half of this game he'll open with the, uh, the bowling he'll bowl with a new ball it'll be swinging around but the muscle memory of the fact that uh, batsmen are so used to facing right arm bowlers rather than left armers comes into play when it's swinging yeah, when it's swinging, that's the key. Didn't swing the other night for Fazal Akfruk. He bowled mainly around the wicket. Well, that's going to be a no ball. I'm sure that's going to be a no ball. It's been hit for six. It's the last ball of the innings. I'm sure the umpire is going to have a look at this. This, to me, Hazy, looked like over wayside. Paul Rifle's happy enough. Brilliant shot, the finish to 50. 236 for nine. Oh, that was over waist height. That's got to be a no ball. That has to be a no ball. That's definitely over waist height. Imagine if he's wearing a belt. That's well over waist height. So that's gone for six. So they should have another delivery here. And if he happens to hit that for a boundary also, that'll be 10 off the last two. But it's not going to be the ball. Looks like they're walking off. 
That's most unusual. I can't believe that. Live, I just said no ball straight away. To me, 100 metres away, it was clear as day. Paul Eiffel and his umpiring partner, Ahmad Shah Pakdeen, didn't seem perturbed, and that's a pretty good way to finish your innings. From the debutante and Faruqi, 236 for nine Afghanistan of mustard. Interesting stat that's just uh, been handed to me by Rajneesh. There's only been one instance in the last four years where Afghanistan uh, batted for a full 50 overs and posted a lower total. That was 228, 22 for eight against Netherlands in Doha in 2022. So that puts this 236 on a flat track in perspective. A slow track, it's got to be said, but a flat track as well. So that run rate is 4.72. That's all it was at one stage. They were hovering around six quite comfortably. But 236 is something they're not going to be particularly happy with. Right, let's go downstairs to Andrew Leonard. Yeah, I have Andrew McBrien with me here. Really good spell of bowling, 10 overs, one for 36. You look like you bowled with real control out there today. Yeah, I tried to keep it as simple as possible. Obviously, there was a wee bit in the wicket first. There was a wee bit of hold. Not as much grip as I thought as there would have been. But no, it was like sort of that back and for length and trying to hit three quarters way up stumps. It seemed quite hard to, for them to score, so I sort of stuck to that and just makes my pace up and down as much as possible. From 61 for none after 10 overs, how did you and the other bowlers drag it back for Ireland so well? I think the, the power play is obviously very crucial because you've obviously got the two men out. And I think the way that them two lads went about it, they batted very well. And uh, the first 10, they put our boards under pressure. But I thought the way, the way we fought back in the middle and especially in the end of the back end there, I thought it was really good. Big call to bowl first again, having, having lost that first game, but with some due maybe to set in, do you think that target at 237 is something you can achieve? Yeah, well, going below the two lads bad the other night, they thought, they thought it was quite like good, So especially with due coming on, so obviously it'll be a bit of skid. The tricky part is probably first 10 overs, it'll probably be a bit more swing on their lights than there probably is uh, throughout the day, but no, I think if you're after a good platform, I think we should hopefully get the job done. Andy, thought you bowled beautifully. Best of luck in the second inning. Cheers, Lenny. Thank you. Yeah, did a very fine job. One for 36 off his 10 overs. There's a look at the uh, batting card for Afghanistan. Gabaz, 51. He would have been disappointed. Hasmatullah, 69. That's two double ups from him. 50 odd and 69 now. And Nabi, 48. 236 for nine it was. Yeah, six bowlers use. We just heard from Andrew McBride. I thought he bowled superbly well. One for 36. McCarthy into the side. Picked up two for 42. Again, the market there. He's enjoying his time in the UE. Three for 51 from his 10. Right, let's have a look at the highlights. Bright sunshine when we started. This is uh, pretty bright and breezy right at the top. They put on an opening stand at 62. So at uh, this stage, I think Ireland would have thought, hang on, here we go again. They put on 150 in their other encounter. The first uh, one day, the second, of course, was washed out. But that was uh, the first wicket going down. Ibrahim caught by Kampfer. Old McCarthy for 22, so 62 for one it was. Ramat Shah, that was uh, Adair putting him in his pocket for four, 73 for two. And this is uh, 50 to Gobaz, and he played really nicely, except for that. He'll still be ruining that, just bunted it straight back to the bowler, caught and bombed the Brian for 51. 85 for three when he went. This is a run out. A Mazai was run out for four. 96 for four and in big trouble at this stage. Yeah, Ireland were really on top here. The Muhammad Nabi came in and showed all his experience early on. Soaked up some real pressure. Muhammad Nabi in partnership with his captain, who's having a really good tour, both with red ball and in the white ball format. Brought up another half century for the South Pole. This stage, Afghanistan were really in a great position. Then enter. And Workham and Harry Tector in the deep who combined nicely and Muhammad Nabi gifted his wicket to Ireland. Tector, well, he's got a bit of a golden arm. Wicketkeeper Ikram Ali Keel played all around, a full straight one, and then Ireland seizing the initiative. Mark Adair brought back into the attack, started wrapping things up beautifully. A little feather through. Debutant Karote off Barry McCarthy. Nice catch from Lorca Tucker tumbling away. Low to his left, and Mark Adair, who's had a wonderful tortured the UAE, he's had a wonderful two years, truth be told, this is the final ball, we feel we got away with a high full toss, six over deep, third, 236 for nine, Afghanistan. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they wouldn't want this to be a close one, because that should have been a no ball. Ireland, 237 they need to level the series, they need to go at 4.74 runs per over, because there's going to be zero rain. We'll see you in about 20 minutes time.
Welcome back to Sharjah, where we're getting ready for the island chase as they seek to level this one-day international series against Afghanistan. Some of the sights and sounds of Afghanistan. Afghanistan were put into bat today and Ireland restricted them to 236 for nine. It was a little bit of a curate's egg of an innings, really. They got away to a good start, 62 for the first wicket. Then they slipped to 96 for four. Then there was a recovery through Hashmatullah Shahidi and Mohammed Nabi. And then they lost their way once again at the back end. Ramanella Gurbas produced perhaps the most fluent batting of the day, following on from his century in match one of the series. 51 from 53 balls with seven fours and a six. He was very much the main man in terms of that opening partnership with Ibrahim Zadran, which yielded 62. Ashmatullah Shahidi, he was the other main contributor in the innings and it was an interesting effort from him really because he had to rebuild with Mohammed Nabi after they'd lost four quick wickets. 97 they added from 21 overs. Remember, Ashmatullah Shahidi made 50 from just 33 balls last Thursday. This time it was 69 from 103 balls. The island effort with the ball, six bowlers used in total. Mark Adair, the pick of them. Interestingly enough, 23 overs of spin used there. McBride, Tector and Van Voorkom, three for 99 between them. They certainly applied a vice-like grip on Afghanistan at various stages of that innings. And this is what Ireland require as a result, 237 to level this series after they lost by 35 runs in match one last Thursday. Players are out there now. Former captain Andrew Balburni. He's got a good record against Afghanistan. One of only two Ireland batters to top 3,000 one day international runs. Here's the other one, Paul Sterling. Taken over as captain of the white ball side. Look at that strike rate. And comfortably most hundreds for an Ireland batter in this format of the game. That best of 177, that was against Canada. Faisal Hak Faruqi. What a fine spell from him it was. Four nights ago, four for 51. Had the ball on a string, first of all with a new ball, he bowled beautifully round the wicket. And then later on, he was excellent just uh, bowling Yorkers. Balburni off the mark straight away. Balburni was dismissed by Faisal Haq Faruqi last Thursday. That was round the wicket. 
Faruqi will look to swing the ball early on. Right off, right off it, yeah. And as right soon as he thinks there's no more chance of that, he'll go round the wicket and he'll use the angle. Here is that dismissal. Balburnie, I think, probably by his own admission, would have to say he didn't get his front leg out there. And his front leg was braced as well. It wasn't bent. The weight wasn't going into the shot. He'll certainly be conscious of that this evening, I'm sure. Paul Sterling. There's a slip and a gully in. It's sort of a wide slip, like a, a floating slip, really, for Sterling, first up. Tino Mawoyo alongside me. Good evening, Tino. Good evening, Brian. Good evening to all of those tuning in to this broadcast, wherever you are around the world. Yeah, Faruqi devastating. That first one day international. Yeah, we saw him swing the ball early on to Balburni from over the wicket. Got a couple to just hold their line and go across, as did that previous delivery. And then he came around the wicket. Still got the ball to swing around. Very consistent in the areas that he bowled, and that's why he was so successful. A little bit of movement behind the bowler's arm, just holding us up temporarily. Sterling's off the mark. He'll come back for two. That's good running. That's Matula Omazai from uh, mid wicket running back. It's not normally associated with being all that fleet of foot, Paul Sterling, but that was good. I do like that gullyish position wide to slip with the first slip in because with the lack of pace in the pitch we've seen a few balls just going in the air probably squarer than that but the idea to get the extra catcher in is good he's moving nicely at the crease Paul Sterling first ball nice confident stride behind the line of the ball on that occasion shorter in length Good positive movement back and across and into line. Don't think he started this positively the other evening. Immediately changes his approach around the wicket for Ruki for the final ball of the first over. Bang on target. End of the over. Ireland. Three without loss. Significance there for Afghanistan because, of course, two of the bowlers who are going to have to defend this 236 for nine that they scored batting first are on debut this evening. And Gazanfar playing just his second match, so it's a very inexperienced lineup with the ball for Afghanistan tonight. Asmatullah Omazai is going to open the bowling from the Sharjah club end. And they've come through the ranks and they join a host of many of 
course, to represent Afghanistan at international level in this format. But as we saw with Cousin Fire the other evening, on debut himself, they will certainly be backing their player, which is why they picked him. And he showed a confidence that you might not have expected from a young man who's coming from an under 19 World Cup. Bernie will have his routines when he looked up there he saw Omazai already halfway into bowl if he's not ready he's quite happy to pull away it's well bowled a little bit of movement away from the right hander there Done well in the end. Balburni stuck on the crease, but he got the bat behind the line of the ball. And he played it late. He didn't go looking for it. That ball would have just shaped away with the breeze, assisting it from right to left of Ormrazai. Gosh, that was a lovely seam presentation as well, wasn't it? That previous delivery. Just angle towards first slip. Oh, it's beautiful. And that's why he's got that swing going. So how do Ireland go about this chase? Do they need to make hay while the sun shines, metaphorically, while the ball's hard? Do they need to be aggressive? Or do they just say, well, if we bat 50 overs, we'll win the game? I think batting 50 overs will win the game, yes. At the same time, I think you do need to be positive at the top of the order. Field restrictions in, because we saw in the Afghanistan innings that once you got past that first power play, it was very difficult to get boundaries. You've still got to be positive at the top of the innings. Put pressure back on the bowlers. Three for none. Decent batting depth for Ireland for their chase this evening. It's fair to say that all of those players know which end of the bat to hold. That gully's gone away now to Fazalak Faruqi. He's gone into a catching position. On the onside, in front of the batter. This will tell you that he'll be looking to swing the ball back from around the wicket. There he is. And if Paul Sterling wants to be going through extra cover, he's got to be very careful with that stroke. He's certainly going to be looking to get the ball swinging back. Something that Niall O'Brien picked up on in the first game on Thursday. When Faisal Hakfaruki goes round the wicket like that, he wants to see the batters using much more of a full face of the bat. There's a shout for a catch, and the finger's gone up. Little inside edge. 
the angle again from Faisal Haq Faruqi. It's the second time he's beaten Balburni in this uh, series. On Thursday, he bowled him. This time, he's had him caught behind. Now, he's made it two and two. Just the thick inside bottom edge. It's a good catch because the ball was dropping on the wicket keeper. Well, Bernie struggled in the first against Faruqi. He does the same in the second. Gone for one. Ireland lose their first. Four for one. In at number three for Ireland, Curtis Camphor. Another man who was dismissed in that first one day international by Faisal Haq Faruqi. That best of 120 against Scotland in the Cricket World Cup qualifier in Zimbabwe last year. see the grip there definitely for the ball coming back Ireland really have struggled to come to terms with this line from Faisal Haq Faruqi again I think if you look at that length it's a length that a person who's as tall in stature as Balburni can get comfortably forward to should be playing forward to that ball and it's not as if Fazalak Faruqi is bowling 145 clicks that you might think twice about whether you want to get onto the front dog. The other thing is, I guess, he's not going to hit you on the head on this pitch either, is he? He'll do well to get the ball up um, around shoulder height. Not hitting you on the head unless you're lying down on the pitch, yeah. Take a look at that again. That ball's probably gone past the stumps at stump height. Now surely Balburni can comfortably be getting forward to that and playing a defensive stroke. And the more you do that to a bowler, the more you'll push him away from bowling in that area. And if your foot movement's iffy, if you're not going right back or right forward with confidence and that'll allow him to just keep bowling in that good area and expect something to happen and that's how he got the majority of his wickets in that first ODI Sterling at his best. He really is proficient in that area. He's crunched that half volley through extra cover for four. Island nine for one. Target is 237. That's nice from Curtis Camphor. Hitting that one on the top of the bounce. 
Very nicely timed. Textbook, look at that. Weight into the ball, confidence stride. Momentum because of the position that he's got himself into, weight into the ball. This could be significant this evening with the breeze continuing to blow. Just wonder if that will help us avoid dew tonight. And if we do avoid dew, that'll obviously be a benefit to the Afghanistan spinners and their ability to grip the ball. Yeah, with that much breeze, you won't expect to see as much dew as we did the other evening. And there was turn in the afternoon in that first one-day international. There wasn't so much in the evening because of that fact. Now, this is in the afternoon in the first one day international. Can work him, got a few balls to turn. And a little bit of bounce as well, that last one. But you didn't see many de deliveries behaving in that manner in the evening. Due in the outfield, ball slightly wet, the seam gets slippery. And that's the reason why. Today, it could be a different story without so much due expected. End of the over, Ireland 11 for 1. Early days in this Ireland run chase. We've lost the wicket of former captain Andrew Balburnie already. And Faisal Hak Faruqi is going to continue from the pavilion end. About to start his third over. Once again, left arm round the wicket. He's got a short mid wicket in as well as a solitary slip. Quite an open stance there, Paul Sterling, with uh, the left arm bowler operating. Tino, if you were in his shoes, how would you go about coping with Faisal Hak Faruqi here? He's doing the right thing. One, because he knows Faruqi is going to be swinging the ball back into him. So the reason why he's that open is so that if the ball swings back, he's still able to access the ball swinging back into him. Of course, he's got to be a lot more careful when the ball's outside the line of the off stump, but the majority of the balls are going to be at the stumps. They're going to be swinging back at him. The mistake a lot of batters do is they close themselves off as if they're facing a right-hand bowler. And then it makes it very difficult for you if the ball dips into your leg to be able to get your back down and play with a straight bat. So he's definitely got his... Technique right, and he's thinking about how best to counteract Fazalak Faruqi. To the left arm, Seema bowling over the wicket, I'd be even more open. 
and that's why he's got such a dangerous ball when he's bowling in swing from left arm over and then he bowls one that goes straight across because if you don't wait for the ball and you just throw the hands at it expecting it to turn back then there's the opportunity for that caught behind an opportunity to get a ball into the covers in the air It's a perfect example. Foot out the way, bat coming straight down, and he's able to access the ball. Look at that. He's triggered, and his front foot's just gone to the middle stump. And then he's just dragged it back slightly to make sure that he doesn't get the pad in the way. A bit of misfielding at extra cover. Let Sterling off for a single. Nabi, the guilty man. Camphor now on strike. And Camphor was, of course, bowled by Faisal Haq Faruqi in the previous match. have a look at how Camphor went to Faruqi. Here you go. Hasn't gone forward. Hasn't gone back. He's just throwing the hands out at the ball and it's come back in that gap. So that's all Faruqi will be looking to do coming around the wicket. You rarely see him bowling the one that goes straight on from round. That delivery he uses from over the wicket once he's got a few coming into you. Lovely contest between bat and ball. And they're playing him very watchfully, Our Ireland. Five gone, 12 for one. Real ebb and flow to the Afghanistan innings when they were put into bat. In the end, 236 for nine. It looks a little bit below par. But whether it will be, of course, in the final analysis, we'll find out over the next three hours or so. Sterling's found the gap. Ashmatul Shahidi chasing back. Two runs for his opposite number. Your question reminds me of way back in 2005. India toured uh, Zimbabwe. Irfan Patan was on that Indian side and caused lots of problems for the Zimbabwean top order. Kevin Curran at the time was the national team coach. I was attached to the academy and he brought down Sunny Gavaskar and Ravi Shastri to talk to the national team batters primarily, but those of us that were in the academy at the time as to how best to counteract Irfan Pathan. And he said, if you're a right-hand batter and you get your left foot going across the stumps to a left arm bowler who swings the ball back into you, and you got yourself into heaps of trouble. Probably used slightly more forceful words to say that. But um, I then realized what he was talking about later on in my career when I had to face Mitchell Stark and a Trent Bolt. But yes, 
what he said back then is uh, what we're seeing from Paul Sterling today. Making sure that front foot stays leg side of the ball. Sterling's getting a bit frustrated here. Ireland haven't really got out of first gear. He's just looking to try and take the initiative. But this is fine bowling. It's easier said than done to get after two operators who are really at the top of their game this evening. Omar Zai and Faruqi. Now that shot will bring about the shot you spoke about recently in terms of frustration because he's hit a couple and then have either gone to the fielder haven't quite gone to the boundary he feels they should be a lot further than they are just two point five at the moment they're scoring at just below that it's been some really nice shots played crisply timed but haven't realized runs Asking Raiders now just crept above five. It's hard work for these island batters, but I think they realise after what happened in match one when they were 34 for three and there was no way back really from that situation despite Tector and Tucker. Preserving wickets at the top here is quite important. A really terrific over that just two runs from it 14 for one Exactly as Tino spoke about there, Irfan Patan causing problems for Zimbabwe in 2005. Look at that, 12 wickets in the match. One thing is definitely apparent today. The Ireland batsmen have gone away and thought about how best to face Faruqi. I think what they've said to themselves is don't give this guy a wicket, guys. Curtis Camper certainly looked a lot more comfortable to him today as he did in the previous match. Well, on top of that, it's what we've already spoken about. There's not a lot of experience to come in the Afghanistan bowling lineup. One player making his second appearance, two on debut. Let's run along the ground. Goodness me. It's a good thing that ball was a good six inches out the line of your stump. Because this has literally rolled. Not too far away from that off stump. First shot out of character we've seen from camp for this evening. Big shout for a court behind. Oh no, says Ahmed Shah Pakteen. Just taps his leg actually to indicate that, as far as he's concerned, that's come off the thigh pad rather than the bat. You can see Kampfer just advancing down the pitch there as well. Good call from umpire Pakteen. That advancing down the wicket as well is just to make sure that he tries to get him off the good length that he's bowling. That 
ball swung in and it's been swung away a really good shot by Camfer his first boundary and it just breaks the shackles a little bit for Ireland that this is a better stroke it's the one he attempted a couple of deliveries ago but this one fuller and straighter so he's able to get to the ball and with the ball swinging into you from around the wicket like that you don't necessarily have to close the face of the bat play it with the straight bat it'll go there naturally with the angle Muhammad Nabi was in a catching position prior to that boundary it's just been moved a few meters back now in that mid wicket position Fine leg now coming up into the circle and square leg going back. And he was outstanding in the first ODI. The first wicket he got was a Balberni, caused trouble for him all the way through. And then it was Curtis Kampfer. Lorcan Tucker, who batted extremely well, had to get on with things at that stage. And a magnificent Yorker to dismiss Mark Adair towards the end of the innings. So far today, just the one success of Balburni. End of the over, four runs from it. Ireland seven gone, 18 for one, chasing two, three, seven. Very cautious start for Ireland. They won't be pleased by the loss of Balberni, but they will be pleased in just a few signs from the new white ball captain, Paul Sterling. He does love it through the offside. I think of a second, but they'll turn it down. So a nice flourish from Camfer to get his first boundary in the previous over. See the field that Afghanistan have set for Paul Sterling, and indeed the same for Curtis Camfer for Omer's side. It's a packed offside field. Couldn't quite believe Sterling managed to get one through there. Five men from backward point through to mid off. That's not where they want Omer's side to bowl. Should be a couple to Camfer as I wish a very good evening to Devender Kumar. Devender, lovely to be with you again. Where is this game going? Good evening, Andrew. Good evening to everyone tuning in to this broadcast. It's going to be quite a challenge for Afghan fast bowlers to get wickets here. Two batsmen in the middle at the moment concentrating on keeping the good deliveries away by playing attacking rather than defensive strokes. That's been the approach from Ireland. A lot depends on how this combination bats for the next seven to eight overs. Yeah, of course, Harry Tector to come with that new benchmark and quality that he is setting for Irish batters. Still early in this new role for Curtis Camfer up at number three. Mark Adair said somewhat, somewhat jokingly after the test match that Curtis Camfer wasn't part of the fast bowlers union anymore, despite picking up a couple of wickets in that test match. And he's really a batter now who bowls occasionally. Didn't bowl today. I think it's a good move. Ireland... Being honest with you, Devender, they messed about a bit last year. Andy McBride was used as a makeshift opener. At one point, he was a makeshift number three, too. Andy Balberni then said, OK, I'll come up from number three, back up to number one or number two. I'll open the batting. Hasn't worked quite yet, but I certainly think there's a better balance with Camfer at three. He's an attacking batsman, likes to play shots. A good option to have in the public overs. 
someone who can play the drive down the ground through the offside as, as well with great control and authority. And what Camfort number three allows, maybe almost more critically for the balance of the side, is that Harry Tector can stay at number four. And you've got a guy averaging over 50. And in fact, in more recent times, over 60 in this format at a certain slot. You want to allow the accommodation for that. I think Lorcan Tucker's natural number is five, and George Dockrell probably wouldn't want to be any higher than number six. So the top six with Camfer at three has a very good look to it. And there's Harry Tector. He'll be in next at number four. I know you listened to his interview in our, our pre-match build-up. Very special talent, that young man. He's a thoughtful cricketer. Thinks a lot about the situation, thinks a lot, lot about his game plan as well. He's got clarity about his game plan, how to approach the innings, and also he plays a spin well, which is a big advantage for Ireland earlier. A lot used to depend on Balburnie and Paul Sterling. Tucker betting well, Tector betting well. Four runs come from Armour Size, fourth over, 22 for one. And one of those comments he made in that interview that I found very illuminating, the fact that he said, I know my, my strength is my, my reach as a tall batter. So found a method to score runs on what was a slightly slow surface. He won't have the same scoreboard pressure today, he wouldn't have thought, in terms of that required run rate being up towards seven, eight, nine per over. So with the required run rate at five runs per over, in and around that, it started at less than that. Means that Tector can bat that time if he needs to, whenever he gets in. A much more cautious approach for Ireland than Afghanistan. Afghanistan got off to a flyer. And that's a flying stroke through the offside. Vintage Paul Sterling. He loves hitting through the covers and indeed here the point region. Beautiful boundary. Stunning stroke from Sterling. The sound of the bat meeting the ball communicated the message to the opposition. Just giving a bit of room to himself and punched it hard through that point reason for four in total control of the stroke. A lovely stroke from Sterling. His strong zone, his, his real comfort zone is anywhere there. Through That was kind of a cover point region all the way down round to a mid-off extra cover. And he hits it through the offside. Oh, no more glorious sight in white ball cricket. And the ping off the bat, you're spot on, immaculate. Yeah, different batsmen all together. I saw him 2021 uh, as well. Before that, he used to play attacking cricket straight away attacking the spinners and lofting the fast bowlers down the ground. In the air, into the gap on the offside. Will settle for single eventually. It takes time these days. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I actually think it's almost uh, Paul Sterling 2.0 or maybe even 3 or 4.0. His game has evolved, all cricketers' games evolve. When he first burst onto the scene, remember he made a couple of centuries against Pakistan and ODI cricket at a very young age. He was 21. He was a dasher. He went at it. He was exhilarating and brilliant to watch. That's still the same game he plays in T20 cricket, but his ODI game has evolved a huge amount. He's now much more cautious at the top. The series you're referring to in Abu Dhabi in the Cricket World Cup Super League. Well, he was as good as I've seen in a three-match series. I think it was 200s and a 50 or something to that effect. And all of that was built around cautious starts through the power play. Ireland tended to be 45 for none after 10, or 45 for one, 40 for two. And then Sterling would cash in in the middle overs. He's good against spin, which isn't necessarily always a thing for all openers. And in order to attend consistency in betting, and you've been tested by the high quality oppositions when you play in different conditions you need to alter your game 
to address the situation, the team in at the same time, different types of bowlers as well. You need to keep reinventing yourself in order to stay relevant at the higher level. And that's where he's been brilliant last three to four years or so. Driven hard through the offside for four. Boundary to mark the end of the ninth over. 31 for one. Sterling just showing a few signs now that he's coming to the boil in a big way. Just talking about the evolution of his game. And Curtis Camfer, that elegant boundary off the last ball. Maybe learning from the master at the far end. This was well reminiscent of Sterling at his imperious best. Again, it's that cover point region, lasered away for four. Great commitment into the stroke from Kemper. That's what you expect from the South Africans. They bring the combative spirit into the contest. I remember Paul Sterling getting 100 here in 2017, December. A fighting 80 as well. Yeah, that knowledge of... of both sides getting to play against each other so frequently is, is something that's clearly been used. You can see in the fields that Paul Sterling has had set for him. And a special day for these two men on the screen. On the right, Scott Irvine is actually yesterday 30 years old, the North Down Cricket Club man on the right. And Gary Wilson on the left, the assistant coach. He missed his youngster's birthday today, Oliver Wilson. So big happy birthday to him back home. Doing a great job, Scott Irvine. The Irish team analyst played a good bit of cricket up in the Northern Cricket Union. Not out of the middle of the bat, but pretty effective. And well, you suspect that's going to be for Ramacha. Didn't quite get going down at fine leg. May have a boundary check. Looked like it was for to me to end it. Well, it was racing away towards the boundary. Late to realize Ramacha. Running to his left hand side, not in control of the stroke as well. Sterling trying to heave through the onside towards mid wicket. That Ramos Shah with the diving effort, the goal won the race. Well, I think Ramos maybe could have told Paul Rifle it is now given as for put it in. Probably not quite out of exactly where Paul Sterling intended it to be, but. Got a good piece of it, and just some signs now, going back to this point. The movement's gone out of the two new balls. And now Paul Sterling says, OK, how much of this remaining fielding restrictions in these first 10 can we cash in on? Moving the field, fine leg comes up into the circle. That's Ramit Shah, deep backward square, goes back now. That's exactly where the ball will go to for a single. For Afghanistan to win this contest, where are the wickets coming from? Well, worrying signs for Afghanistan. A lot, lot, lot of experience when it comes to spin bowling. And someone who plays the spin really well, Paul Sterling. It's going to be challenged, but they need a miraculous spell from someone. Maybe Karote on his debut. Yeah, looking forward to watching him bowl see how he goes about it had a watch of him in the in the middle by afghan standards quite a, a conventional spinner yeah traditional spinner like he bowls in the world of ravinder jadeja or sarafuddin ashraf takes the ball away from the batsman right in batsman 
get some side spin as well. Very competitive, always into the contest. Aggressive bowler by nature. Dot ball to finish the over. 10 gone, 36 for one, Ireland. Certainly some signs, Ireland. Maybe, even though they're not going at the rate, they, they might be the happier of the two sides right now. They are. They are because there will be a lot of dew. And the uh, batsmen with the capability to play spin really well. Paul is telling there are two batsmen who batted beautifully in the previous game, yet to come. Um, Yeah, the two big differences from that first ODI as we see the end of the first power play signaled into the second now. Four fielders will be allowed outside the 30-yard circle. Big difference from the first ODI, Ireland lost three early, this time just one, and that was it. A feather of an inside edge through to Karmali Kiel, who took the catch, and since then there's been some lovely flourishes, mainly through the offside, but that one through the leg too from Curtis Camfer and a pair of drives that almost matched each other before Sterling said let's keep cashing in whilst we can whilst those restrictions are in place so Ireland skipper maybe be the happier of the two right now in this moment now here's a big moment for this young man 19 years of age had a huge impact on the test match didn't he bowled with real heart and aggression plenty of movement as well He's immediately greeted by another extra cover drive. Paul Sterling is asked to come back for two by Curtis Camfer. He gets a good response. Natural now to see Naveed Zidran into the white ball action, having bowled so well in the test match. Yeah, bowling superbly well in first class cricket, in listy cricket as well, and that's why he received the call for the national team in test match cricket. Bowled well in Sri Lanka. Bowled well against Ireland in the test match, and hence getting the opportunity to make it count just riding on his form and his spell is going to be crucial he picked up five wickets in the, in the test match but it probably doesn't actually sum up his impact on the the game as a whole he did well with the bat too he was good to watch here's his cap presentation Fazalak Faruqi making the cap presentation to Nabi Jadran. Two bowlers with similar attitude, aggression, and looking to get into the head of the batsman and getting them out. Aggressive bowlers. I'm talking about this a little bit in, in the test match. The, the initial rise of Afghanistan was spurred by the brilliance of their bowlers, the, the fast bowlers, the Hamid Hassan, who's just there in shot. Now the bowling coach was an express pace bowler, Dawat Zadran, Sapor Zadran, we saw here the other day. And then the mystery spinners, too, coming onto the scene. And he's probably going to angle down, significant movement in. But there's a shade of Amida Sand, doesn't quite have the Afghan face paint on that he did, but I like the headband, good style. Taking inspiration from Hamid Hassan. Excellent delivery. Some shape on the ball as well. Getting the ball to come back to the right in batsman, just sliding down the leg side, clearly missing the leg stump, I reckon. Yeah, good shout and a good call too from Ahmed Shah Pakteen. That's somewhere where Camphor is strong. Loves to pull and cut. Picks up the length quickly. Not over the head of mid-wicket by much, but enough. Four more. Aggression meets aggression. Just dropping it short. Picking the length early and smacking it. In control of the stroke, short mid wicket in positions, right over him for four. Boundaries coming along. Oh, 
Seven runs from Naveed Zidran's first bowl in ODI cricket, 43 for one. Is that one of the things that spread on interest for you in, in Afghanistan's story, those fast bowlers at the start as they, they kind of started out in the game? Well, there's a conscious effort. They organize talent and programs as well. Hami Darshan has always been role model for previous generation of cricketers as well. And the current generations, they take a lot of inspiration from the way he bowled for Afghanistan. The importance of those role models, no doubt that the likes of Alan Mohammed Kazanfer, who is now going to be coming into the attack, no doubt that he's watched Mujib, it's uncanny the resemblance. There's no doubt that Kais Ahmed and Noor Ahmed have been inspired by Rashid Khan. I think the same for Naveed Zidran with, with Hamid Hassan. Get those role models up onto the the TV screens and the pictures around the world and, and get them to ICC world events. All of a sudden, that's what you aspire to be as a young cricketer. You want to emulate your heroes. And it's very early days for this young man, but from what I saw down at the Under-19s World Cup in South Africa, you would suspect he's another mystery spinner with a big future. I think it's really good that they kept him in the team. They could have left him out, couldn't they? Wicketless in the first game. Gets another chance tonight. Yeah, that's where the role of Shpagiza Cricket League has been instrumental in identifying the talent. Rashid Khan in 2015. Mujibur Rahman. No Rahman at this time. It's been cut away. Behind the square on the offside. Should be back for two. Bit of hesitation, but eventually completing the second run as well. The new Rehmat in 2019, Allah Muhammad. So they've been able to identify at least one talent from every edition of Shpagiza Cricket League, the domestic T20 league in Afghanistan. One of the big challenges for Gazan for compared to down in South Africa where they were all day games he's coming here for the second consecutive match he's having to bowl under floodlights with that due in place that's I don't want to call it the stock delivery but the one you'll see a lot of the little sort of carom ball or the flicker the one that will in essence act as a leg break there just wasn't anything like a significant amount of grip to make him too difficult for Ireland to play. And again, we spoke about Scott Irvine's impact on the Irish team as the analyst. Ireland have clearly done their homework on it. And also, he does not have the experience of bowling under lights. Gazinfar, he's bowled in uh, daylight. He's been successful in utilizing those conditions in Kabul or wherever he went, even in South Africa. He could change his game to suit the conditions. sometimes particularly with a youngster like Kazan for he's 16 he needs to be given time and care and attention and empathy you need empathy as a spin bowler and luckily the modern game particularly the t20 game values wrist spin so so highly as wicket taking in its ability you tend to get more empathetic coaching critically more empathetic captaincy because they now in the modern game see the value of wrist spin mystery spin so give him time he's got plenty of it i think the selectors and uh, all the people responsible for pushing the talent through a lot of patience with these youngsters once they identify the talent they give them ample opportunities and security to execute their game plans in wiring conditions uh, also change of level from under 19 cricket to playing international cricket against high quality batters with, with the ability to combat the spin dot ball to finish the first over of uh, Kazanfar 12 gone 48 for one Ireland
Afghanistan got off to a flyer. They really did. Looking in complete control and on course for maybe 300 plus after that first 10 overs, but the fight back for Ireland was a strong one. And it's meant that even though there's a big gulf in between where the two sides were at this point, Ireland will be the much happier of the two sides with two batters starting to look really good. Look at the way Sterling's caught up his strike right as well, up to nearly a run of ball now. Lost three wickets early in the previous game, made a conscious effort to combat the fast, fast bowlers. They were defensive in their approach to combat the fast bowlers, playing straight, intent on defending the deliveries, keeping the good deliveries out, and, and now they decided to hit the gaps. This time hits on the pad, huge appeal, not entertained by the umpire. Yeah, I did just have a quick look at a, a photo of Hamid Hassan's headband. It was in the Afghan national colours. A bit different for Navid Zidran, but he's certainly challenging Camfer for pace. As we saw through the test match, all of the predominant movement that he was getting was back into the right-handers. Ireland really only have Andy McBrien as, as a left-handed batter. So I think he'll get picked off there quite a lot. Camphor's strong off his pads, he's particularly strong on the short ball too. So he has to find a, a channel to operate in where he can control things as the 50s now come up in the 13th over. Ireland looking in a very good position right now. Well, in general, he bowls good line and length, good control, the areas that he operates, good length around the off stump, where it's his first game in one day. Cricket under lights, Will take a bit of time to get himself in, totally attuned to the contest. I think that's a really good point you make in terms of both of these youngsters. Three of the team here are making their debut in this format, in this series. Two debutants today, just a few days ago, Kazan for now into his second ODI. It's not just the the television cameras, the additional attention of the international side, but it's also the floodlights, like you said coming in and having to experience all that, learn from that. Are you bowling with a much damper ball? How do you get that dried? Where's your grip place, particularly for the spinner? This is a little bit of a hack from Paul Sterling, but it will be effective enough to get a couple. You can train all these things. You can train under lights. You can train with wet balls, even soaked balls. Nothing quite replicates, though, stepping out in an international for your country and all the pressure that's associated associated with it. Always challenge, they think about various aspects before playing the first game about making adjustment from red ball cricket to white ball cricket, that's two under lights. Depending on different situations, you've got to bowl differently. You may have all the variations, all the deliveries that you look for, but executing those plans. Good shot ball. And that marks the end of the 13th over, 52 for one. Lovely platform for Ireland to work with. They will not worry about that required run rate figure on your screen. Five per over, certainly very much in hand. You're just talking about those three players coming into their debut series, including Gazanfer. We'll see with the ball here. Massive disparity in terms of experience between the two sides in terms of the number of caps across the starting 11s today. For Ireland, 726 ODI caps. For Afghanistan, 512. But of the 512, over 270 of them belong to two players, Ramat Shah and Mohammed Nabi. But I like what they're doing here, Devender, introducing these young men. They've identified them and saying, OK, alongside some of our experience, that's his stock ball. That's the one there that goes away. Has grip this time. 
now they're going to learn. So Mohamed Nabi says, come on, youngster. Why don't I get a slip into place as well? Well, that's where they've been brilliant over the years as well. I remember Muzib making debut. At the age of 16 years on this very ground, taking four wickets. So once they identify the talent, they make sure that they provide them the opportunities. First, first of all, they put in the camps against the national players. Also, they play Shpagizia Cricket League where they get all the international players participating. So when you gain experience of bowling to those batsmen, those international batsmen, that gives them that extra lift, confidence to compete against quality batters. And what they're doing is they're building that next generation whilst keeping some very experienced heads in and around them. Shahidi, Ramacha, Mohamed Nabi. And the big difference between these two sides, we've said it a few times through this tour. Afghanistan have a, a very varied setup across all three formats. We'll, we'll see when the T20s come around, more and more franchise names that we're used to around the world come into the team. The test team was almost entirely different, with just four names the same. For Ireland, it's close to the same group of players across all three formats. Yes, one or two changes here or there. Very similar. Should be back for two. And gets there for the second run. Mujib is not playing. Rashid is not playing. Nusrafuddin Ashraf as well. So he's stepping up for those players. It's a challenge, massive challenge. And Gulubuddin is not playing. So it takes time to adopt to the challenges at the international level. At the same time, feeling that vacuum being left by the energy and the skill of Rashid Khan, the magician. 14 overs gone, 56 for one. Ireland going nicely. Superb with the ball, excellent in the field, and now with the bat efficient. Partnership worth 52 between Paul Sterling and Curtis Camfer, who's just finding his way as a number three bat in international cricket. Paul Sterling with his record and dominance over Afghanistan down the years, whether you're in Greater Noida or Dehradun or here in Sharjah, Sterling knows how to get the job done versus Afghanistan. A lot resting on those. Shoulders of the captain. Oh, thick outside edge, the extra pace, and a little bit of extra bounce from the headband warrior. Four to Sterling, good evening. Ahmed Fadai. Someone's got so much excitement. Nile, you look very happy for sure. I think Ireland is on the way to break that streak. And then you ask the captain, why not a slip fielder? Well, a ball has hardly gone to slip in two games. To, to be fair to the captain, the partnership was worth 40, 52, so it's not a slip catching pitch here at Charger. But we've got a good game in our hands here, as well as Ireland are doing right now. As well as Ireland are doing right now. From an Afghanistan perspective, if you just stay in the game, get one, you get two. This score, 177, that's a long way off still. Well, for Afghanistan to win is the only way to take all the wickets. That's the only way, because if the island batters bat 45, 46 over, they're home. Yeah, nicely poised here. Match three, of course. Now, bumper, extra pace, but extra pace takes it over the long leg boundary. This is aggressive by the Afghanistan quick, but Paul Sterling up to the task. And now Paul Sterling maybe wants to finish things quick and fast. This one, you'd expect from the quick bowler to bowl a short pitch, 
But Paul Stings up for the task. Maximum number one for the innings of Ireland. Maximum number one for Sterling. Sterling, 42 of 40. Quiet start, getting into his groove. I felt when I saw the selection from Afghanistan today, I thought wrist spin out in Nur Ahmed. Debutante, Karate, the finger spinner in. I, I thought straight away, advantage Ireland. A youngster, debutante, and the excellent wrist spinner, Nur Ahmed out. And then Gulbadin out, and Navid Zadran in with extra pace. I thought from an Ireland perspective, as a batting unit, that was a massive confidence filler for the men in green. I like what Afghanistan are doing, getting game time into players. I love it. Strengthen your bench, strengthen your your group that you can call upon, not just now, but in the future. But I just thought for this particular game, when Sterling, Balberni, Camp, Protector, etc., saw that lineup, no Gulbadim that would have been very canny, very experienced on this pitch, slower balls. And then Nur Ahmed out of the side, left arm wrist spin on, and not a great player, great side against wrist spin. I thought that was massively important in the context. Good over for Ireland, 10 off it, 66 for one. Ireland are on the roll. They already got one big over, 10 runs off it, 66, and only one wicket down. Ireland will feel they've got themselves home. They just have to constantly do what they have been doing for the last 15 overs. Game nicely poised. It's match three, of course. Match two got washed out. Afghanistan looking to win 2-0. Ireland looking to get back in the series and level at one on. Now, Mohammed Nabi, evergreen Nabi. Played well with the bat today for his 48. Not a huge turn of the ball, but changes his pace and delivery pattern. Just keep an eye on where he releases the ball from angles from Mohammed Nabi. Partnership was really good. 62 from 77. Ireland lost Balberni early. Once again, out to Fazal Haq Faruqi. You like this change-up, getting the off-spin, get experience into the attack? Well, yeah, absolutely, but I'll uh, take you from what you earlier said, Gulbadin Naib. You thought it was the day Gulbadin must have played. And you asked this question, why change the winning combination? Afghanistan won the first game, but then... You want to give your new player as well as much game time. Yeah, you talked about how Gulbadin Naib is a player like with the ball and with the variations that he brings in. But I thought that maybe today was the day for Gulbadin because Afghanistan started towards the end. And they needed someone like Gulbadin Naib to give him a bigger total than they got. Sterling, beautiful. What a wonderful, wonderful hit that is. Footwork. Paul Sterling realizing. Nabi, finger spinner, get down the surface. Mid off was inside the ring and he hits one into the stands for six. What a lovely bit of batsmanship. Yuck yeah, comes down the track and attacks Muhammad Nabi. The most experienced in Afghanistan's camp. High, long, and handsome. His highest score now as captain of Ireland, 48. That was a lovely six down the ground. Now, outside edge. LB Shell, was it a pad? Outside the line of off stumps. The arm ball. Nabi just, Mama Nabi just gets that ball to drift away. Hits Sterling outside the line. Yeah, watch that. Confidence. Paul Sterling, he's done it very often against Afghanistan. He's got a very good record against Afghanistan. 
End of the over from Muhammad Dabi. Seven off it. Ireland are 73 for one. Uh, time for both sets of players to have a well-earned drinks break. Sensational. What a beautiful montage that was. Gorgeous country, gorgeous people. And I tell you what, if you're watching in Afghanistan, please send me the message. Who was that singer? What was that music? A lovely melody to add to my little playlist. I would ask the man alongside me, but I've asked him off air and he didn't know. Shame on you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> You've been living in Washington, D.C. too long. No comments. <laughs> oh, good work inside the ring. Excellent backing up. Gerbaz, that's brilliant. Well, may well go unnoticed that bit of feeling, but from Ramanullah Gervaz. Excellent awareness to get off the rope and back up the angle of the attempted direct hit. Sterling, 48, are just better than a runner ball.
happy and watchful at the moment, Ireland. Required rates under five in, in ODI cricket in the modern game. That's comfortable. Ticking along at 4.5 at the moment, so Ireland are well in control. We've seen one debutante, we haven't seen the other one yet. Yeah, you wish should be granted shortly. How clever has been this approach from Ireland? I mean, really good game awareness. Going off to the bowlers that they know are comfortable going against. While on the other hand, the mystery spinner, Allah Muhammad Ghazanfar, watching it. That's nice. Brilliant. Paul Sterling, that is his 29th 50 in the ODI arena to go with 1400. It's the 11th half century versus Afghanistan. He has 300 as well. First 50 as captain. Excellent from Sterling. 17 done. 77 for one. Ireland well on top Come at the on, moment. That on, can change quickly here in Sharjah. Naby to continue. Well, an excellent from Paul Sterling. Played superbly well for another very well manufactured half century. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Captain leading from the front. Appreciated by the dugout. This feels great to get your. To get your runs that you've been looking for as the skipper, you earlier indicated that it's his highest as a captain into his 11th match as a captain. He's played brilliantly against Afghanistan in the past. He's got 300, a lot of 50s. Now, not out of the middle of the bat, and that is a gift for Afghanistan. Previous over, he belted Mohammed Nabi for a six. The difference, Midolf was inside the ring. This time, Nabi had his man sweeping in the deep. Sterling Perry Against Sri Lanka, against Hasaranga. This time against the skipper of Ireland, who completed his 50 but couldn't complete the job. Gets out, good catch at the deep. Mohammed Nabi gets his man. Paul Sterling, after beautiful 50 of 53 departs, Ireland are 77 for two. Well, Ireland have lost the second. The man of the moment, Harry Tector. Ireland's premier batter comes in in a much better position than he has come in the past. So the platform has been set. Exceptional numbers. Wonderful average. Strike rate is really good, 84. And the best of 140 against Bangladesh in Chelmsford. Oh, it's clever from Nabi. A little drifter. He's got all the experience in the world. Yeah. Paul Sterling came down the track. Remember, in the early over, he hit him for a six. But this time, the tallest of the all, Allah Muhammad Ghazanfa. Paul Sterling departs. I mean, you wanted him to stay longer. Stay till the end. But Muhammad Nabi, he beautifully set up. The T20 skipper for Sri Lanka, Hasaranga, who was charging against the bowlers. 
He set a field down at the long on region and got him out a couple of times. Well, ball. 18 overs ball, 77 for two. Ireland need 160 runs with a new man in kind of harness line for pressure. Well, it's game on here in Sharjah. That wicket of Sterling changes the complexion massively. A lovely, lovely moment for any player to make their debut. Nangayal Karute, left arm finger spin. Well, welcome to international cricket. Six runs. Come on, Nangayal. Camphor was waiting for that. Short ball, waited and dispatched. You wish granted. <laughs> Where is the debutant? Here it is. Camphor climbs into that short. I well, just asked the hit, really. Karote took a wicket with his first ball in first class cricket, his fifth ball in List A cricket, and his seventh ball in T20. So that short ball, that poor ball, a real rarity. Normally gets into his groove right from the off. Oh, pull away again. Well, this is different. This is a different arena. This is Camphor. This is international cricket at Sharjah. Can't drop it short. Absolutely. Comfort not allowing him to be into his comfort once again. So 10 runs off first two deliveries. Oh, good work from Harry Tector as well. Just saying to Curtis Camphor, just keep an eye on the field, Charles Camphor. Yeah. I'm aware of it. I'm scouring the changes. Leg side reinforcements. Deep mid wicket now and deep backward square. Mid on inside the ring. Long off and deep cover. Missing leg. Flatter, faster. Is that what we can expect? And that's a good comeback. That's what do justice to the stats that you earlier read why he was able to get wickets early on. Yeah, this one skidded quicker. Yeah, missing leg stump, but that's good comeback. Is his general stock ball in white ball cricket, is he a left arm finger spinner that goes up and over, or does he try to drive the ball into the surface? I believe he tries to drive the ball onto the surface more, so ball that with the arm quicker. But he's a good, a very good finger spinner. A very orthodox of the finger spinner that you can get. Yeah, short man as well, not very tall. I heard you mentioned some of the fellow commentators, another tall left arm spinner. <laughs> Shalafuddin, who's a left arm finger spinner, tall man. But Karote. And this is Paul Sterling down the ground, and then, well, he makes a bit of a mess of this. Well, first over in international cricket, yields 12. 19 done, 89 for two. Comfort on the charge. 12 runs off the debutants over, not allowing him to find his line in length. And you would want that as Ireland, because one thing that you for sure want to negate of Hanesan is their spin attack. Yeah, a couple of skyscrapers, relatively speaking, for Sharjah standards. Not quite Dubai, not quite the Burj Khalifa. I've been telling you you're excited. Burj Khalifa, are you kidding me? Do you want 36 runs in an over? 
That'd be marvellous, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Tector just will get into his groove. He has the luxury now, Harry Tector, to really just assess conditions. The run rate is only 4.77 per over, so he has the ability now just to set a stall out. Looks like Camfer is going to be the aggressor. Mid off inside the ring now, so Mohamed Nabi laying down the gauntlet to Curtis Camfer. Will Camfer be ultra aggressive and try and take Nabi downtown? Well, I like that, to ask the batter, try and take risk, and that's how you can create the opportunities. We saw earlier how he put the bait to the Irish skipper, and the finer the bait, the shorter the weight was kind of thing that we witnessed, got rid of Paul Sterling, because he's really a dangerous player. That two against Afghanistan, this was a good one. Yeah, Mohamed Nabi, the last four or five years, has just added to his arm, a little arm ball. Just watch this ball drift away. You see, just drift away, not trying to spin the ball, almost undercutting the ball. Let it just drift away from the offspin. You've got to be careful when you come down the pitch, especially Nabi, you don't run past one leg side of the ball. Wants to. Oh, thought long and hard about two, but probably in the end, the right call. Yeah, you do not want to challenge Asmatullah Omar. He's a very good fielder. He's got strong arm. And that's a good call by the Irish batters. Running first run hard, thinking about the second one, but then going against it. Tidy from Nabi, just four singles, 20 down, 93 for two. The worms are neck and neck. Big plus for Ireland, just two wickets down. <laughs> Afghanistan, the same stage with 92 for three, so there's very little in it, guys. Well, this is our schedule. This is ODI number three. We've got three T20s coming here, Sharjah, very soon. 15th of March, and then 17th of March, and then the 18th of March, so. If you're in the area, in Sharjah or anywhere in the UAE, get your tickets and get down and watch. And if you can't, no. just have a nice cup of tea and a biscuit and listen to us. Yeah, and just send us your orders. What do you want to hear? The DJs out here. Well, the DJ Sharjah are probably the best for T20 cricket in the UAE. I'm trying to remember his name. I mean, a brilliant DJ during the tournament here in January, February. He was streets ahead of the gentleman in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. I think his name was DJ Shaz. Somebody out there must remember DJ Shaz from Sharjah in the ILT20. What a wonderful. He was playing some cracking tunes Fleetwood Mac, The Doors, U2. Look at the comeback. Five dots on a trot. Reckon anything coming? That's good from the youngster. Good to see the character. Well bowled is right. 
Ikram Alakil says, well bowl and made in. 93 for two. One apiece to Faruqi and also Nabi. 93 for two at the moment. That uh, loss of Sterling was a massive blow to Ireland, who is playing so well. But now Kampf has got on a bit of a roll as well. Nabi's uh, a canny bowler, as we know. Did that hit outside the line? That'll be the question that uh, Paul Rifle came to some conclusion quickly, I would imagine. About. Excellent delivery from Nabi. Blue balls slow through the air. Oh, Certainly seen a few deliveries uh, turn. A couple of deliveries also just holding its line and keeping a little bit low, skidding through. outside the opposite the impact outside the opposite and gee, it was pretty tight though it's got to be said I think that might have been in line actually I thought uh, also might have been just outside the line as well I'll have another uh, look at that Hold in the line again good stuff from Nobby let's have a look at that one that LBW shot that uh, Nobby thought was uh, pretty tight did it hit in line with that off stump Came back considerably. It did indeed. Hit in line with off stump. That's pretty adjacent. Up goes the finger this time. Good bowling for Nobby. Really good stuff. He's got a smile on his face now. Not so much a couple of balls ago, but now he's happy. Brilliant. Once again, brilliant from Nabi. He has been always savior for Afghanistan cricket team in critical situations. Once again, rising to the occasion, leading a very inexperienced spin bowling attack. He needed to provide the breakthrough, gets two. The confusion that he was creating with one going away, one straightening up, lovely toss up delivery, bit of drift and turn and was found in front, in front of middle stun. Playing across the line, he's been trapped in front. Harry Tector goes for three, 93 for three. Certainly not much in this game now. Kubaz was dismissed for 51. The score was 85 for three. Tector, who's a fine player, 93 for three now as Lorcan Tucker arrives in the middle. Tector played brilliantly in the first one day, 137. Kubaz has just arrived, had his best score, 85. At the bottom of that graphic, average in the uh, mid to low 20s. His career, another look at uh, the dismissal. All pretty adjacent, that one. So, work to be done by Ireland. They were coasting at one stage, but now they've uh, got to get stuck in. 94 for three. Yeah, yeah. 
So Tucker's just arrived. Kampf has played nice for his 38. He had a bit of a gift of that first over that Kuroti bowled. Doc Crawl, the next in. Then it gets to the bowlers. Adair is certainly someone who can bat. Now I think it's McCarthy after uh, Adair and then McBrien, Hume, and Van Wilkham. I would just suggest that's the lineup. McCarthy's been added uh, to strengthen that batting a little bit as well. But if this bowling is tight from uh, Karoti now, it's going to make things difficult. He's pitching in line, turning, going on to hit the leg stump. Two crucial wickets, and uh, Nabi's spell is going to be crucial here. One wicket here, they are into the tail. It's a long tail. And the ball will be just starting to keep a little bit low. There's no vicious turn yet. It's nicely played down the ground. It's going to be one, though. They've got to keep uh, ticking the scoreboard over at this stage. And we don't see many towels on the ground as well. At the moment, it means the dew has not arrived. And uh, if it does not arrive, it means that it's going to be keeping low. The spinners will come into action and fast bowlers as well. Oh, that was. It's a bit of an arm ball. And that's uh, gone for four. Couldn't quite get there, Faruqi. The struggle in his uh, first over, Karote, once again. Uh, that was Fazilak Faruqi in the field. Dropping it short, width given. Opportunity to freeze arms and uh, excellent attempt from Fazilak Faruqi, but had touched the boundary rope already. Skidding. We had quite a, a breeze across the ground earlier. And if that breeze kept up, then uh, it was unlikely that Jew was going to arrive. If the breeze has dropped, which it has, then that's a reasonable chance that uh, Jew, or means that Jew will arrive. When there's wind around, you generally don't get uh, Jew. ODI number one, we uh, had quite a bit of Jew. It uh, got quite wet out there the last, say, 15 overs or so. Under on the board now. Much better betting response from Ireland today. Paul Sterling in particular getting half century. Providing the team up to a solid start to build a platform, but two batsmen perishing in quick succession. Single to end the over. 23 overs have been bowled here at Sharjah. It's 101 for three, Ireland. at the moment bowling with a very nice pace at the moment Nubby two for 12 he's got one ball in his fifth over numbers are outstanding outstanding figure in Afghanistan cricket since the beginning of Afghanistan era and he's been, he's been bowling beautifully attacking this time bringing all the variations Hope you're enjoying this uh, broadcast, whether, wherever you're watching it. It's a, a Firebird production for Afghanistan Cricket Board. We're certainly enjoying bringing it to you. Oops, that's pumped up, and that's out. That's another wicket. They didn't need that, Ireland. Nabi's on fire here. That's his third. He's now got three for 12. That is a big wicket. Huge wicket. Batsman with the capability to play the spin well. Not a great delivery from Nabi. Just chipping it straight to the fieldsman at mid wicket. I was talking about the variations. A bit of side spin. Not in control of the stroke. And Karote taking the catch. Tucker goes for three. It's 101 for four. Ireland in some sorts of trouble now.
Between Tector and Tucker, they got 222 runs in the first one day. I'm afraid. Island, close your ears. They've only got six today. George Dockrell at six. Different day, different story. That's why cricket is a game of glorious uncertainties. Well, Afghanistan will be absolutely delighted now. They're a real chance to win this series 2-0. 101 for four with not a great deal of batting to come. Docker, yes, he can bat, but his average is only 23. Strike rate of 81, best of 91 not out. He'll have to uh, play extremely well. Camphor is key. Just holding into the pitch. Straightforward catch for the debutant. Karote. Yeah, much just stopped a little bit on the surface. Which it uh, tends to do at this stage of an innings in Sharjah. 101 for four. Wicket maiden as well. Top over that last one, a wicket maiden from Nubby. 101 for four. Ireland were 96 for four. That was in the 22nd over, 23rd over. We just one ball down to the 25th over, so it's all pretty tight at the moment. Yeah, wicket's falling in a heap in the previous innings as well. Just uh, sliding down on the next one there. He's on 43, Curtis Kemper. He's going to play a significant part if they want to win this game from this situation. First wicket for Ireland, Phil at 62, second on 73. This one was 77. Next one was on 85. Today was 93. Well, now was 93 and then 96 and now 101 so it's not much in this that's for sure stopped and played uh, just a little bit to scoop that up just hurled a little bit on the surface and bunted it straight to him I like that Afghanistan, up goes the finger. Now the batsman, Kampfer, is not particularly happy. He's got to walk away, though. He has been given out. Celebrations from the Afghanistan players and supporters. I'm not sure Kampfer's too happy about that uh, decision. Man on debut, taking the catch in the previous over. Karuchi, not a great delivery to get the batsman out. First wicket in international cricket, in one day cricket for Karate. Was that off the thigh pad? Or rather, the pad, off the pad. Jack Johnson for the debutant. You can understand the frustration from the batsman. Kemper goes for 43. Ireland 101 for 5. So five down now, Adair has arrived at the crease. Did a very good job with the ball early today, did Mark Adair. Came back nicely after the first game. Camphor will be uh, in that change room right now. Very disappointed because I'm convinced that was off the pad. Empire Pak Teen, who's the man that uh, counts, thought otherwise. Karoti's uh, been... Uh, Given his uh, first wicket. Mm -hmm. yeah, I 
think uh, Camphor was just letting us know it was Pat as well there. He's done well to control his emotions as he walked off too, it must be said too. Grote again, nicely bowled, nice pace. One for 19, his return at the moment. Catch and wicket, a massive boost for debutant. The coach will be happy, but he never shows happiness. Never quite exhibit his emotions. A successful over for Karote. 25 overs gone, 101 for five. There's the trophy. That's what they're playing for. Of course, the second one day was washed out. We didn't uh, even get a ball ball due to all the rain around. Torrential rain it was, which is most unusual in this part of the world. Dockle was yet to get off the mark and also a dare. So it's exactly how Afghanistan would like Ireland at the moment. Tremendous comeback in performance from Nabi. There will be celebrations second day of Ramadan in Afghanistan. All the people watching together in community halls, around 20, 25 people at one home watching cricket together. Wanted to get off the mark, I think, but uh, in the end it turned onto the pad. So it adds onto the pad, actually. He's well beautifully, Nabi. Three for 12 he's got. Halfway through, six over. These numbers are extraordinary from the experienced spinner. It's worked away, so Dockerell has got off the mark. Nabi has been magnificent once again. The crisis manager for the team. They needed wickets in some form and only experienced spinner in the ranks. They expected him at the halfway stage. They were worried. They wanted wickets from the fast bowlers. They got just one in the first 10 overs. There's lots of enthusiasm in the field. Great deal of encouragement from Afghanistan. Led by the keeper. And Nabi's got one off this over so far, so it's another fine over from him. And that's where it's going to stay. Brilliant work. 26 gone, 102 for five. Third and final one day. Quite possibly, it's going to be 2 0 to Afghanistan, which will be a, a wonderful return after going down in the test match. Karote again. Bowled him! Straight through. He is delighted. He'll be very happy with that one. He's now got his second. Exuberant character, Karote. Getting the right areas to operate with was drifting down the leg side or dropping it short in his first over just getting into the groove at the right moment good delivery attacking distance Ireland collapsing big time here at Sharjah just a little bit of a turn the furniture is disturbed joy joy for Afghanistan joy for Karate Dockrell Goes for one, and Ireland one or two for six.
Well, Ireland are going south very quickly. They've lost uh, three for one, and they last four for just nine. Andy McBride now, who bowled so beautifully early today, in at number eight. His numbers with the ball, one for 36, did a fine job with his uh, off spin. And he's got some serious batting to do now, and he's got to find uh, someone who's going to help him. It could be Adair. Mark Adair's a, a handy batsman. McBride on strike. Chipping that in the air and dropped. That is an absolute sitter. That could have been five for nine. Should have been five for nine. One of the best fielders around. I spoke to the side the captain of the side. Chipping it straight to him, straight in his hands and out. No, I can't believe he dropped that. But he can't either. Brilliant from Karate. It was expensive in the first over, going for a couple of boundaries, then excellent return, hitting the right areas, getting the ball to turn as well. He's got a couple of rough areas to bowl into. It's the same pitch that was uh, used in the first one day. That's why there's some rough areas in the follow through. Beautiful delivery. This little bit of turn has skidded off the surface. Sure, there was a shot offered there. He's been given a leg by though. Second extra in this innings. Tells us something about the discipline from the Afghan bowlers, Nabi in particular. Oh, that's a poor ball again, and another one. He's picked up his third. He's now got three for 19, the debutante. Did that turn too far? Adair doesn't look particularly happy about it. It may not have. Replay will tell the story. Well, they're ruling the shards at the moment. They've gone spinners. Spling off the back foot would have gone on to hit the off stump. Excellent decision by the umpire. He was bleeding with the umpire and it's been rewarded. Massive relief for the captain as well. Mark Adair goes for not 103 for seven. They've lost their last five wickets for ten runs, including the last four for just two. McCarthy's arrived now. That was out, LBW, by the way. Hit him right in front of uh, off stump. Well, Ireland going along nicely, and Navi was introduced. They needed wicket desperately, Afghanistan. You can understand the unity, the celebration. The security that they give the seniors to the junior players coming in the side. And that was all about, don't worry about the drop catch, we got him soon after. So again, two batsmen for Ireland, haven't got off the mark. And Nabi continues, three for 13, his return, he's two balls away from completing. Correction, three balls away from completing seven overs. Nabi, three for 13, brilliant work. Giving a bit of flight, no run there. Magnificent bowling from Mohamed Nabi turning the tide. 
turning the complexion of the game with his uh, brilliant control with line and length and also bowling the variations. Knocks him over. Nabi takes his fourth. And Afghanistan just two wickets away from winning the series 2-0. It's just a classic example of some experienced, clever bowling. Quite a few deliveries have been tossed up and they've been turning a little bit. That one is just one that slides on nicely. Straight on, cannons into that middle and off. And he's on his way. Brian thought he was going to have a bit of room to put that away back in a square, but no. Cramped him up. He's gone for naught. Ireland in deep, deep trouble. 103 for eight. Rumble shy of 28 overs now. Graham Hume, I would imagine about 10 minutes ago, he would have been fairly uh, comfortable in that dugout. But no, now he's out there. 15 matches, scored 36 runs. Wickets are just tumbling in a procession right now. That is clever bowling. Really clever from Nobby. Four for 13. Currently, best figures for Nobby. Four for 13 into his seventh over. This has been dramatic comeback from Afghanistan. And that's another wicket maiden. Just past that outside edge. Outstanding bowling. He has been superb. 103 for eight. Twenty-eight overs gone. Deep trouble for Ireland. One oh three for eight. Karoti. Thought he was through there. He's got three for nineteen at the moment. Karoti comes from Baglan province in Afghanistan, making impression by taking that wonderful catch in the previous game. Seven for thirty-two. The spinners, Nabi and Karoti between them. Magnificent work. It's been tremendous work from both the spinners. Nabi setting the tone and Karuti capitalizing on to it. But they're doing so clever at the moment also. They're not wasting any time at all between deliveries. They're rushing the batsman a little bit. They're not having too much time to settle. McCarthy was uh, selected to boost the batting. Well, things have been crashing around him. <laughs> I think that hit him rather than he stopped it. Mincing with pain, Nabi Deir, the senior pro at the age of 39, making contribution with bat in hand, willing to, to play T20 World Cup and Champions Trophy in Pakistan. Nicely bowled. Couple of balls ago, not <laughs> be doing well. <laughs> Just self-preservation, and that's another maiden. 103 for eight.
Look at that work at the bottom there from the spinners. Nobby. Four for 13. About to start his eighth over. Staring to Pfeiffer here. It's a case of uh, just keeping it away from the stumps at the moment. That's what Ireland look like they're trying to do. And I guess that's quite right the way these guys are bowling. It's a matter of time before Nabi strikes. Four for 13. One of the finest spells in white will cricket at Sharjah. He's trying to squeeze the ball out through the offside. It's president rule here at Sharjah. Mohammad Nabi, who trains here during the off-season with his son, Hassan Shakil, knows the conditions better than most of the players participating in this event. He's now got a, a gully as well. So a slip and a gully. Beautifully bowled. Great speed. Giving the ball a rip as well. Just straightens perfectly. He's bowled on those spots time and again for many years. Think about Nabi's. He's so clever with his bowling. It's the angle of the seam often. And you'll see that with Rashid Khan a lot when he bowls in the T20s. The angle of the seam, that ball that turned and straightened. That ball was intentionally rotating, so the ball was going to hit the seam, grab on that seam, and then turn straight. The ball where he got the wicket, that of McBrien, where he bowled him, that was uh, the revolutions were the same, the action was the same, but it hit the polished surface, didn't hit the seam at all, hit the polished surface and just skidded on and cannon into that off stump. Just a slight change of the seam angle. That's the experience of understanding his own craft at the at the same time educating the likes of uh, Mujib and Rashid Khan as well mentoring them in crucial periods in their careers as well Rashid Khan has seven different grips that's beautifully bold good stride in I think it's hitting outside the line and so does Paul Rifle and he counts 104 for eight Goodness me, look at that scorecard. It was 93 for two, it was 77 for one, actually. What a collapse. But it's not a catastrophe. Brand. And what a debut this is from Karote. Three for 19, and that ball to get rid of George Dockrell was an absolute beauty. Pitch middle, hit the top of off. For Ireland now, you feel all that's left for them really is to. Get a few runs here and there and, in bowl and uh, avoid complete ignominy. Well, we did mention at the halfway stage that there were 23 overs of spin in the Afghanistan innings from Brian Tector and Van Warcom. Three for 99. The spinners have played an even greater role in this second innings of the match. Tina Mawoyo alongside me. Spin to win. Spin to win indeed. They've done an outstanding job with ball in hand, but we expected this on this surface. A used surface looked a lot drier. In fact, it was a lot drier. 105 for eight.
Well, Ireland have lost seven for 28 up to this point in time. Horrendous collapse. It's by no means the worst collapse on this ground. In 2000, South Africa were chasing 169 against Pakistan. They were 74 for one after 16 overs. Then they lost nine wickets for 27 runs in 10 overs and five balls. Lost that much by that match by 67 runs. Peso from Nabi. His experience, his guile has shown this evening. stage 106 for eight and this man and, uh, karate the chief destroyer seven wickets between the two of them well Nabi's previous best in one day international cricket was four for 30 that was also against Ireland uh, great annoyed it and he also picked up those same figures against Sri Lanka in Cardiff. But this has been a remarkable display. It really has, using all his experience. Did pick up a wicket, which was a bit of a gimme, though. Paul Sterling caught it long off. He's taken advantage, though, of that break to uh, run Rampage. Ireland, 106 for eight. Again, big turn from Karote. That's 19 overs and one ball, the spinners of bowl between them in this innings, and they've got seven for 48. It's not that bad a pitch, is it, uh, Tino? I wouldn't say so, no. But it certainly is playing differently to two evenings, I beg your pardon, a few evenings ago. Certainly a lot more turn. I thought the bowlers have bowled extremely well. I'm just looking to wrap this up, get the last couple of wickets. That's hit him outside the line, Graham Hume. He got a good stride in there. Leg by signalled by umpire Pactine. Getting the ball to really talk off the surface to Hume. Another run drips into the bucket. Quite nicely timed by Hume, that. will come back comfortably for two. This isn't going to do Highlands morale an awful lot of good ahead of the T20i series. End of the over, 33 gone, 110 for eight.
Nabi's last over then, and what a spell of bowling it's been from him, from the Sharjah club end. How many times has he put in a performance like this with the ball for Afghanistan? And the team's got its backs against the wall and somebody needs to stand up countless times slower that last one he's mixed his pace up nicely as Mike Hazeman was pointing out a little earlier he's just adjusted the position of the seam little clever variations And now a slip in a gully in for the left-hander once again. Yeah! Bold! And Nabi takes a five for, for the first time in one-day international cricket. What a performance from him. It really has been exceptional. And he's hammering those nails into Ireland's coffin. Best figures in international cricket, Mohammed Nabi. Previous best of four for 30, and it's a beautiful, typical of spinners' dismissal to the left-hander. Graham Hume goes for five. It's 1-1-1 one, one, one for nine. Last man in for Ireland, Theo van Voorkom. Can Nabi wrap up the innings, wrap up the match in the two deliveries he has remaining? Dockrell to end the 34th over. 1-1-2 one, one, for 9. Five wickets for Mohamed Nabi. He's the third oldest player in one day international cricket to take a five foot. Only players older than him 
Samuel Daniram of Canada against Bermuda back in 2008, and Imran Tahir for South Africa against Zimbabwe in 2018-19. I mentioned earlier whether Naby still had the appetite to get through to the Champions morning, Trophy morning, morning. next year. I think we've had our answer. I think you can see the difference in experience between Naby and Karatai. Bowling very quick and flat. Bowling at the low order batters. You want to be giving the ball air, especially on a surface that's turning. Entice them into a shot. The moment you bowl too flat, more often than not, you get less turn from the surface. It's easier for them to play. But once the ball's in the air and it's there for a while, they start to think, I can actually get after this. That's what you want. Lovely shot from Barry McCarthy. It's gone all the way for six. A blow of defiance from McCarthy. And even this is flat, but because the length is so full, then it allows him to take him on. But those are the shots you want him to be playing. It's all over. Karote strikes for a fourth time. What a debut for him. And what a win for Afghanistan. Exceptional stuff from them. Their spinners have taken Ireland to the cleaners. Two nil series win for Afghanistan. Here's the final wicket. Barry McCarthy on the back foot. Quicker ball, skidded on. Oh, yes. Magnificent performance from Afghanistan in this final ODI in the series. They take the series 2-0. Of course, the second ODI abandoned here three days ago. But with just 236 runs on the board, it looked at one stage when that man in the middle looked like Ireland were on a roll. He'll be disappointed, he'll know the way he got out at that time, probably unnecessary. But Mohammed Nabi, what a performance for him. First 5-4 in one day international cricket, 5 for 17 in his 10 overs. Led the young David on Karatai as well, with four for 30 in his nine. We lost to think about for Ireland. Test match went their way quite comfortably, but the two white ball matches since then have left a lot for them to think about in the next couple of days before we move on to the T20 internationals here in Sharjah. Ireland losing their last nine wickets for 42 and their last eight for 26. And Karote, four for 30. That's the third best figures in one day international history for an Afghanistan bowler on debut. Shapur Zadran, the big left arm quick, who was present at the game four days ago. And Mujib, the mystery spinner, who I'm sure will be hoping to be fit for the T20 internationals. They both took four for 24. Karote, four for 30. And he's played a big part in the success this evening for Afghanistan. He'll be quite happy with the performance today. Especially after a spirited start in the run chase by Ireland. I've got a couple of days to go away and try and think about how they can improve when we get to the shortest version of the game.
Right, let's go downstairs and let's find out who Devinder Kumar's got. Congratulations, Jonathan. A stunning series victory in the sense at one point of time when Sterling and Kemper were going along nicely. It must have been a, a worried camp, the Afghan camp. Well, I thought we were a little bit short, honestly, with the uh, the runs. Uh, we were in a good position, I thought, certainly after the first 10 overs. Um, but then we saw the wicket slow up a little bit, and that gave us encouragement with our uh, selection today. So um, I think the way that Nabi bowled, he took the responsibility as a senior player. And I think uh, Nangal, the way that he came in on debut and bowled so after a rough first over, shows good steel in being able to come back. And it must have been a challenge for Nabi in particular with a lot of inexperienced players around in the spin department to guide them along? Yeah, well, that, that's the exciting thing. You know, we've got two new spinners and you wouldn't necessarily see uh, in the ODI or in the white ball side. And, it, you know, we, um, that's the important things with a series like this, that we perform well, but also start, you know, blooding uh, younger players for the future. Magnificent in, uh, in the World Cup, then a bit of a lull, losing the test match and coming in, into the ODI side. Uh, you must have been a you know, little bit rattled with what, what transpired in the uh, series leading into this particular series, the ODI series. Well, yeah, I think Sri Lanka, we didn't play the cricket, we know that we can, but I think with the a developing side and a side that's new to the test arena, you're always going to have ups and downs, certainly in that format. And, you know, as a side, we pride ourselves on our white ball cricket and aim to grow quickly in red ball cricket. Um, so the series in Sri Lanka was disappointing. It was important that we came back in this series and did well, certainly with a, a World Cup around the corner and an important T20 series now against Ireland. It's important that we don't you know, get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, you know, because cricket's a great leveller and uh, we haven't played well uh, leading into this series. So it's important that we uh, maintain this momentum. Thank you, Jonathan. Enjoy the success. Thank you very much. Sixth consecutive win in one-day internationals for Afghanistan against Ireland. And here is uh, what, the tale of horror for Ireland as they were chasing 237 for victory. Just two players in double figures. Sterling and Camphill were doing it nicely. And then all of a sudden, they got out in relatively quick succession. And then it was a procession thereafter. Bowling figures dominated by the spinners and two in particular. Nabi, career best figures for him in one day internationals and Karote on debut four for 30 so uh, between them 19 overs nine for 47 unbelievable figures really let's have a look at some highlights Balbuini struggled against Faruqi in the first game struggled again today he was the first to go but there were some really nice shots played by Kampfer and the captain Paul Sterling who really took advantage of over pitch deliveries or deliveries with width on them while these two were going it looked like everything was all rosy for Ireland that was the top edge but with the pace and the bounce it carried over easily and then this is where the trouble started after a few lusty blows to the spinners and the captain getting himself to a half century had a really good shot over the top in the previous over. He tried it again. And what a great catch taken by Gazan Far on the boundary. Curtis Camphor, pull for six. And an excellent pull for four. Everything was still reasonably straightforward for Ireland until the wicket started to tumble. Tector going. Tucker just tucking one to short mid wicket. Camphor a little bit unlucky, caught down the leg side. And that was a beauty to get rid of Dockrell from the debutante, Karate. Adair, judged LBW, again a ball which turned sharply. McBride, he'd been dropped first ball, but then uh, Nabby popped up to dismiss him. And how about that for a delivery? by Nabi to get rid of Hume, and that was his five foot. And that was it all done and dusted. Karoti taking his fourth wicket. Barry McCarthy, bold neck and crop. So Ireland looking uh, oh so happy at the halfway stage, 237 they were chasing, but well, they haven't got anywhere near things. Uh, all out for 119, and look at that, still 15 overs left unbold. Nabi, the first Afghanistan player to score 
40 or more and take five wickets in the same match in a one-day international. We'll take a break now, and when we come back, it will be time for the presentation ceremony.
Yes, hello and welcome to the post-match presentation for this Eddie Salat Cup ODI series, Afghanistan versus Ireland 2024. What a contest we have seen tonight here under the floodlights in charge. A huge turnaround thanks to Afghanistan spinners primarily who simply turned the contest on its head to round out a brilliant win and a 2-0 ODI series victory by 117 runs. Firstly, please allow me to introduce you to my presentation party, starting from left to right, just to my left, Mr. Aladad Nouri, who's a board member of the ACB, Mr. Abdullah Gaber, the Chief Commercial Officer of Etisalat. Next to him is Miss Anne Maria, the Senior Development Manager for Ding, and then Miss Aishwarya Bagat Kumar, who is a Customer Engagement Manager for Ian Money, and then finally, Mr. Hamayoun Chahab, a legal advisor to the ACB. You're all very welcome, everyone. Great to have you with us. Secondly, a huge thanks to all of our sponsors for making this tour possible, particularly Etisalat Afghanistan, the title sponsor, alongside Supercola, Bank Mili Afghan, Hedge Sachs, and all of the sponsors for their valuable contribution of cricket. Now, we have plenty of awards to give out. We're also here from both captains, and we'll present the series winner's trophy to the magnificent Afghanistan side. We're going to start with the first award. That will be for the stylish player of the match. It's going to receive a check for 25,000 Afghani. It will be presented by Mr. Hamayoun Shahab, the legal advisor for the ACB, and it goes to the debutante. What a debut they enjoyed. The left-arm spinner, Nangelia Karote, for his figures of four for 30. Well, what a marvellous debut, one that he will not forget. Our second award is for the player of the match. They're going to receive a cheque for 50,000 Afghani. That will be presented by Miss Aishwarya Bagat Kumar, the customer engagement manager for Ian Money, and also a player of the match trophy. That will be presented in a few moments. Well, he's simply the greatest maybe Afghanistan have ever produced. He is evergreen at the age of 39. He made 48 with the bat, and remarkably, all the way into his 160-odd appearance in ODI cricket. It's his first ever five wicket haul. He bowled 10 overs, three medans, five for 17. The player of the match, it's Mr. Mohamed Nabi. So Mohamed will receive his check first from Aishwarya Bagat Kumar. And also he will receive the player of the match trophy. And that will be presented by Mr. Abdullah Gaber. And now I'd like to call upon my co-commentator, Ahmed Fadai, who is going to interview Mohamed Nabi. Over to you, Ahmed. Congratulations, Mubarak. Uh, dear Mubarak, sir, I'm going to give you the first time to give you the first time. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yeah, it's uh, uh, really happy to perform uh, at that kind of condition. We took uh, five wickets. And after a long time, yeah, around been be 17 to 18 years ODI cricket, and uh, first it's at the end uh, we we'll took uh, five wicket. Yeah, really happy. I think the momentum came with the wicket of Paul Sterling. How did you set him up? After being hit for a maximum, you didn't back away. You set him up, and he gave away his wicket. Yeah, a ball just uh, line and a length. I just uh, saw him uh, in the first hour. He came and uh, hit a six. And in the next hour, I try. I told Ibrahim that I have uh, put back uh, mid off and uh, bolt wicket to wicket. Maybe we will get some wicket. And again, he a little bit mistake. Yeah. Did you miss on your half century? Uh, yeah, I tried to. Uh, I didn't think uh, on my 50. Uh, I, I try put some score on the board uh, for a big total on the uh, for my team. That's why I hit a little bit harder at that time. Yeah. Well, congratulations, brilliant performance. It's Payamla Rai, what are you doing? No, I'm not sure. 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 Well, it's the player of the match, Muhammad Nabi, for his first FIFA. Grateful to the Afghanistan fans. 
OK, many thanks to Mohamed Nabi and Ahmed Fadai, who's now going to speak to the player of the series. Plenty of contributions to acknowledge, particularly Ireland's Harry Tector, who was outstanding. Good bowling performances, too, for Ireland, from Theo van Warcombe and the debutante that we saw with the stylish player of the match award. But the third award is going to be for our player of the series. They'll receive a cheque for 75,000 Afghani. That will be presented by Miss Anne Maria, the senior development manager for Ding. They'll also receive a trophy in a few moments. And it has to go to this man. He's scored 172 runs in the series, thanks to scores of 121 in the first ODI and 51 today. It's the one and only, it's Ramon Gerbaz. And now Ramon Gerbaz will also receive his trophy for the player of the series. That will be presented by Mr. Aladad Nori a board member for the ACB, and pose for a photo as well. And I'd like to invite Ramanullah to come in for an interview with Ahmed Fadai, my co-commentator. And then another 50. Did you miss on your 100? Two times you made 100 against Ireland. Did you think you missed it? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, thanks to Allah. I think uh, it was a, gr a great series for me and overall for our team as well. Uh, yes, not happy with the bat today because uh, I got set. I spent a very difficult time on the wicket, but still, yeah, uh, I think uh, that's the excited moment that we win the match. Uh, yeah, I think uh, a very excited time when I play against them because I always score against them. <laughs> well, you scored the first 100 on your debut against Ireland, and then you already put the player of the match performance against Ireland. How do you see prepared for the upcoming T20 series against Ireland? I always try to do something better for my country uh, uh, against every team, uh, team, not only against our land. Uh, yeah, if you, if you pr uh, prepare yourself uh, for the competition, it is easy to do something, uh, achieve something. I think uh, we worked so hard after that we lost a test match and then we worked hard and uh, we were focused more. Uh, yeah, that was, the, that was the reason that we got the result as well. And we also ready for the T20 as well. Inshallah, we'll try our best to do something better there. T20 le para ba watanwalo tatsawaya is it super performance by Rahmanullah Gurbaz da khwatsa minawali guri zumunga kho khelo bi di T20 badar khondu ki rojena bad nan lo badera sakhta wa haqiqat ke zaka roja aw bia one de loba T20 de para ba inshallah zumunga tayari dera khai aw rojena bad ba ki gi aw khondawar mi chunabai well promising performance the fact that the T20 will be played after the iftar he was fasting in this one day international, yet he scored his 50. Congratulations, Rahmanullah Gurbaz, the player of the series. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much. I want to dedicate this man of the match to Nangyal Kharuti, uh, that he played really well. And uh, I hope wish, uh, best of luck for his future as well. Well, absolutely brilliant performance from the debutant, Nangyal Kharuti. Congratulations to him as well. Well, what a brilliant performance from Ramon al -Gurbaz. Time to speak with both captains now. I'll call upon, firstly, Paul Sterling, the captain of Ireland. Paul, commiserations, hard luck today. You looked in such a good position at 77 for one. Were you happy with that total that you were chasing down, a 230-odd to win? Yeah, I think we were. I think we were a lot better than the other day. Uh, we discussed it a bit, and 230 seemed to be in the ballpark of what we could chase. And, of course... In the first 20 overs in the second dig, we seem to be in a pretty good position to chase that down. Just talk about the bowling first. I, I thought there were really good efforts from Mark Adair, Barry McCarthy, Andy McBride at his consistent best, and, and Theo Van Workham's at a good series. Yeah, he has now. I think as a bowling group, they've, they've grown over the last couple of days and months. So uh, we were pretty happy with today's performance, and I think they dragged it back from the other day where 300 plus was probably a good bit too much here and uh, something we should have chased down probably in the end. Can you put your finger on the disparity b between the way in which you and Curtis Camfer played? You, you played with some freedom and ease and you, you picked up plenty of boundaries and then the rest of the batters just never really got going. They got stuck in a web to the Afghan spinners. Yeah, I can't really put my finger on it. I think we were in such a good position and then I seemed to throw my wicket away on 50 and that was seemed to be when we went downhill. So it's something we'll think about over the next couple of days. That I know in 50 over cricket, we don't have much coming up until the middle of summer. So we, we have a bit of time to think about it, but I think soon after tonight, we'll put that behind us and uh, focus on the T20 and the World Cup coming up. Any reflections again on that decision to bowl first? You're happy enough with it? The pitch did seem to, to get a little bit tougher and maybe die a bit in the, in the second half? 
Yeah, I think it was a lot of dew in the first game. I think that's the reason behind it here. Sometimes it comes down pretty heavy. You saw the towels out with Afghanistan in the second innings the other day. It's, it's not easy to, bat, to bowl sometimes with that. It slips out. It doesn't turn as much potentially, but certainly with the wind today, it didn't come in as much, and that probably cost us a little bit in those last few overs. No doubt you'll bounce back strongly in the T20 series. Thanks for talking to us. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, understandably, Paul Sterling very disappointed. Now time to talk to the winning captain, Tashmatullah Shahidi of Afghanistan. Hashmat, many congratulations. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Paul Sterling. 77 for one, Ireland looked like they were cruising. How did you turn it around? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, very happy about the performance of the team and I congratulate uh, my team about uh, the win of the series. Uh, I will come to that question. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Sterling and uh, um, uh, Kempa, both of them was playing very good. But when I was trusting my bowlers, I, I knew that uh, wicket when I was batting, wicket was uh, not that easy for batting. So I was trusting uh, spinners. Then I brought uh, Nabi. And and he did it for me and uh, also Nangyal. Just sticking with the batting for a moment, it might not have been the quickest 50. In fact, I think it was your slowest ever in ODI cricket, but that in the partnership with Mohammed Nabi ended up being very critical. Yeah, it was the critical partnership because uh, uh, we lost back-to-back -back wickets and unluckily Azmat got run out. So uh, me and Nabi wanted to uh, take the game to the end and that's uh, what uh, we were talking and discussing uh, about uh, that when we were the par uh, doing the partnership. So uh, I also told him, let's make it to till 45th hour. Uh, so we did well, I think, there and that's what, that was the uh, good, good moment in the bed. I know it was the same pitch, but did you feel as though it really started to die a little bit in the second innings? Did, did it really favour those spinners? Both Karote and Nabi were outstanding. Uh, yeah, that was the first ODI uh, pitch. Uh, so uh, while our batting also, the pitch was a bit slower comparing to the last game. And um, uh, when their spinners were bowling, the ball was not coming easily to the bat. So um, I think our bowlers bowled uh, very well. I know that uh, it was support in the pitch, but our bowlers, uh, spin bowlers, uh, put in right areas. Just finally, a very, very quick question about that man, Mohammed Nabi. His impact on Afghan cricket is utterly extraordinary. Uh, I think he is the amazing player, and he, as a senior guy, you know, he's like uh, 40 years now, I think. <laughs> but he always uh, contribute in batting, in bowling, and also he's like, uh, while fielding, you know, he's a, um, uh, what can I say about him? Like, um, Legend. No, like uh, for other players, you know, he shows him his fielding that how inspiration. inspiration yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I forget that. Well, I've got good news for you because the man on my right, I'm learning my Pashtun, but I'm not quite there yet. He's got a question for you. I think in a dialect, you'll speak even better. Quick one from Ahmed Fadai to finish up. Uh, uh, team uh, last series the well, it feels very happy to win the series after some losses. And thank you and uh, very much grateful to the Afghan fans all around. Okay, Hashmat, I'd like you to go and join the two presenters for our series winning trophy. I'd like Mr. Aladad Nori, the board member of the ICB, and Mr. Abdullah Gabar to go over and present you with the Eti Salat Cup for the ODI series for Afghanistan versus Ireland 2024. The champions, the 2 0 winners, it's Afghanistan. Congratulations, Afghanistan. Well done, Hashmatullah Shahidi. Deserved victors. 2-0 in the three-match series. Absolutely comprehensive here in Sharjah. Brilliant from Shahidi. Wonderful from Afghanistan. A proud moment after a difficult tour to Sri Lanka. They have bounced back superbly well. Six wins 
in a row versus Ireland, their longest winning streak against any nation. Hashmatullah Shahidi gives the trophy to the debutant. Karate, who was sensational with the ball. Afghanistan blooding. Three debutants in the series. Deserved winners of the Etisalat Cup. Here is Sharjah. Afghanistan, you can be very proud of your men in blue. They have been sensational. Up she goes. Lovely moments for any cricketer. This is what you put in all the hard work for. Day and night, winter and summer. All the hard work goes into winning matches of cricket and winning series. Jonathan Trott and his coaching staff rightly join their fine squad of young, talented cricketers. Marvellous moment here in Sharjah, Afghanistan, triumphant 2-0 in the series versus Ireland. Well, excellent from Afghanistan over the series here in Sharjah. And this is the match summary from the third ODI. Afghanistan inserted by Paul Sterling, mustering 236 for nine. Hashmatullah, another half century, 69. And Gurbaz, a marvellously well-constructed 51. Nabi, 48 with the bat. Mark Adair, good again, three for 51. Ireland in repost, well, bundled out for 119. Nabi, who else? Five for 17. Afghanistan, winning by 117 runs, winning the series 2-0. Wonderfully well done, Afghanistan. We're going to have a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have our post-match show.
Some performance that. There's a look at the match summary. Afghanistan win the third one day as well as the first. So they win the series 2 zip and they won this one by plenty. But let's just go through this for starters. Afghanistan batting first again, 236 for nine. Mr. Patel at 69 off 103 deliveries. Adair picked up 351. His performance with the ball was much better than the first one day. Gabaz was brilliant again, 121 on the first one, 51 in the third. Uh, Nabi was uh, brilliant with the bat. And you'll also see with the ball a little bit later as you look at Ireland's score of 119 only. Rolled over in 35 overs. Sterling was a top scorer with 50. Camphor got 43. Nubby, five for 17. His first five for his career best performance. Ten overs it was too. Karate, four for 30 on debut. So a good performance from him with nine overs. And Afghanistan winning by 1-1-7. So that is an outstanding performance. And also winning with 15 overs to spare. So congratulations to Afghanistan. They were terrific in the first and also the third. Two zip. Ireland will be licking their wounds a bit. But of course, they did win that test series, which was just a one-off test. And then uh, obviously Afghanistan playing brilliantly in the one days. And we've got three T20s to come. Now, I've got a couple of blokes alongside me to have a chat about this. I've got Tino and also Brian. Brian, let me start with you. Terrific performance from uh, Afghanistan. Oh, unbelievably good, uh, particularly in the field. I mean, to take, uh, what, 9 for 42, 8 for 26, that's exceptional stuff, isn't it, really? We were wondering at the halfway stage, was 236 going to be enough? And in the end, it was more than plenty, wasn't it? Yeah, it certainly was. And your thoughts, uh, Tino? Well, outstanding. I think uh, going back to the surface that was played on a couple of days ago, I thought it was nice to hear Hashmat say that he would have batted again today. Maybe there might have been questions as to was 236 going to be enough, but... I think with the thoughts that we had about the surface, the way that it played, um, I thought it was an outstanding victory today. It looked really good for Ireland at one stage, 70-odd for one, and the captain in there going well with Kampfer. Uh, they had to show some character. They certainly did that, and I thought led from the front really well by the experienced man, Mohamed Nabi. And let's just uh, run through a couple of the performances. Uh, Gabaz again uh, in the runs. He played superbly. As I mentioned, 121 in the, uh, the first one day, and today 51 off 53, Brian. Yeah, it was an exceptional innings again from him today because batting wasn't easy. The ball didn't come onto the bat. As Tino mentioned already, it's uh, a used surface that was played on today. But uh, when you look at the way he played here, it was very difficult to think of another player during the course of this match who played with the same level of fluency. Strokes all around the wicket and he put the bowlers under a great deal of pressure. And I would imagine when he got out, uh, Tino, he would have been very annoyed with himself, one, and two thought, well, hang on a sec, I might let the, uh, the door open a bit here for Ireland. I think he would have thought that, yes. Uh, went about his innings very differently today, and I thought that he thought, you know, it was a surface that we got some runs on the other day. We could probably get a little bit more today. But I think the surface today was a lot tougher than it was when you look at the game as a whole today. Um, and I thought it was quite unfortunate, really, the time that he got out and how he got out. But I thought the rest of the guys showed a real good character. The way Hashmat played, I thought he thought to himself, you know what? This isn't the same pitch as the other day, and if we get ourselves a good 270, 280 here, then uh, we should be in with a winning shot, and they were. Well, let's look at uh, Hashma as well, because he was magnificent in the, uh, the first one day when he got his 50 off just 31 balls. A little bit more circumspect this time around, Brian, but uh, 69 was so important. Well, absolutely. I think he probably uh, realised that the surface uh, wasn't all that easy to play shots on. And let's not forget as well that when he and Nabi came together, Afghanistan had gone from 62 without loss to 96 for four. So it needed a period of retrenchment, if you like, and that's what they brought. They had, what, 97, I think, in 21 overs for the fifth wicket, which in the final analysis was a really crucial partnership uh, in the whole match. I thought he was a little bit flustered when the run out of Ormond's eye happened. And, and I think you could see for the next two or three overs played a couple of uncharacteristic strokes. But after that, I thought he settled down. And I think, just to agree with you, it's the time that he realized that actually, maybe the surface is not a 320, 330 like we thought. Let's pull that uh, run down, but make sure that we bowl well. And they did that at the end of the day. Right, it's time to get into the real stars for Afghanistan. I mean, uh, Nabi 5 for 17. We'll talk about him for starters. But uh, before we go to that, uh, Karote 4 for 30. Nine for 47 amongst both of them, which is extraordinary stuff. And I think we're just going to look at uh, Nabi for starters, because he was uh, just outstanding. Five for 17, just brilliant work from him. 
Outstanding. How many times have we seen him do this, though, for Afghanistan in similar situations? Had to make sure that he was the man who came in and broke this partnership especially. That's why he would be brought on, Mohammed Nabi. But very miserly in the way he went about it. And uh, it was interesting. Uh, Harry Tector did mention that he's probably one of the better spin bowlers in there. He got the better of him today. They knew how important Tucker would have been, and they would have been happy to get him a lot earlier. At this stage, when he ended up getting his last couple of wickets, the game was done and dusted. But for the game to get to where it was, it was an outstanding performance for him um, and I thought he really showed his quality that he led from the front as he should as a senior player and his variation was uh, was terrific as well but let's just talk about Kuroto as well I mean he didn't start very well his first two balls went for 10 and then he got stuck in and picked up four it's quite incredible really when you think about it that's the first wicket getting rid of fortunate Kanfer maybe that one. side yeah um, but thereafter how about that for a delivery to get rid of Dockrell getting rid of uh, Adair as well Again, turn, that's what he was getting. It's a used surface and then Barry McCarthy at the end. It's fascinating though, uh, Hazy, isn't it? Because you've got uh, three players there for Afghanistan in their bowling attack today, two of them making their debuts, one of them playing in his second game. From an Afghanistan perspective, for them to be able to win a game like that uh, and win it so comfortably, that really does say uh, lots of positive things about the future. Absolutely, and Rashid Khan's going to come back for the, for the T20s, which is going to be exciting. But we've got to talk just very briefly about Faruqi. I mean, he was outstanding, picking up four wickets in the first dig, opened the, the door initially in this one as well. Yeah, I mean, outstanding, as you say, in that first game. But I thought, even though he didn't get wickets today, he stuck to his guns, he stuck to his plans. And we talked in that first game about he's not afraid to come around the wicket early. He did that in the first yep. over today. And it's not often that you find left armers who do that. But even though he wasn't in amongst the wickets today, his figures were still very good. He put a lot of pressure on in the beginning. Didn't allow Afga um, Ireland, I beg your pardon, to get off to a flurry. So I think that was important, especially in the context of the game, with just 236 on the board. So how disappointed will Ireland be, Brian? Goodness me, they'll be absolutely devastated, I'm sure, because they obviously had their game plan. They wanted to, uh, to chase. Uh, I think, let's be realistic about it, they misread the pitch today because uh, I think their expectation was that the pitch would be a little bit easier to bat on, particularly if the dew came down. There's a little bit of dew around here now, but that's only just come down in the last half an hour or so. Uh, I think if they had their time again, perhaps they'd bat first because uh, really uh, batting second in those conditions against spinners with their tails up on a used surface with the way the ball turned there, that was a, that, that was a tough assignment. Having said that, to lose nine for 42, yep. uh, I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think anyone's going to be particularly happy with that, no matter what the conditions. No, that's a bad card. Uh, Tino read the pitch beautifully. Well done, Tino. But we're going to talk about one shining light, and that was uh, Paul Sterling, Tino. I mean, he played nicely. Gave a couple of chances, of course, when he was out there, and that he ten tends to do that when he's batting. But it uh, was a pity for Ireland he didn't kick on and get a big one. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I said this upstairs when he played his first shot, which was just a forward defensive, but he was oozing confidence when he walked out today. He was moving well, uh, going right forward, going right back. I thought he played for Ruki particularly well, especially when he came around the wicket. He got the ball swinging and was looking positive to the spinner. Unfortunately, it was his downfall. He probably tried one too soon again after the one that he got in the previous over. But he certainly played extremely well today. And uh, I think that's good form for him coming into that uh, T20 series in a couple of days' time. So we've got one trophy, which is the Test Trophy going to Ireland. Another trophy, the one-day trophy going to Afghanistan. Brian, what about the T20s? What do you think? Well, I'm going to get uh, splinters in my backside here in terms of sitting on the fence, fence because uh, I, I think it's a, a tough one to call. They've got good history between uh, these two sides. They've contested quite a few uh, ICC T20 World Cup qualifiers here in the UAE, and it's always been nip and tuck between them. I think if Rashid Khan comes back, I think uh, he'll be the trump card. That'll be a big difference. Ireland, will they recover from uh, what's happened here? I think they'll be devastated having lost uh, lost today and indeed lost this series they'll be really determined to make the best of things in the t20 uh, uh, matches to come because of course let's uh, not forget this is going to be crucial for both sides preparations for that world cup in the caribbean and yep. the usa absolutely now knowing you you won't sit on the fence you won't balance on the fence either what do you think about the <laughs> t20s i'm gonna go i'm gonna go afghanistan especially if Rashid's coming back into the side, but not only because of Rashid, but I think the confidence that they take out of this 2-0 series win, as well as today, 
I think uh, Ireland would have taken a bit of a knock in the first game. They took an even bigger one today. So it's going to be very difficult for them, in my opinion, to pick themselves up very quickly. But uh, I think Afghanistan, good in these conditions. It's one of their home grounds over the years, and they've got a great record here in white ball cricket. So for me, I think uh, I'm going to go with Afghanistan. OK, right now we've got a couple of days before we get our teeth stuck into that. Brian Tino, thanks so much for your thoughts. We'll look forward to seeing you and hearing from the comm box in a couple of days' time. Thank you, guys. Before we do finish, just going to uh, give you an update as to what has happened. The only test, of course, Ireland winning by six wickets in the end in Abu Dhabi. And now we've moved to Sharjah. We've had the, uh, the three, well, we've had two. Let's call it two one days because the second one was abandoned without uh, a ball being bowled because of the torrential rain we had. But the first was won by Afghanistan by 35 runs. The third uh, by Afghanistan by plenty, 117 runs and still 15 overs to spare. And we've got the first T20 coming up on the 15th. Same venue, second T20 on the 17th. And then the very next day, we have the third one as well on the 18th. So that's it. We've still got plenty of cricket to come. Three T20s. That's going to be fun. Thanks for with us today. We'll forward to your company in a couple of days' time. Good night.